we present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Thank you, and welcome back to the competition designed for children and played by grown men. International rules, as usual, with one mark for a correct challenge and two marks for an incorrect one. In the event of a tie, there'll be a tie break during which the teams will leave the studio and put on ties. I shall then toss a coin to decide the winner. So let's uh, meet now the two teams in the order in which they came back from the pub. First, Graham Garden and Barry Cry. And second, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton. which takes care of the score. Let's go on to the first. <laughs> we'll go on now to the uh, first game. This is one called Sound Charades. One team has to make noises and the other team must guess what they mean. The audience uh, are let into the secret, as are you listening at home, and especially you listening at home, you can help by applauding when they're getting warmer and uh, doing the other thing when they're not. I shall score them two points if the opposing side uh, guess correctly and lose one point for each half hour it takes them. Now then, uh, Graham and Barry, you're going to do the first charade, and the charade you're going to do is going up on our board, and here it is for you listening at home. Halloween. <laughs> Will you tell Tim and Willie whether it's a, a film or a book or whatever? Yes. Uh, uh, right. Book and film. Is it a book? I, I, yes. Oh. I've just thought of that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it was a book. I should confuse them. Definitely a film, but not a takeaway meal. There's one word, Fillables. and that's... It we're going to do. One word and that's it. Although we're doing it in two words, in a sense. In a sense, we are. Although yes. not. Yes. Have you started? Really? Yet? <laughs> I say, there's Mr. Paisley. Hello there! <laughs> well, go on. Go on, answer him. <laughs> it's an ex film. <laughs> it's King Kong. Kong. Former. <laughs> the, um. <laughs> Mr. Paisley, the Who clockwork was orange man. <laughs> uh, um, uh, it's a book and a film. But not I may have misled you with book. I hope I did. It could just be the book of the no, film. No, think of film. Concentrate on film. Concentrate on film. Not a book. Not the Bible. Bible. Oh, oh so it's not the Bible. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> Bible. It's the Irishman XO Dus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're going to get it, do you? Horrible. No, would you like to give them a clue? There's Mr. Paisley, and he says hello, and think of... Go on, answer him. Think of Mr. Paisley in, in very Christian terms. I'd say hello if he said hello. Uh, yes. Hello. 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 You'd be quite personal, wouldn't you, though? Who wouldn't? Hello, Ian. Yes. <laughs> Ah! Uh, <laughs> oh, it's lucky you've got a warped mind. Oh, it's yes. so difficult and when you're sitting at home. to that one eventually, and uh, it's their turn now to do a charade. Coming up on the blackboard for the studio audience is what they're going to do, and here it is for you listening at home. Silent movie. Will you tell them uh, what it's going to be? No, because that would ruin the game. Well, <laughs> <laughs> give them a hint. Yes, yeah. it's a film, and it's two words, and we're doing it all together starting now. <laughs> That's enough. I can only hold my breath for that long. That should be quite easy. To film in its two words. No. Purring. Very close. What is it? The, the, pur the purring ham. Uh, that very well-known film, Purring Ham. Yes. Uh, no, I would say that wasn't close. La we could give you another clue, starting from now. And finishing now. Raging silence. It's a film. That's a clue. <laughs> it's an, an American film. That's another clue. Clue. 
Uh, give us a title, that would be another clue. <laughs> and virtually <laughs> laughing, laugh. What's Browning. an American film? The word, the word silence received applause from the yes, audience. Yes, it, it was silence. Wasn't silent it? movie. But it can't <laughs> Ah, yes. <laughs> Yes. I've no marks for that, and it's your turn to do a... It's your turn to do a charade again, Graham and Barry. It's coming up on the board here, and the mystery voice will tell you at home. Riddle of the Sands. <laughs> we could play Guess the Mystery Voice. No. no. Right. Now, Graham and Barry, will you tell the others what... Uh, Book and film. Book and film, and it's uh, four words. Four. We're doing it all of a piece. All of a piece, as is our won't. Away you go, then. What's that chap doing behind the beach hut? We need to go on, really, no. I think we'll leave it there, actually. <laughs> Riddle of and the Sands. does leave it there. Hey. <laughs> You've got to know the minds of the opposition. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Tim and Willie, that puts you in an almost unassailable position in this round, but still, it's your turn to do another char uh, charade. It's going up on the board. Mr. Voice telling you, listening at home. Midnight Express. Tim and Willie, will you tell them if it's a book or a film or what? It's two words. And <laughs> it's a film. It's a film. And there probably was a book, but concentrate on the film. Two words. Starting... No. Are you doing it all at once? Yes. Ah. Well, over a period of time. Yes. <laughs> bong. 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 Oh, bong. <laughs> bong, bong. Midnight Express. <laughs> and the Graham Garden draw the equal there at the last moment. <laughs> right, that's the end of that one. Now, this is where I introduce a round that's played at the end of the programme in order to give the teams time oh, to think great. of silly names for people arriving at the confectioner's ball. Confectioner's? Confectioner's. Oh, you thing. Sweets, cakes... If you've made a note of that and done your bit of thinking, because that's all the time you're going to get. It's not tobacconist as well, this confection. And no, no, it's not. No, only news agents. News, news agents. agents. No, no, no. What? No. Sauna parlour? No, no. Confectioners. <laughs> right. We move along to the next round now, which is called Sing Along. In this round, each panellist has to sing along with a disc. Once the tune and the tempo have been established, the sound of the disc will disappear and the panellist will be left on his own. And after an embarrassing pause, the disc comes back... And the panellist scores points if he's still with it. And we'll start this round with you, Tim Brooke Taylor. And you're going to sing along with Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. <laughs> Heaven help us all. Take it away, Julie. I had to let it happen. I had to change. I've had the operation. Couldn't stay all my life down in my field. I could do ten performances a week. Looking out of the window. On him. <laughs> so I chose freedom, <laughs> running yes, around, trying everything new, but nothing impressed me at all. Certainly not that finger. I never expected it to. Oh, yes. Again. <laughs> <laughs> really goes near miss, I think that goes down as. So we'll give you uh, eight out of ten. Right. You mind? Thank you, Hump. Right, Barry, will you do your one now? You're, <laughs> you've got to sing along with Modern Major General. Good <laughs> <laughs> yeah. luck, Barry. Any model of a model, bitch general. I'm information vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the case of it, and I quote the facts historical from Marathon to Waterloo in order categorical. Don't cry for me. 
<laughs> Very repetitive. It matters mathematical. I understand equations both as simple and progressical. About binomial theorem, I'm teeming with a lot of news with many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. <laughs> Well, it's got to be 10 out of 10. Man, Thanks, Tom. It's got to be 10 out of 10. An impartial Willie. judgment. Willie, a uh, seductive song for you to sing now. You sing along with Fever. Never know how much I love you. Peggy Lee's changed since I was young. <laughs> Alan Shapiro. When you put your arms around me, I get There's a feeling, feeling that's so hard to bear. You, you give me fever. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. When you kiss me, fever when you hold me tight. Fever in the morning. Oh... Fever all through the night. Oh. Oh. Seven, nine, four, five, six. Lights up. <laughs> Daytime. <laughs> Two out of ten. Rhythm. Two, uh, you didn't quite make it, really, there. <laughs> Graham, you're, yes. you have to sing along with Noel now in Mad Dogs and Englishmen. <laughs> in Tropical Grand, certain times of the day. Well, the citizens have retired today, but don't stop. No, I follow those rules that the greatest fools obey. It's because it's ultra sultry, and I must avoid it's ultraviolet ray. Natives. It's made to agree with them in these huts. Because they're obviously, definitely nuts. Three, four. Mad dogs and Englishmen go out to the midday sun. The Japanese don't care to, the Chinese would dare to. Hindus and Argentines sleep firmly for out to one, but Englishmen detest us. Say yes. Oh! Once again, that has to be ten out of ten, which means that Walk Sam and Graham have got two, two, two top scores of ten out of ten, making them twenty out of ten, and uh, <laughs> Tim and Willie didn't do too well. See? <laughs> They next are. round is called Last Episode. In this round, the aim is to put the last nail in the coffin of a long-running radio or television show and close the series in one line. <laughs> Colin, Colin Sell will play the theme music and I shall award points for bad taste. <laughs> so we'd better give them all ten out of ten now to start with. <laughs> and uh, Graham ah. Garden, you're going to have to put the last line to Telford's Change. <laughs> Telford's change. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Mr. Telford, snip, snip. Or should I call you Dolores? <laughs> it was your idea, that one. <laughs> I should call Dolores. Yeah. Your former friend. OK, we'll leave a little pause for that to sink in and then go on to Tim. <laughs> Tim, will you put the last uh, line now to blankety blank? And the next phrase is blank off. <laughs> right. <laughs> Kindly address your remarks to the chair. <laughs> Hello, chair. <laughs> Barry's your playing. show is Life on Earth, Barry. Tarantulas are friendly chaps. This one, for instance, is. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> and on we go to the next round, which is a new one to me, certainly, Good and Lord. it's called Suitcases. The teams are going on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, audience. Now, for no good reason, everything that they pack in their suitcase must begin with the same letter. Their opponents may then challenge if they think that any of the objects won't fit into a suitcase. <laughs> the packing team must then explain how they intend to cram it in. <laughs> And I shall use my buzzer to end it, resisting the temptation to buzz right away and put an end to the whole sorry business. Let's go on. <laughs> <laughs> Graham and Barry, you're, you're going to pack the first suitcase oh, right. with objects beginning with P. P. Uh. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you started. <laughs> <laughs> Pen. Pencil. Um, uh, <laughs> Petunias. Pillar slip. Parker, Parasol, Nicholas Parsons, ah. what, doll? Tim Brooke Taylor's challenged you. Nicholas Parsons and Adrian Parker, both in a suitcase together, there isn't room. It may oh. be fun, but it isn't room. Justify it, will you please? Who please. wouldn't want to ram Nicholas Parsons into a suitcase? <laughs> yes, I'll accept that. 
<laughs> Who'd want to take him on holiday? Even better <laughs> if he didn't want to go. It's marvellous. <laughs> I accept that too. Right, well now, uh, Tim and Willie, you're going to pack your suitcase. We've got this beginning with D. Tell us when to start, Hunk. Please. You can start any time you like. <laughs> Drawing pin. Dirigible. <laughs> Deflated. <I don't> <laughs> I'll accept that. Donkey. Clip. Diana Dawes. <laughs> Challenge from Graham. Deflated or inflated. <laughs> <laughs> Which donkey or Diana Dawes? <laughs> Who's counting? And what a great act they were. <laughs> the oh. <laughs> what is he doing behind the bathing hatch? <laughs> Drinks. Uh, no, I don't accept that chance. You can continue. Oh, favourite. Drinks. Drinks. Drawbridge. That's Dog all right. Biscuits. That's a... uh, dogs. Uh, or dog, rather. Dago phrase book. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Never let a day go by. <laughs> Dictionary, uh, intravar form, <laughs> or, or as it's now called, dentravar form. From Garden. Uh, no, I withdraw the challenge. Tim, Tim pulled the Willie's yes, yeah. chestnuts from the fire just in time. <laughs> I'm not interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was that sort of party. I suppose they better go on then. Go on, Tim. Um, Death heads. What? Oh, of course. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Dungarees, drawbridges. <laughs> Repetition. <laughs> oh, it's the wrong yes. program. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'll accept it. That's uh, uh, repetition there. Um, correct challenge from Barry Cryer. Thank you. Hon. And I think as you had such a small suitcase the first time, you can pack another one with words beginning with X. X. <laughs> xylophone. Xylophone flavoured crisps. <laughs> <laughs> X-ray machine. Xavier Cougat. <laughs> Folding. <laughs> Save yourself. <laughs> and you've managed to fill your case without a challenge from the other side, so you uh -huh. win that round. And we go into the game which has turned out to be one of the most popular in this series, and that is the one that everybody knows, so I shall not bother to explain the rules. Mornington Crescent. And we won't have any uh, of, the, uh, of the special considerations brought into play on this occasion. We'll just start straight away with you, Willie Rushton. And no help from the audience. Humph, this is the, the game as originally played, the straight, straight, without variation. That's right. Sorry, you've got to remember that. Sorry. That, therefore, you... Sorry, I'm... No. That's sorry. right. So Willie starts in the normal course of events. Yes, right. So from the left, Holloway Road. Pimlico. <laughs> oh, sorry, we're doing the... No, but you, you could double if he... <laughs> the sound yeah, of street. Right. Right. It doesn't matter. Seconds. Pimlico stands. Pim we go Pimlico Pimlico stands. Right. Take it from Pimlico. So you go back to Tim, yes? Hoban yeah. flyover, then. To where? Hoban oh, flyover. <laughs> it's an H. Euston Road. Earl's Court Road. Leicester Square. Well, oh, Jubilee line has thrown me. <laughs> um, you had more luck on it than I have. Yes. Uh, Golders Green Road. Finchley Road. Good. Made a veil. Mornington Crescent. Ah! Yeah, what a good game. Right in he went. A long shot, haven't you? Right in he went. Oh. Both boots. <laughs> so Graham Garden wins that one for his team. Good. Putting them well ahead. And we go on to now the ad lib poem. What? Teams are going to make up a poem. Each team member must keep going until I press the buzzer, and then a member of the opposite team must take over the poem. And this goes on until we reach a natural artistic conclusion sometime towards the end of next Friday. <laughs> and here's your opening line, which will be taken up by Barry Cryer. Oh. So, Barry, you've got to start the poem once I've given you the opening line, which is this. Hell knows no fury like a man who's burst his rubber duck. <laughs> <laughs> Hell knows no fury like a man who's <laughs> burst his rubber duck. Clean. A man you could describe as having not much luck. A man who goes through life drawing the wrong card in the pack. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is not a humorous tale. He had a sorry lack. Without his rubber duck, what fun would there be in Hove? <laughs> <laughs> what fun indeed could this man find this Sorry, little cove. 
for many a cove in Hove you'll find is running out of fun. And this, this duckless man, I tell you he was one. <laughs> but one of what, I hear you ask? <laughs> One of those, I cry. <laughs> I say, hooray, hurrah, hurro, and then a little sigh. <laughs> this poor man, without his duck, was really in the dumps. <laughs> it was halfway through a line, wasn't it? No. no. Take, up, take up another well, dump. No. Halfway through. Well, that is no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, that that is that is oh, really, in the dump? Yeah. You didn't scan it like you did, just there. No, I know you, you didn't. Got he got he got doesn't have a better rhythm. I've got a scanning of the lot of better rhythm. It's a religious thing. Barry. Yes, I'm sorry. Will you continue with the poem? Went into a little cafe and ordered tea, two lumps, and sat and thought about his duck. Where on earth it was. And then he thought. I don't know where. I've no idea because my brain has gone quite blank as I sit here alone. He ordered coffee, tea, some milk, a plate of macaroni. <laughs> e then! <laughs> Sat back. Well, he would. He would. <laughs> yeah. His brain had gone. He'd lit a table mat. <laughs> the waiter came and put the heated plate upon his hat. <laughs> to save, he said, the fine veneer of this table of wood. Ooh. To finish this poem, he said, I just wish I could. <laughs> However, he wasn't allowed to, and he had to sit in his chair. And think about his rubber duck. And then, he thought, over there, there is a shop with a strange device. I think I'll go inside. How do you inflate a porcupine? <laughs> Stuff a bicycle pump through its hide. <laughs> That'll do. That'll, That'll do. do. It's one of the worst things I've Thank you, agree. Uh, yes, and that puts uh, Tim and Willie in the lead now. Uh, do you want to do another one, teams? Should we do another poem? They're improvised, but you must I think admit we'll do another one. What, was, what I'm going to ask you to do now, teams, is to uh, rewrite a poem or a lyric. In other words, the line that I give you first is one that's uh, a well-known one, but you must take it from there. And we're going to start with you, Tim. Oh. Seated one day at the organ, I was weary and ill at ease. <laughs> I was wriggling about a bit because I'd got the fleas. <laughs> when I say my organ... I'm talking about the instrument. That doesn't make it any better. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the instrument. The strangest I ever have seen. It isn't a musical instrument, it's a poem ending machine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, 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 Shouldn't take a ton of bricks to fall on me. Now then. <laughs> <laughs> now, at this point, your I can go home. Because the teams are going to give their announcements for the arrivals of the confectioner's ball and who's going to open the building. Sailing through the door with more confidence than she warrants, Crystal Ice Fruit. <laughs> it's ahead of its time, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> You've done it about half past three. Can anyone improve on that? I can't. No, no. <laughs> well known Greek dish, banana muscuri. <laughs> <laughs> Will you welcome, please? No. Nope. Mr. And Mrs. <laughs> the Heat. Mr. and Mrs. Pounder Caramels and their son, Arthur Pounder Caramels. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, crumbs! <laughs> <laughs> it's the family with all the dough. It's the rich tea biscuits. <laughs> oh. Will you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Seed Balls and their daughter, Annie Seed Balls? <laughs> That's just a load With of her fiance, Sid Cake. Oh, here comes PC Cake and his dog biscuit. <laughs> and his dog biscuit. His dog biscuit. Yeah, I his dog said. biscuit would be a better. <laughs> what one. do I know? Yeah. <laughs> it might help you teams to know that none of you have scored a point yet. <laughs> so Mis put that right. Here comes Mr. and Mrs. Nut Cluster and their daughter Hazel Nut Cluster. <laughs> That's better. That wins the Wafer Cup 
<laughs> for a bad pun. <laughs> Wafer, a wafer, uh, a waste. Uh, Good night. <laughs> Charlotte Ruth, mini, welcome. Sorry. Mini spy, known affectionately to us all as Min. Spy. Spy. <laughs> Min spy. <laughs> oh, there's Mr. Pastry, a bit of a puff. <laughs> oh, a fairy cake. <laughs> oh, here comes Claire, the lovely Claire who's been in the West Indies for such a long time, the lovely chocolatey Claire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will you welcome, please, or if not that, at least believe, Mr. and Mrs. Gums and their son, Wayne Gums. Very <laughs> 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 Mr. and Mrs. Ningcake and their son, Chris. <clears throat> Chris Ningcake? Chris Ningcake. Play on words. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm going again. <laughs> <laughs> but before you do, will you welcome Mr. and Mrs. R. Cake and their son, Jeff R. Cake? <laughs> Nope. No, she's a bit of a tart, isn't she? Do you say any more? Pat Issery? No, no. Sorry, no, sorry. No. There's Ma Rang and Popcorn over there. <laughs> she's a bit of crumpet. <laughs> In response to suppliant looks from the members of the panel, I'm now going to tell you that we've come to the end of our programme. And uh, Graham and Barry win by eight groans to twelve boos. Good night. Oh, Eccles cake. <laughs> Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Geoffrey Perkins. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Good evening, or as Snow White said to the Seven Dwarfs, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> well, that's the high spot of tonight, so I'm sorry I haven't a clue. So let's move on to some of the low spots, who are Graham Garden and Barry Cryer. Thank you. And their opponents, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton. And for our first round, uh, we have a game called Good News and Bad News. It's, everybody knows it, and this, it's the round in which one team has to announce a piece of good news and the others have to provide the accompanying bad news. We then go back to the first team who have to see the good side, then over to the second team who do the, see the bad side, and then back to, and so on, until we die of apathy. <laughs> so we'll start with you, Willie Rushton. Good news, there's a large party in the audience. <laughs> um, bad news, she's Belgian. <laughs> uh, good news. Um, she's bought a she's brought a pound of Brussels sprouts for each of us. <laughs> Bad news. She's throwing them at us one by one. <laughs> good news. Her aim is fortunately Belgian and therefore appalling. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, out of the EEC we go. Racial uh, slur. Bad news. One of the sprouts has hit the chairman. The good news, the chairman of just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Grudgingly. Yes, Tim, thank you for that. I think uh, that's worth a mark. Merciful thank release. Um, Tim, will you start the next round? Um, the good news is uh, the Bee Gees are having their trousers altered. <laughs> <laughs> the bad news is they're having them made tighter. <laughs> Possible. The good news is they're still very big down under. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done, Willie. Wow. That puts your team streets ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, you, your turn to, to start another one. It quite often is. <laughs> yes, well, go um, ahead. You're winning. Good news. Reginald Bosenkay has got a new hairstyle. <laughs> uh, the bad news is... It's not so much a hairstyle, it's more of a dead gerbil. <laughs> <laughs> Good news is, it's not so much dead, it's just sleeping. Bad news is, so is rage. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Good right. news, he's still managing to read the news. <laughs> <laughs> the bad news, it's next week's. <laughs> The bad oh, news is it's next week. <laughs> <laughs> this I'll has been a recording. Nothing wrong with that. that one, really. We're not doing any more, Humphrey. Really. <laughs> All right then, we'll let you have that one, Graham. But we won't let you. We won't let you start the next round. Thank heaven for that. Tim, you can start this one. Oh, um, good news. Uh, they're making a new British musical. The bad news is it's based on Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of that. Good news, it's got a title, The Sound of Munich. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh. oh yes. Oh, I see. Uh, the bad news is, it's closed already. <laughs> and even worse, they're making another new British musical. Uh, good news, it's based on the ever-popular... Thinking of the Titanic. That's the good news. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Bad news is it's called Sinking in the Rain. <laughs> Excellent. Good news, they're doing it on ice. <laughs> Bad news, in the middle of the Atlantic. <laughs> good news is it stars Rod Stewart. <laughs> Bad news is the sole survivor. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I'll give you that one, Barry. Level pegging now, and we go on to where the <laughs> occasion where I introduce a round that's played at the end of the programme in order to give the teams time to think now of silly names for people arriving at the politician's ball. Oh, politicians. Got that, teams? Politician's ball. Right. Now for a musical round. I want you to sing, teams, a snatch of grand opera from a selected passage accompanied by Colin Sell at the piano. And we're going to start with you, Graham and Barry, just for a change. And I want you to sing something from the collection of Knock Knock Jokes. <laughs> knock Knock! Who's there? Avon. Avon who? Avon to be happy. <laughs> Knock, knock. Who's there? I am Eclept. Armageddon. Eclept. Armageddon who? <laughs> Armageddon sentimental over you. <laughs> <laughs> I shall rest Knock, tomorrow. knock. Who's there? Ammonia. Ammonia who? <laughs> Notes spent by appointment. <laughs> Close. I'm on your bird in a guild. <laughs> Funny but inaccurate. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Sam. <laughs> Not only Sam, but Janet. Sam and Janet Cool. Sam and Janet evening. <laughs> more, more. <laughs> Very well, knock, knock. Who's there? I can hardly bring myself to tell you. <laughs> Through the letterbox. Well, Kipper. Well. Well, Kipper, Welk, who? Well, Kipper, Welk, on ah. the hills. <laughs> Away, you unbearably funny troll. Oh. Knock, knock. All knock, right, knock. who's there? <laughs> M-A-B. It's a big horse. M-A-B. It's a big horse. Who? I thought you'd never ask. Uh, maybe it's a big horse. I'm the London. <laughs> <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Knock, knock. Who's there? Knock, knock. Who's there? Knock, knock. Who is there? Paul. Paul? Paul, who? Paul's a 
after a bit. Done it. It's certainly done. I'll give you eight marks for that, minus five for <laughs> interminability. <laughs> And we go over now to Willie and Tim. Your uh, lyric comes from the uh, book of old punch cartoons. Sympathetic lady to old salt. And when you went down for the third time, the whole of your past life flashed before your eyes, question mark. Longshore Billy, I expect it did, Mum. But I had them shut at the time, so I missed it. <laughs> and then they wrote. <laughs> Never suit up. I, uh, I wish to marry your daughter, sir. Parent bristling. Well, me boy. And you better see her mother first. Nervous suitor? I have, sir, and uh, uh, I still wish to marry your daughter. What's it like being a castrati? <laughs> and then they wrote Wife! I'm writing a paper on calendar reform. Which Pope it was that gave us our present calendar? Husband. Pope! Good gracious! I thought the calendar always came from the grocer. Palazzo Start Party! Oh, and the audience clearly thinks that you should have eight marks too. So that's uh, uh, on now to the next game, which is the game we always used to play when we were children, Mornington Crescent. Yeah. No need to go into the rules, you all know them. Let's start this week with uh, Willie Rushton. Is it straight Brilliant. rules? Straight rules, yes. Absolutely. All right. Um, North End Road. Solid. What, with straight rules? Solid, solid, solid opening, a solid yeah. opening. White City. Yeah. Camden... High oh, Street. Yeah. Sorry. Camden High Street. Balls Pond Road. Edgerton Crescent. Where? Where Frost lives. Edgerton. Edgerton. You call that living? <laughs> <laughs> Gouge Street. Oh. 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 Um. Hollycroft Avenue. Oh. Ho ho. That was a clue. Damn it. Well, Shouldn't have said yeah. ho ho. Yeah, no, all right, all right. Houston out. Road. Yeah. Paradise Row. Uh, Mornington Crescent. Ah! Oh, oh. Sorry, partner. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Willie, you led straight into that, I'm afraid, still. There we go. You Marks go to Graham so and Barry. Thank you. That won a well-fought round, I thought. Let's go on now to Sounds Peculiar. And uh, we play a sound effect, and teams, you have to identify it. Quite simple. Graham, we'll start with you. Here's your sound effect. Well, you've given me one I know. Um, <laughs> actually, I, it's a choice of two. It, it's either somebody making an, an attempt on the underwater xylophone record, <laughs> or it's Esther Ranson cleaning her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Only joking, well, Esther. You can't have a choice of two. Which do you plump for? first one's too incredible. Yes, the second one, I think. Yeah, yeah well, the I, first one was I right. Know. Bad luck, Graham. Uh, <laughs> Tim, sounded here's yours. Like, so it sounded like Rolf Harris exploiting another aborigine to me. <laughs> <laughs> it did rather, it didn't, did, it? didn't yes. it? Didn't yes. you think, Hump? Yes. 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 You don't Sorry, get a mark Hump. for that. They're in a world no. of their own, these two. No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn good chairman. Tim, here's your, sound <laughs> here's your sound effect. Tim Brook Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, 
yes, I've got that record. It's, um, <laughs> it's quite clearly the Incredible Hulk pushing a butter mountain into a wine lake while the train is still standing on the platform. <laughs> <laughs> or it could have been Rolf Harris exploiting another abbey. Uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, I'm glad you said that because it is, it is Rolf Harris, in fact. It is Rolf Harris. It is Rolf Harris. It is Rolf Harris. It is Rolf Harris. Excellent. Wonderful. Right. After that demonstration, Barry. Yes. Here's your sound effect. Is that all right? Do you want to hear it again? No, it's too no. easy. I'm embarrassed that. It's too easy. Well, too well, easy. you never it's know. It's Cyril Smith trying out a new shooting stick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the wrong end as usual, understandably. <laughs> or Rolf Harris exploiting the last <laughs> available aborigine. Or indeed exploiting... Very good, answer. Barry. Well done. <laughs> there was a you got it wrong, but well it. done nonetheless. Uh, Willie Rushton, you, here's your sound effect. <laughs> John Curry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> and Willie Rushton, Willie Rushton, because he gave the shortest answer, wins that round. <laughs> we go on to a round called Missed Hits. Missed in other who? words, lesser known versions. We announce the winners in reverse order. Don't bring order. my secretary into this. Lesser known versions of popular plays, films and novels. And uh, this is roughly speaking a free for all, but we'll start with uh, Barry Cryer on this one. And we'll go in the usual title. order, but it's a free for all. It's a retitling. What, titles that didn't sort of work, really, is it? Is that your own nose, Hump? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> titles that didn't quite work. Bed knobs and hoovers. <laughs> Journey to the centre of the room. <laughs> Krakatoa, east of Sidcup. <laughs> Public enemy number seven. <laughs> Jump! Oh, sorry. Oh. oh! I thought it was my turn. It's a double feature. <laughs> I've seen your I, turn. I, I was going to dial F for murder. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie and Claude. <laughs> Champion, the wonder slug. <laughs> that lovely southern drama. Gone with the flatulence. <laughs> Guess who's coming for a sandwich? <laughs> 38 steps. Anne of 999 days. <coughs> and Tuesday, bloody Tuesday. <laughs> Tarzan, Lord of the Upper Fifth. <laughs> Could have been. But reasonable expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Sinbad and the 40 people who might understand it have done something a little bit wrong if their environment was against them. Several other factors ought to be taken into consideration. I've run out, Humph. Bring Any me advance? Back. Godzilla meets his accountant. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll give that round to Tim. Very OK, let's chairman. rush on to the next round, for heaven's sake. Okay. This is a round called Just a Minute. I'm going to give the teams a subject, and I then want them to talk on that subject for just 60 seconds. The others can then challenge if they feel that the person talking is not deviating, hesitating, or repeating himself. <laughs> Tim will I'd like you to start deviating, hesitating, and repeating yourself for 60 seconds on the subject of my teddy bear. My teddy bear, my teddy bear, um, has nothing at all to do with a laundrette. Um, my teddy bear is called Teddy. Um, <laughs> Challenge from Graham Garden. Relevance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely right. Five right. minutes. And you have 45 seconds to talk about your teddy bear, Graham. My teddy bear is irrelevant. <laughs> challenge. It's irrelevant. It's the old joke, isn't it? It's oh, an elephant. You're not going to penalise this for old jokes. You lose a point in Graham Garden, you continue. Well, I was you now have 50 seconds to talk about my teddy bear. You'll 
have to wait while I eat this radish and put on my rubber suit, <laughs> which combines hesitation, repetition, and deviation <laughs> in a single sentence. Challenge there from It's Willie also Rush. quite exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Correct challenge. Willie, you have 30 seconds to talk about my teddy bear. Ah. The common market. <laughs> Prunes in the common Challenge market. from Barry Cry. Relevance, he appeared to be yawning and saying common market at the no, same wasn't. time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Let's put it to the audience. Do you agree? Yeah. Quite right. Yes, they upheld back. your challenge, Barry. You have 45 seconds to talk about <laughs> your teddy bear. <laughs> Oh, I thought the uh, subject was my teddy bear. Oh, oh challenge I, from Timbrook. I thought that was smart, quick, no repetition, hesitation, or deviation. No, I won't uphold that. <laughs> Barry, you can continue. <laughs> ah, he's yeah. done it again. <laughs> <laughs> Hump, you've got. It. I mean, you've got to play the game properly or not. I agree with Tim. So do I, but that's irrelevant. Oh, very well. Challenge from Willie Rushton, which was then challenged by Graham Garden. Well, Tim said you either got to play the game properly yes, or quite. not, and he's not, so that's no, he isn't. a great choice. I agree with Willie. I think that was a cogent point. <laughs> OK, Willie, you have one second to talk about you, my teddy bear. <laughs> and that's just before the garden is through. Well, there's a lot of life left in that round, but... <laughs> The buzzer machine here was overheating, so we'd better go on. Adlib poem teams, now. Oh. You've got to make up a poem, as you know. Each team member must keep going till I press the buzzer, which, as you've already heard, sounds like that. And then a member of the opposing team takes over, and this goes on and on and on. <laughs> now, here's your first line, and we'll start with you, uh, Tim. Oh. That'll teach you. <laughs> now. You're very good. My chef. father's on the buses, my mother's on the pill. LAUGHTER uh, my dog is in the fireplace, my budgie's on the sill. <laughs> my doggy's name is Henry, but that is of no import. He isn't very clever, but all he does, he's self-taught. He Don't is you. a most amusing mutt. <laughs> he runs along the lane and somersaults and does backflips, then does it all again. <laughs> The villagers all marvel and say what a doggy wonder. He's got one quite extraordinary trick. <laughs> it does sound quite like thunder. <laughs> <laughs> He's been on the sounds familiar. <laughs> but the answer's always guessed. <laughs> He's... Been on, <laughs> it's been on Sounds Unpleasant and also on Sounds Best. <coughs> that little doggy wonder is a marvel with his lips. <laughs> He's pretty good at dancing. You should see him shake his hips. <laughs> he does back, back flips, as you've been told, <laughs> than anyone I know. He does bird impressions and his best is in fact a crow he also does amazing tricks upon a tabletop <laughs> he does impressions of Columbo and many a TV cop but his finest <laughs> too clever <laughs> his finest impression is of an ordinary cat and when I first heard him do it I said well what do you think of that? <laughs> I was sitting there, quietly, eating an ordinary ham sandwich. And I, sa I said to my dog, you've discovered the value of having a second language. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant, Barry. Pity you cheated. You don't get any marks for that. <laughs> I was going to say that. It's time that dog was put down. We'll do another one. We'll do another oh, one. Oh, let's. Uh, Willie Rushton, you're going to start this one. It was dawn or sleepy Heidelberg, and the burgers were all asleep. 
I'm trying to think of a dirty rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> and Strauss was doing things upstairs that would make an abbot weep. <laughs> his symphony unfinished, his laundry all unwashed. Unwashed? <laughs> it's good, that, isn't it? <laughs> yes. And the abbot who was watching him <coughs> was standing quite agosht. <laughs> All right, then, eating boon agosht. <laughs> They'd been out to an Indian restaurant in Heidelberg <laughs> whose special dish that very day so was off. all off. So they'd heard. <laughs> Is that prawn vindaloo I spy? The abbot cried in wonder. <laughs> no, said Strauss, for it was he. Um, there's been a tiny blunder. What was the dish? Prawn vindaloo. Prawn oh, vindaloo. Oh, I was afraid it might have been. <laughs> <laughs> they call it prawn vindaloo, he cried amidst... Uh, the merry banter. <laughs> and Strauss was so upset, he set off at a canter. <laughs> round and round the restaurant he ran, and then said, misreading, I'll have some banager. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, <laughs> What's banager? It rhymes it with rhymes manager. With manager yeah. you oh, manager. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> So he dashed for the vinder, dashed for the loo, and then rang up the manager. <laughs> right, teams, now it's time for you to announce your late arrivals at the politician's ball, please. Would you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Ting Voter and their daughter, Flo Ting Voter. <laughs> Thank you welcome, please, in. the Norder family, Mr. and Mrs. Norder, <laughs> and their little girl, Laura Norder. Oh. Mrs. Thatcher and her man, Date. <laughs> is a date of fruit or a vegetable, I'll tell you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Would you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Lement? And their father, Parliament. And their granny, mother of Parliament. And oh, their well endowed it? Chinese cousin, <laughs> Hung Parliament. <laughs> Amazing who you see at parties, there's not Powell and Black Rod. <laughs> Always a group here and squashed in the doorway. <laughs> Dictator, Des Pot, <laughs> <laughs> Oligarchy, uh, and his dog, dog Pluto, Krat. <clears throat> uh, he would. Oh, aristocracy. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Wish Willie oh dear, there's a flash round. in the doorway. Ah, that must be private members' bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it's an interesting family duo. It's Norman St. John Stevens, and he wants you all to listen to his aunt's council grunt. <laughs> <laughs> Having done that, will you welcome, please, the Speaker of the House of Commons and his Scottish friend, Wal Sack, <laughs> with his friend, Scott Nat. Mr. and Mrs. Tickle Broadcast and their daughter Polly. <laughs> <laughs> no. oh, at this point, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad she could make it. Humph, working Madge Ority. <laughs> and her sister, I'm Min not. Ority. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. There's, there's one emerging now from Timbrook Taylor. <laughs> Very slowly. It's got nothing to do with the game. <laughs> <laughs> could run into the news. You know. <laughs> Let's do Well, that. with the score. <laughs> Like that, it's uh, time that uh, we say goodbye for this week and we'll see you all again next time. Goodbye. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sells setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Geoffrey Perkins. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the
piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Thank you. Welcome once again to the programme where we play some of the games that give children a bad name. And that's the most understandable remark that you'll hear on tonight's programme, which features a contest between those prematurely aged children, Graham Garden and Barry Cryer. Oh. And those precocious youngsters, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton. <laughs> and we're starting right away with a game called Sounds Familiar. I'm going to play an extract from the voice of a well-known person or persons, and the teams have to guess who it is or who they are. In fact, very straightforward. If they can't guess it the first time, I'll give them some more, and then if it's very funny, I'll play the whole thing all over again. And as a final <laughs> help for you teams, let me tell you that not all these extracts are of well-known people. Uh, We're going to start now with Graham Garden, and here's your extract to identify. Um. <laughs> Could I hear it all again? <laughs> there isn't time. No. Uh, well, um, um. can you hear a little bit more of it? Um. Uh, um. <laughs> these are real, are they? Yes. Oh, these are real. These are real. Oh. I think it's oomph. I, th That's I, who think, I think it could it be right. It's Humphrey Littleton. It sounded like him. Yeah. You I, think it's I me? I say Humphrey Littleton. Well-known jazzer. That's Deviating right. from my normal fluency. You don't sound like yourself now, but the... the, the um, <laughs> let's, let's see if Graham's right. Can we hear all of it, please? Um, but just one brief uh, preliminary oh, oh. question. <laughs> um, uh, it's Frosty Poos. <laughs> right. Who? I thought he was right. dead. Oh, well, well, well. <laughs> Yes, you get a mark for that, Tim. <laughs> oh, that's not fair. <laughs> yeah. Bad luck, Graham. Those who remember David Frost, please stand up. <laughs> Come to think of it, if you remember David Frost, you can't stand up. Right. <laughs> okay, Tim, now here's your, here's your uh, uh, voice to identify, please. Listen carefully, Tim Brooke Taylor. <laughs> That sounds like three geriatrics, or the goodies as we call them, uh, <laughs> pretending they're pop singers. It sounds like the funky gibbon, doesn't it? Give them another clue. Another clue, please. <laughs> no, it's not the goodies, there's applause. <laughs> uh, don't think you're no, going to get it right. Can we hear Magnus, all of it, please? Half so fully grown see, men. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to give you that one. I'll have to give you that one. It was as you thought today in Parliament. Now then, Barry. <laughs> Still Barry, available. Your voice good record. Listen shops. carefully. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um. Oh. That's um. How? How? That's Chief Sitting Bull. Um. Realizing what he's just sat in. <laughs> <laughs> or Marcel Marcel well. on his day off. <laughs> ah. You're very close, but very I think you'll need another. Can we give him oh. another clue? How, how, how? Part Howl, he's actually saying, isn't he? I don't Part know what he's saying. Was it a Lewis Carroll type noise? It wasn't. A, it's an actor. It's mm, an actor doing possibly, yeah. Lewis Carroll type things. No, says Graham. King Lear, says Graham. No, I mean, I just thought of King Lear. <laughs> it's, it's Gilgood, Sir John Gilgood. Uh, and an extract from what? Sir, Sir John Gilgood in Drop Your Knickers, Elsie. <laughs> <laughs> Drop Your Knickers, Elsie, no. Subtitled. Lear, it is King Lear. It is oh, King thank Lear. you, Graham. Let's hear all of it until <laughs> no, he's right. <laughs> Let's hear all of it now. How, how, oh, of course not. how. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> the Very good. Ribbon. Very good. <laughs> so no. that's a mark for you, Barry, uh, assisted by Graham Garden, so you lose the mark. And uh, Willie... <laughs> Willie Rushton, will you identify this voice, please? Take away your children! <laughs> it has religious overtones. Um, it's Rod Stewart clearing the Archbishop of Canterbury's throat. <laughs> um, it's a hell of a jump. Could be the Vienna Boys Choir's voices breaking. 
I don't think you're but taking this seriously. <laughs> well, he makes it seriously, silly, doesn't he? It's an ugly moment at King Farouk's funeral. <laughs> Which one of those are you going to do? He was the last one. Bad luck. The last King Farouk. Let's hear a little bit more of it and see if he can get it from that. Arthur, clear your baseline. Get away your risen bangs. He's put your head in. Take away your children. Nautical terms. It's Arthur. Zulu in space. <laughs> no, I'm not sorry. It's an old image. Flynn in the Seahawk. Oh. oh. You remember that fine yes, old movie? Yes. Oh, that's about the most boring thing I've heard for weeks. <laughs> Getting on that way. Yes. Mr. Teams, this is the point where I give you uh, advance warning of the late arrivals that you'll be oh. announcing later oh. on in the program. And this week, we'll be asking for late arrivals at the broadcasting ball. Oh. Late oh, arrivals good. at the broadcasting ball. We're going on to the round, which is called suitcases now, and I'm sure you'll all be delighted to know that the teams are going on holiday. And for reasons that are too complicated to go into, they have to pack their suitcases entirely with objects beginning with a letter that I shall give them. The other team can challenge if they think that any of the objects will have difficulty fitting into a suitcase, and the packing team will then provide suitable, far-fetched explanations as to how they intend to cram them in. The actual round is shorter than that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you should know exactly what's going to happen now. So I think uh, Tim... And, Willie, you'd better start packing your suitcase with objects beginning with Q. <laughs> Queen. <laughs> All right. A challenge from the other side, but as my machine here wasn't switched on, I don't know which it was. Who was? I cannot tell a lie. It was Barry. <laughs> <laughs> One of you challenged. I, cha I challenged. What's your challenge? He, what did you say? I said... <laughs> a Queen. I lie, I said the Is queen. Is that a, a reigning queen or a harpers and queen? It could be a chess no, queen. That objection, that, that, that objection is overruled instantly. So it could be a chess carry queen. On. Carry on, Drank Tim and Willie. A queen. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's the other sort of queen. Coits. What? Repetition. <laughs> Wrong program. <laughs> Challenge from Barry Cryo. Repetition, hum. Two queens in a suitcase. No, we've I gone mean, on to... <laughs> for the the challenge queen, was too on. late. We'd gone on to coits. They can't have the same object twice, Hum. We'd gone on to coits. Heaven yeah. forfend. All right, yeah. coits. Let's play coits. I'm fed up with this round. Right. right. <laughs> quink, Tim and Willie, continue. You're still in the running. Quink, ink. <laughs> it oh. Quango. There's a challenge from Graham Garden. You wouldn't get a quango in a suitcase. It's a very small quango. <laughs> <laughs> How small? Fair enough. <laughs> Good radio. OK, Fair Tim and Willie, continue. No. Quarter of a pound of mints. <laughs> Quarter of a pound of humbugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. The top <laughs> row of my typewriter, the QWERTY you. <laughs> a quantity of socks. A quantity of surveyor. <laughs> a... Someone to look at the socks. A cue for billiards. A challenge Q, for Barry Cue, C-U-E, in the billiard stroke snooker sense, but cue of persons. No. Surely not. There's a little model cue you can get yes. tourists by them. <laughs> what do they represent? An airfix cue. Why would you have a... It is, uh, <laughs> an airfix cue. Little people waiting for a Hornby train. It's, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. right, right. <laughs> exactly. yeah, and what I'll wonderful trains that. they I like are. That, I'll accept that, that because I'll, like... I'll withdraw my objection. A quadrille. Oh. Just instructions on how to, in case four of us get together and can't think of anything else. <laughs> um, a choir of paper. A spare quarter deck, I'm going P&O. <laughs> um, I said there's a lot to be said for Cunard as well, you know. Oh. No, Cunard doesn't begin with Q. Doesn't it? No, it doesn't <laughs> it's QE2, though. <laughs> a model. He's a model. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> OK, carry on. Oh. Uh, all those people out there that play Scrabble will be going, why doesn't he say... Uh, Graham Garden? Why didn't he say it? <laughs> yes, I'll uphold that. All right. <laughs> so you win that round. Would you like to would you like to play a round yourself? No. Yeah, I think no, really. no. in the hope that we can get it moving along a little bit faster, we'll ask uh, Graham and Barry to pack a suitcase now. Beginning with the letter J. E. J. E. A J. J. Yes. A J, a bird, easily accommodated in a suitcase. Some juice. Um, There's a challenge there from Willie Rushton. How many Jews? <laughs> Four, but to you three. <laughs> right? That's a straight, straight okay, dentist. Notice that. <clears throat> Jangle box. 
small, portable, easily... Um, <coughs> don't yeah, justify it unless you get challenged, please, or you'll be here all day. There's a challenge, Tim Brooke Taylor. I just wanted to hear him justify Jangle Box again. Yes, would he justify it? Oh, you can get these little Jangle Boxes. Oh. I can tell you later, Tim, where you can get one. There it is. <laughs> Jackson over rules. Carry on. Um, Jackaranda. <laughs> Jigsaw. Julep. Mint of that ilk. Uh, <laughs> Jape uh, book. What? Jape book. Listen. <laughs> Jumbo. <laughs> Jumbo. Packet of safety pins. <laughs> jigsaw. Challenge from Timbrook Taylor. Two jigsaws. They can't be allowed. Well, our two queens can play them. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <not. laughs> I'll follow that Who challenge. You are? <laughs> in point of fact, uh, I didn't tell you because I wanted you to carry on, but you were disqualified minutes ago because <laughs> if you pack a jacaranda, you're infringing every customs regulation <laughs> the world over. And you'll be reported. Right. <laughs> Here we have a round called Censored Songs. I'm going to ask each of you to sing a song, and during the song it will be your task to censor by means of a buzzer any words you consider will outrage public decency or frighten the horses. Now, then, you're going to sing these in duet, and Barry and Graham, you're going to sing the first one, and your song comes from the Frank Sinatra songbook. <coughs> 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 Next time you're found with your on the ground There's a lot to be learned, so look around Just what makes that little old ant Think he'll that rubber tree plant Anyone knows an ant can't A rubber tree plant My funny valentine, sweet comic valentine you make me with my <laughs> Your are laughable, unphotographable, yet you're my favorite. Is your less than Greek? Is your a little weak when you open it to Are you smart? When, 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 when. <laughs> Piano's down. When somebody you It's no good unless they you all the way <laughs> Hit it You make me feel so young You make me feel so spring has sprung And every time I see you I'm such a happy the moment that you I wanna go play hide and I wanna go, go and bounce the just like a toy balloon. You, you and I are just like a couple of tots running, running across the meadow, meadow, picking up lots of. Well, if oh. audience response is anything to go by, Graham and Barry, you've won. I wish we could have... <laughs> I I'm wish quite we could have a Nelson Riddle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite willing to accept Anyway, that. Tim okay. and Willie, you'd like to sing a song, no doubt, and your song, nope. uh, your, your words come from the Johnny Mathis songbook. This time we almost made the fit, <laughs> didn't we, go? We've only just begun to <laughs> People People who People <laughs> Are the luckiest people In the world <laughs> Isn't rich <laughs> Are we a pair? Me here at last on the ground. You in mid. <laughs> Sending the clowns. Isn't bliss. <laughs> Don't you approve? 
one who keeps hanging around. <laughs> one who can't move. <laughs> Where are the clowns? Send in the... If a picture paints a thousand words, then why can't I... You. <laughs> On a clear day, rising around you, and you'll see who you. On a clear day, on a clear day, you can forever. was the praying mathish. <laughs> and judging by audience response, Tim and Willie, you've won that one. Oh. <laughs> so we go on now to one lost. of our favourite rounds, the ad lib poem. Oh. I give the teams the first line of a poem and they have to take it up. When I press my buzzer, which goes like that, then the next uh, opposing member of the team has to take up the poem. And we go around like that. Here's your opening line. I'm going to ask you, Barry, to start this one off. Yeah. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. She lay on the beach at Bogner, revealing her naughty bits. <laughs> she lay on the beach at Bogner, revealing her naughty bits. Oh. Then suddenly realised the sun had gone in and she'd got the shivering fits. <laughs> so, hearing the groans all around her, <laughs> she rushed off the beach in a trice. <laughs> If you think that gooses get pimply, you should see the state of our mice. <laughs> when the frost is in the skirting board, I don't refer to Dave. We've already heard his voice today, and that was rather grave. <laughs> this lady from Bogner, inside she did rush, and went to the bathroom for an hour. I'm kind. <laughs> where she wanted to sweeten up because she was feeling sour. Oh, that is oh. a play on words, he said. <laughs> Lying not so very teeth. witty. <laughs> <laughs> You're not so very witty. So, sorry, where did we leave that? Oh, clever clock. As if I care. Sorry. That's it. Uh, fair enough. I, I didn't know where the pick-up point was, was due to the appalling that. diction of my predecessor. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think the people at home can decide that. Shall we just hear yeah, what they have to say? Would you repeat the line? <laughs> yes, you repeat line uh, Come in taunting. For his benefit. <laughs> I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> Thank you, Hum. Can I hear that line? Uh, sorry. Witty was the... Witty was the last word. The line, yeah, the... No scansion, knowing him. <laughs> um, witty. <laughs> then realised... He said wittily. <laughs> then realised she'd washed all herself except one portion so pretty. She picked up the soap <laughs> and decided to lather herself all over again. Great scansion. <laughs> Terrific scansion. Then she looked up and discovered, aghast, the bathroom was full of men. <laughs> the Triorchy male choir <laughs> had popped in just then to see <laughs> if she could tell them. He accuses me of scansion. <laughs> What's the rhyme? What's the rhyme? Them. 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 So the Triorchy male voice choir coughed up a bit of phlegm <laughs> <laughs> and burst into a chorus of. Yes. Any uh, requests? <laughs> <laughs> How about La Boheme? <laughs> oh, oh, Bishop La Boheme. Oh. I think we'll call it a day there. What particular is day that? is that, Tom? <laughs> Choose anyone you like. That was very, very good, teams. We're going on to play that uh, family game which everyone knows and therefore I don't have to explain the rules. Mornington Crescent. Mornington, Mornington Crescent. Straight rules. And we'll have straight rules again, yes. Willie, start. You won the last round. Hands down. Right. Um. <laughs> straight rules, is it? Don't you get excited. No, I'm say, uh, <laughs> I got this one pretty, pretty well sorted, I have to warn you. Uh, Bloomsbury Square. Oh, yes, you have. Houston Square. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I blew that one, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Stop like that. 
Russell, Russell Square, right, I suppose right. it's got to be. What? Russell Square. Three squares. Um, oh, um, um, Bayswater Road. Morning, Mr. Crescent, you fool, you fool. Ah! Why? Three squares. Three, <laughs> three squares. Ah, After the three you put in a crescent. Yes. You put in a crescent. Bayswater Road. It isn't. Not after oh, three squares. Dear me, his mind is going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. If we had the anti-clockwise rule, you might have got away with it, but not that. <laughs> OK, Willie Ruskin wins that. Round respect. of applause for Willie Ruskin. Thank you. Thank you. I can uh, never be accused of being a good loser. champion for this week. Sorry, you said something, Barry. I was going to say I could never be accused of being a good loser. I just didn't agree with that. You're problem. a lousy winner, don't you? Well, I won't see me afterwards, but I mean, that is, the, that is my judgment on the matter, and it stays there. Oh. And we're now going to ask you to provide me with some misleading advice. I'm going to ask the teams to do their good deed for the day and give me some misleading advice that they might give to a tourist along the lines of, have you tried the echo in the reading room of the British Museum? <laughs> 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 you might even like to go along lines which improve on that, and I hope you do. Oh. Right. Tim Brooke Taylor, you're going to start. For some extraordinary reason, uh, most of the guidebooks leave out Cricklewood. <laughs> 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 or I might say, um, you can go by car if you like, but it's not a long walk to Stratford. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think I would say uh, you, you must try the open-air loos in Trafalgar Square. Uh, <laughs> uh, or, when the organ starts in Westminster Abbey, the first couple on the dance floor win a prize. <laughs> Willie. I, I, if you have kids, don't miss the Battersea Fun Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Graham? What? Oh, how about... <laughs> um, help yourself to the free gifts in Harrods. <laughs> or possibly hire a donkey and join in trooping the colour. <laughs> Two lots of applause for you, Graham. You're Thank ahead you. of the day. Now, we're going to ask you to go ahead now and introduce the late arrivals. And let me remind you, teams, that these are late arrivals for the broadcasting ball. Straight rules. <laughs> Straight rules. <laughs> oh, what a lovely young lady over there. Thea Archers. <laughs> oh, an elderly lady over there. From the Your Way family. Dawn Your Way. Oh, <laughs> oh you remember her. Oh, from the dear old days of 2 L O. Hello, hello. Here comes Alexandra Paris, who's just laid Lord Reese. <laughs> Oh, we're in gossipy mood, are we? <laughs> yeah, yes. so. Alistair Cook and Lettuce from America. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. to quite a lot of radio and their daughter, Alison, to a quite a lot of radio. <laughs> <laughs> She's the cat's whisker. <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> All the way from the States, will you welcome Buck at bedtime? <laughs> he knows his own business best. And sharing the same flight from the States, Mr. and Mrs. Street from America, the streets of San Francisco. <laughs> All right, then. Mr. and Mrs. Pie and their daughter, Meg Pie. <laughs> With her fiancé, Henny Questions. <laughs> and Carla Television. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a nasty moment. A nasty moment. The rather was. menacing Hertz family, Killer. Oh, yes. <laughs> and Mugger. Oh, here's yeah, a drunken Viking. <laughs> Lars of the summer wine. <laughs> oh. oh dear, oh, the lisping sun, Nathan Wide. <laughs> and all the way down from Bonnie, Scotland, Mr. And, Mr. and Mrs. Dwarled and their little son, We Ken Dwarled. <laughs> <laughs> and you're his her chum. sister, <laughs> Tamara. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look, there's an answer. <laughs> and that splendid fellow, Capital Ray Dio. <laughs> Not that With splendid. His... Oh, there's another Nathan. Oh, Nathan shall speak peace to Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> well, Willie Rushton, having put his team in the lead now after that round. Oh, there's Fred. Freddie Knight's music night. Oh, yes. And Mandy, night at eight. Yeah. <laughs> and there's Jack and Ori. Not to mention Michael Fish and his place, cool. Another late comer from Scotland, Ewan, the night in the music. 
And also, Mr. Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Few Minutes the Weather and their daughter Ina Few Minutes the Weather. <laughs> Who's getting our clothes down? Normal service will be resumed soon. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we come to the end of Sorry, I'm Having a Clue and their son from Israel, Chaim. Sorry, I Haven't a Clue. <laughs> which puts me in the lead. And uh, so, until next time, goodbye. Barry Pryor, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Geoffrey Perkins. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello and welcome to the programme that makes grown men weep and weeping men grow. So let's get on and meet our two teams of laughing dogs who are Graham Garden and Barry Cryer. <laughs> Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton. <laughs> and into the first game, which is Yard of Ale. All the team members have to drink a traditional Yard of Ale and the winner will, by time on tradition, <laughs> be the one who finishes first. Ready, teams? I'll use my buzzer to start you off. Are you all set? Oh, yep. Mm, mm. Mm. Oh, that was good. Mm. <laughs> 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 one of those fishing drop. Mm. Mm. There's some cork in this. Oh, there's Jack Cousteau. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Right, I've filled mm. it. <laughs> <laughs> As the audience will see, Willie Rushton. Mm. Won by uh, quite a large margin. Willie Rushton. Let's have a boring, bumping and boring. This Second is, was this Barry is. Cryer, then came Graham Garden. Thank you. All right, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go on to the point. Watch. <laughs> it's very strong. <laughs> let's go on to oh, where I tell um, the teams that uh, at the end of this <laughs> order, please. Order. At the end of this Four pints, please. <laughs> No, teams, at the end of the programme, you have to give your uh, introductions to the late arrivals at the Science Fiction Ball. The Science uh, Fiction uh, Ball. SF, yes, yes. All right, now on to the uh, game, which is called Word for Word. In this round, one of the members of a team says a word, and his partner must say another word, totally unconnected with the first, and so on. And the other team may challenge by using their buzzers and try and prove a connection. We'll start now, as Tim isn't ready, with Barry Cryer. <laughs> Esophagus. <laughs> I'd say hesitation. So would I. <laughs> <laughs> you get on with your drinking. Never mind that. Right. You can continue, Graham Brown. Flute. Heather. Plum. Kilt. <laughs> Constitution. Anthracite. <laughs> Pod. Plinth. Globule. <laughs> Mattress. Sorry to talk, shop. <laughs> Counter. Tim and Willie, are you going to challenge the tall eyes? We're playing Captain Have you conceded Mouse, Humphrey? Again? <laughs> Sorry, Humphrey, um, I'm still drinking this yard of ale. <laughs> He's down now two foot four. Graham challenged. Uh, yes, there's a connection between cat and mouse, which Willie... <laughs> I think, it's really I think I can right. uphold that one, yes. Well done. You bonus mark for you there. Thank you. And we'll, right. go over to, we'll go over to you, Willie Rushton, to start the round for your team. Bootlace. As a challenge. <laughs> Connection, Connection, boot and lace. Exactly. Cats or mice, though. Carry on, Will, yes, Carry on, please. Jacket. Tome. Handkerchief. Helicopter. Nostril. 
challenge there from Graham Garden. Yes, the nostril and the handkerchief are often brought in close contact. They're about four words apart. They weren't. They oh. were. Heli- I said both of them for a start. <laughs> Helicopter and nostril were adjacent, were they not? They were. There is an advertising slogan for, for helicopters that says they can land on a nostril. <laughs> <laughs> this this is in every seen national it. paper. I haven't seen it. Tim, you may continue. Bogey. <laughs> I suppose Lauren Bacall, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, she gets up my nose. <laughs> well, she fell up mine. <laughs> Encyclopedia. Cormorant. Challenge from Barry Cryer. Cormorant is in every encyclopedia ever published. I hoped you were going to say that. You're absolutely right, yes. And that, <laughs> and that means you win that round. There's a challenge there from somebody, but my buzzer wasn't switched off, so uh, <laughs> I didn't see it. It's, we not got... a, it's not in a Japanese encyclopedia. It's not in a Finnish in encyclopedia. In Japanese, it is. No, we haven't got any. Oh, yes. Oh, in Japanese. Come along. Come along. Come along. Come along. All right, teams. All right. All right. We'll carry on to the next game, which is a new one. It's oh. called Biographies, and the teams are asked to suggest titles for biographies of their opponents. And this should be a pretty rude round. So, as, uh, Tim, you lost that last round and the one before, we let you start on this round. <laughs> Excuse me, Hope, I'm just going to still drink oh. it. Very close to two Incidentally, in this round, I shall award marks according to the applause from the audience. Tim, will you start? What's the game? You... <laughs> Dear, Dear. Just take your head Drinking out of the way. Drinking makes him deaf, you know. I'm a cinema drunk on four inches. You have for a biography of... A member of the opposite team. I think you're being very patient, Humph. You're a marvellous chairman. Thank you, Barry. Marvellous chairman. Thank you, Barry. Graham Gardner. Um, well, actually, on the tube here today, I had a. Somebody said, oh, there's the other one. And so, the other person said, no, no, it's the other other one. I would like it's a shame Graham's when they go biography like to be called. <laughs> be called when they go on like this. <laughs> uh, the other one, or the other other one. <laughs> Barry. The slogan is pull the other one. You wait till it's your go. <laughs> Barry's other job. other one is funny. I do look Jewish, <laughs> <laughs> or my life already. <laughs> um, oh dear, my wallets at home and other tales of fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Why this applause? Well, why? Why? You've obviously all experienced They've all been... <laughs> and with that last uh, entry there, uh, Tim Brooke Taylor leaps ahead. Barry, it's your turn. That's sheer malice. That was malice. <laughs> malice in Wonderland. Well, Tim Brooke Taylor's autobiography would be entitled The View from Bleachy Head. <laughs> um... <laughs> Coming from Mr. Brillo Pad himself. <laughs> Willie's autobiography would be entitled How I Left Celebrity Squares and Found God. <laughs> <laughs> I or, worked with him on it. <laughs> or with Rod and Gun up Bob Monkhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Willie. Possibly the perfume garden, but it's been used. <laughs> Comes under horticulture in Smith's. It's very funny. Um, <laughs> For Barry, I thought of Barry, my heart at wounded brain. <laughs> Graham. I abstain. <laughs> I don't want to play this game. It's, it's, there's, there's too much wear and tear on the soul to enter into this round. Um, here goes. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Rushton, lovely Willie. Um, I've never liked you. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Rushton, I, I know, actually is working on a, an autobiography called Willie or Not. Or rushed into print. Oh. Tim's is called a third of a star. Or, <laughs> or Tim waits for no man. <laughs> Tim waits for Norman. That should be. <laughs> you I think you that wouldn't. is jub sub judice rather than jub sudice. <laughs> <laughs> anybody, anybody else? Judice. Anybody else got any other? In Tel Aviv. <laughs> okay, well, in a flurry of marks, we go on now to the next game, which is that old favourite, Mornington Crescent. Teams, Mornington Crescent, and we're going to play 
a special, um, we're going to play a special rule today. And it's the fact that even numbers attract penalty number 12. Even numbers attract penalty number 12. <laughs> well, have you got that? No, but if it's only 12. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. If it's 12, that's all right. Why do you Stop always up? argue, Barry? Why don't you I don't argue, argue about it. I just analyse it. Who's going to start? Willie Rushton. Pembridge Crescent. Queen's Park. Oh. Oh, Willie. Uh, Can't blame me. Do something clever. <laughs> No, you ask me. Come on, uh, come on. Regent's Park Road. No. Yes, it's the no, south one. Not, not the Finchley you one. You can't have the two. Can you? I don't think so. Not with Regent's Park. Can I just ask, oh, the Jubilee line dear. we haven't brought in yet, have we? Not as far as I know. Right. Well, you're the boss. OK. <laughs> well, I stick by it. Um, Should Pentonville be a... Road. Tooting Beck High Street. Well, no. Uh, no. Ah, oh, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I didn't say Ning. It's Captain Mouse. I didn't get as far as Ning. Um, Beak Street. Ah, nice. Phoenix Street. <laughs> Phoenix Street. <laughs> Albemarle Street. Good Street. Mornington Crescent. Ah, <laughs> Robin. Yes. 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 Uh, three. Three. I can see that coming three. a mile off. Be fair. Well, three. Graham Garden and Barry Cry, you win that round of Mornington right, Crescent. Right, too. Deservedly. <laughs> Sorry, partner. We go on to a game which is unsuitable. <laughs> Teams are invited to sing various well-known songs in unsuitable ways. <laughs> We're going to start with you as you won that last round. Barry Cryer. I, I think I can sing a song unsuitably. I'd like the audience to join me. They probably all know it. Silent night, <laughs> holy night, all is held. That'll do. Thank you. Thank you. Some of that applause must go to uh, Colin Sell at the piano there, <laughs> who was given no cue whatsoever and came in and came in as a result late. Now. <laughs> Willie Rushton. Ah, uh, yes. West Side Story. I feel pretty. Take it away. <laughs> I feel pretty. Oh, so pretty. I feel pretty and witty and bright. And I pity any girl who isn't me tonight. <laughs> See that pretty girl in the middle there? Who can an attractive girl be? Such a pretty face. Such a pretty smile. Such a pretty... Oh. <laughs> Old Man River. <laughs> I'm shuffling off. I'm itching. Okay, we'll go to you, Graham Garden. Uh, well, um, yes, I'll follow the Clipton British accents of Willie Rushton with another Clipton British song. A Room with a View. Take it away. One, two. Well, a room with a view. <laughs> Good, very good, yes, Graham. Yes. Well received by the audience. Thank you, thank you. Put down that uh, drink now, uh, Tim. You've got a lot of work to do to beat that last run of uh, Graham Gardens. No, I haven't. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say <laughs> I'm the very model of a model of Major General, oh. as sung by Patrick Campbell. <laughs>
Very good, Tim. Excellent. <laughs> right, with the team's <laughs> level pegging, we go on now to our ad lib poem. Oh, I give great. you a first line, you have to take up the lines from then on, and I shall uh, press my buzzer when I think we've reached a fine artistic conclusion. <laughs> or when I wake up. <laughs> We're going to start with Graham Garden this time. Graham, the opening line of the poem is, I love to smell the countryside behind a horse and cart. <laughs> exchange and mart, exchange yes, and mart. Yeah, all right, you'll right. be all right. Don't panic. I love to smell the countryside behind a horse and cart. It is a very lovely smell as long as the horse don't start. <laughs> Please. As long as the horse don't start to fool around and frisk and jump and clatter down the lane. For if it were to do the other thing, it would give me pain. <laughs> now, horses, I love the gentle creatures that frisk along <laughs> the fields. Uh, so. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I'm just waving goodbye to the scansion. Um, <laughs> but in the end, my love of horses invariably yields to my even greater love of rabbits. There's a breed. I love... They've not got the whiff of Harvey Smith, but sometimes you find you need a little rabbit. Now and then... <laughs> It goes a long, long way. <laughs> Our cat enjoys a tin or two. <laughs> which is like cannibalism, I say. Why don't the manufacturers of cat food do something... <laughs> <laughs> something what? <laughs> something that rhymes. Something. Something. Well, do something like I could give him. Something yes, like. Yes, do something oh, like. Oh, excellent. The poster for Watership Down I saw while riding on my bike. It was a very clever one, and this, I tell, it did say. You've read the book, you've seen the film, now try the stew today. <laughs> OK, Graham Garn wins that one. I think we've got time for another short one, Tim. Uh, Tim, you can start this one. I got a nasty illness once when working at the docks. <laughs> I had a very nasty shot, but it was chicken pox. <laughs> now, that may seem a trifle disappointing to some of you. <laughs> but then I got a nasty cold. The tale I tell is true. My nose, it ran and ran and ran. I didn't know where to turn. <laughs> My chest did ache. My lungs did bulge. My eyes, alas, did burn. My arm dropped off. <laughs> and then a leg. And then peculiar parts. <laughs> so I went to Norman St. John Stevens, the minister for the arts. <laughs> Norman, I said, I'm going to pieces. <laughs> Pull yourself together, he cried. And do you know... Now, this is true. I tried and tried and tried. <laughs> I tried and tried all night and day. I tried and tried again. I tried it with a cucumber. <laughs> and then... What a brain. <laughs> and then with a... with a hen. <laughs> now, some of you may wonder what this poem is getting at. <laughs> You may wonder about the theme, so I'll return to that. My limbs had all dropped off, you see. <laughs> and so I cried out then, My limbs are all strewed all around. That's me all over. The end. Again. The end. <laughs> the end. The end. But no, it seems just not the end. <laughs> and so I will pursue... Hump's not in a very good way. His buzzer's come off too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Right, oh, teams, uh, it's pretty good. And we go on now to good news, bad news. This is where one team announces a bit of good news, the other team announces the bad news, then we go back to the first team, they announce the good news, over again to the other team, the lady in the second row yawning and I don't blame her, and, go, <laughs> and so on and so forth. Barry, you're going to start this one with the good news. Um, good news, I've had a windfall. Bad news, oh my God, so you have. <laughs> 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 right. Now then, uh, Willie, you won that one. And uh, I'd like them to be a bit longer, uh, teams. So would we're, I. We're not in that much of a hurry. <laughs> and a bit, little less tasteless, too. Sorry, no, <laughs> Graham, will you start one, please, now, with the good news? Um, good news is that British television is the best in the world. Bad news, this show's not on it. <laughs> good news is it's probably going to be. Bad news, it's definitely going to be. <laughs> uh, the good news is there will be some improvements. Bad news, they're changing the cast. <laughs> the good news, our team will be Jacqueline Bissett in a wet vest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just pause for a moment. Uh, oh. Oh. The bad oh, news is... Take your pause off. Oh, uh, the bad... <laughs> The bad news is our team will be Graham and Barry. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is the chairman will be Robert Robinson. The, the bad news, it always bloody is. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who wants to start this next one? Because I can't read the producer's writing. <laughs> I'll start it because I have a frivolous thought, Humphrey. Good news! The audience is nude. <laughs> participate, participate. <laughs> oh, they have. Oh. Bad news is they've turned the lights on. <laughs> Good news. Oh, look, there's Jacqueline Bissett. <laughs> Bad news, trick of the light, it's Cardew Robinson. <laughs> Good news, he is in a wet vest. <laughs> Right, I'd better give you the marks now. Graham and Barry, eight, and Tim and Willie, four. <laughs> and we go on to teams where I sit back. And you don't mind if I leave early, do you, Humphrey? I'm afraid I've got a train to catch. I'm off. Goodbye. Uh, I've got to help him carry his bags. <laughs> Judging by the contribution that Willie Sorry. usually makes to this round, I don't think it's going to make any difference. <laughs> to you. Okay. It this is where I uh, think about something else while you give me your late arrivals for the guest at the science fiction ball. I said they wouldn't come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's Sidney Poitier as the dark star. <laughs> here's one for the buffs. Mr. and Milton. <laughs> <laughs> the buffs here's the left. one for the drugs. Here's one for the Steady the buffs. The muffs would be <laughs> very accurate. Mr. and Mrs. Aville. And their son, Alf Aville. Oh, <laughs> nice. Here come the Trippids. And their son, Thaddeus de Trippids. <laughs> I just came back because I'd left something. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm off again now. Goodbye this, again. <laughs> this, bizarrely enough, is our 2,000th guest. It's Bill Oddy, who is, in fact, seems to be rather high on something. Uh, look, it's a, a spaced Odyssey. <laughs> oh, so it's easy. oh, there's Mr. and Mrs. Blastoff with their... Large family, their children, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, <laughs> etc. Mr. and Mrs. Tination Moon and their son, Des Tination Moon. <laughs> oh, I thought he'd come with me, but there we are. <laughs> I wish he had. Oh, dear, there's Flash Gordon. Stop it, stop it. <laughs> oh, Lord, and Isaac has him off as well. <laughs> Foundation's good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've just had a John Wyndham fall. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, so you have. But over there, look, <laughs> there's Mr. and Mrs. Vasion of the Body Snatchers and their son, Ian. <laughs> Vasion of the Body Snatchers. <laughs> All right, then. It's uh, cabaret time. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's Shirley Bassey, the screecher from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> no, perhaps not. Oh, will you welcome, will you welcome, please, Dr. Dr. Who? Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Willie. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> You're you must kick me again. <laughs> Over there, <laughs> the Mr. and Mrs. to the centre of the earth, and their daughter Jenny to the centre of the earth. <laughs> and over there, will you welcome our prize guest for this evening, Bob Hope? Or is it Ella Fitzgerald? I can't quite see. It's either Bob or Ella. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. The audience are getting tasteful. <laughs> uh, well, the veins are beginning to stand out on the forehead. Oh, there's the Android. <laughs> Android and mothership and lunar module and anti gravity <laughs> and their sister Daft Ada. <laughs> <laughs> what a meteor! Now, <laughs> asteroid answer. Oh. Coming into grown territory now. Yeah, we are. Yes, we are. Oh, there's Patrick Moore asking us all to watch out for Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Challenge from Graham Garden. <laughs> Can we all go home now, please? <laughs> well, I was just going to say that I think the time has come for me to announce the score of that round alone, which is uh, Graham and Barry 408, Tim and Willie 112, <laughs> and the audience 3. <laughs> and that's all for this week, so we'll uh, be with you again next time. <laughs> Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Geoffrey Perkins. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Thank you very much, and welcome to the programme that combines all the fun of the fair with all the annoyance of having to pay to get in. So, while our scorer is sharpening her pen, let me introduce the two teams. <laughs> Let me introduce the two teams who are Tim Brooke Taylor and making a first appearance on the programme, Denise Coffey. <laughs> and Graham Gardner and Barry Cryer. <laughs> and we go straight into the first game for which our teams have been hand-picked. This is the one called Straight Face and in this round the aim is not to amuse the audience. Each panellist in turn says a word, and the first one who gets a laugh from the studio audience is disqualified. The remaining three continue the game in rotation until only one survives, and for that one I award a large number of points. Now, who shall we start with? We'll start this one with Barry Cryer. Small holding. <laughs> well, that, we'll count that as a trial run, because obviously... <laughs> the audience is extremely nervous. <laughs> now, Barry. You can start again. Plinth. Table. Contrapuntal. <laughs> well, now, that oh. I'm afraid... Oh. Every time you do that. Oh. With that hilarious word, uh, Graham, I'm afraid that... that rules you out. They only laugh so out of Tim, malice. You continue now, and we have to bypass Graham from now on. Cork. Truss. <laughs> Well, I, I'll put that down as a titter. Yes, you could, you'll survive that. It wasn't, a, it wasn't what you might call a belly laugh, was it? Denise? Um, hat. Tim? Glass. Barry. Gazebo. <laughs> now, that was a belly laugh. Oh. <laughs> Your team hasn't done very well so far. You're both out. <laughs> anyway, as this is an Still individual... As this is an individual game, let's go on now, and it's between Denise and Tim, in that order. They're conniving mm. with each other. We're just good friends, not yes. friends. Yes, there was a gap in the programme, we filled it. <laughs> <laughs> right, Denise. Chrysanthemum. Saucer. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was me. <laughs> Certificate. Budgerigar. Egg. Goat. Microphone. Nicholas Parsons. <laughs> 
I committed suicide. <laughs> He's not a word. That, well, he is, but I mean... <laughs> that's not how you spell it. Not what we say, Right, well, that's a easy that euphemism. The answer from Tim Brooke Taylor there <laughs> may, means that Denise wins the first round. And according to the rules that I read out at the beginning of the game, she wins a large number of points. <laughs> now, here's where I tell the teams in advance that uh, they're going to be asked at the end of the programme to announce the late arrivals at the Gourmet's Ball. Late oh, arrivals great. at the Gourmet's Ball. That's food for thought. <laughs> you take okay, some we go on now to the game, please. which oh. is called Good News, Bad News. One team announces some good news, the other team then announces the bad news. We go back to the first team who announced the good news, over to the other team who announced the and so on, and so on, as you all probably know. But we're going to start with you, Tim, oh. to announce the good news. Good news, Willie Rushton isn't here this week. What's <laughs> the move? Bad news to these copies. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> ah, but the good news is I'm getting paid for it. <laughs> what? The bad news is you're not getting paid as much as Willie Rushton. Oh. <laughs> I suspected that. Good news is you're not getting paid as much as us either. <laughs> bad news, BBC are paying in kind. <laughs> The good news is my Patrick Mower is waiting outside. <laughs> the bad news is he's brought his telescope. <laughs> <laughs> good news, I'm being paid in Joan Bakewell's. <laughs> the bad news is I'm being paid in Willie Rushton's. Oh, the good news is Willie Rushton isn't here this week. Poor <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> And that puts Denise streets ahead, but still we'll carry on. Barry, will you announce the good news? Uh, the good news is, oh, no, no, no. Margaret Thatcher's going to resign. Well, um, the bad news is she's going to resign herself for being Prime Minister for the next five years. <laughs> 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 yeah. yes, she's unstoppable. Anyway, Denise, as you're so far ahead, let's see if we can get you to lose a few points. Will you start with the good news? Oh, um, the good news is... The Americans have landed on Mars. The bad news is, Mars was still in them. Not Mars. <laughs> uh, good news is, she quite enjoyed it. <laughs> the bad news is, her sea of tranquility will never be the same again. Uh, the good news is, the Russians are sending up a probe. I'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that, boss. The bad news is. <laughs> We can't go any further with this. <laughs> the good news is the Russians can. <laughs> <laughs> and the bad news is that Barry Cryer was disqualified there for speaking out of turn. <laughs> Let's revert to the normal order now, if we may, with you, Barry, if you'll start, please, with the good news. The good news um, is... Um, have you heard the one about the two Irishmen? <laughs> the bad news is, no, I haven't. <laughs> the good news is, he's not going to tell it anyway. Bad news is, oh, yes, he is. <laughs> good news is, oh, yes, I am. The bad news is, oh, yes, he is. <laughs> oh, no, he's not. <laughs> oh, 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 gentleman of taste and trumpet playing. <laughs> and, that, uh, and that puts you ahead. So now we go on... <laughs> Now we'll go on to the game which is called Unsuitable Songs. I'm going to suggest the title of a song to each member of the team and ask them to sing them in an unsuitable way. And Colin Sell is on hand, of course, to accompany them at the piano. Barry Cry, we'll start with you. And I'm going to ask you to sing Maybe It's Because I'm, I'm a Londoner. Yes. Is that it? Oh, in an unsuitable way. If you may. And I love London still. Oh, mother, maybe it's because I'm a Londoner. Turn that nice again that I think of her wherever I go. <laughs> maybe it's been inside of me. Just walking up and down. Turn that nice again. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner. That I love London town. Let George do it. Well, 
Judging from audience applause, nine out of ten for that one. Denise, I'd like you to sing Why Can't the English? Well, you, you may ask. <laughs> in, I am in an unsuitable way. Uh, let me think now. Yes. Why can't the English teach their children how to speak? Oh. This verbal class distinction oh. now should be antique. If you spoke as I do, mate, you wouldn't stand the way you do. You might be making a fortune doing silly commercials, too. <laughs> And judging from audience applause, Denise gets nine out of ten. Now, Tim, oh. I'd, I'd like you to sing Rule Britannia. Carry on, Colonel. Rule Britannia! Lunch. Judging from the audience applause there, Tim gets nine out of ten. And Graham, we go over to you. And I, I, I'd like you to sing Bright Eyes. Oh. Uh, delicious looking pie. <laughs> Bright eyes burning like fire. Bright eyes. Oh. Oh. How the lights that burn so brightly suddenly burn so pale. <laughs> Bright I'm um, delicious. <laughs> oh, that's well, true. Well, judging from the audience applause, you get ten out of ten, but I'm going to dock you one mark for using uh, sound effects, which aren't allowed, <laughs> which gives you nine out of ten. Well done. Now we go on to suitcases. And uh, you'll be delighted to know that the teams are going on holiday. And uh, for reasons that are too complicated to go into, they have to pack their suitcases entirely with objects beginning with a letter that I shall give them. The other team can challenge if they think that any of the objects will have difficulty fitting into a suitcase. And the packing team will then provide suitable far-fetched explanations as to how they intend to cram them in. And we're going to start this one with Tim and Denise. And you're going to start with the letter T. Toast. Uh, some toast in there. Trombone. Trombone, of course. Yes. Uh, we'd need a trombone. Yes. Uh, tin of sardines. Yes. Mm. Trampoline. Certainly. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, challenge there from Graham Garden. How big is this tin of sardines? <laughs> <laughs> that's not a challenge, that's a question. Question from Graham Garden. <laughs> it's a lot smaller than the suitcase. I accept that. <laughs> right. Certainly doesn't begin with tea. Scones. <laughs> I always have scones with tea. Oh. <laughs> oh uh, okay, carry on, Denise. Toenail clipper. <laughs> Teeth. Spare pair. <laughs> Challenge from Barry Crown. Teeth do not fold. <laughs> yes, they do. Back on themselves. You know. False teeth, fold right. Haven't you noticed yakety teeth? <laughs> Tim Why has taken his out and demonstrated. I think we have to accept it. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll support that uh, uh, transvestite. Explanation. Um, tarantula. Tarantula, certainly. Mm. I wouldn't go with that one. A tango. Theatre. Uh, tortoise. Treacle. Treacle, of course, certainly. for the tortoise. Yes. <laughs> uh, toad. To go for the tarantula to eat. Oh, yes, mm. yes, very yes. thoughtful. Yes. How kind. You're yes. so kind. Uh, yes, well, I like to yes. think that yes. I'm on holiday. I've got a tin of peas, a uh, tin of soup, uh, a yeah. uh, tin of jam. Yes, a tin of tins. Yes. Well, that was a wonderful film, uh, Tin of Tins. I saw Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Tobago. Tobago, yes. Uh, challenge from Grant. Two bago. One bago would be enough, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll uphold it. No, it's I not that one. Oh, oh. I think I'd better uphold it. You keep that your one. private life. <laughs> <laughs> At least show the audience. Yes, I think yeah. I'd better uphold that one on behalf of the listeners <laughs> and ask uh, Barry and Graham to pack their suitcase with things beginning with the letter B. B. <laughs> A bus. Oh. 
Oh. Challenge, <laughs> noisy challenge. Yeah, I think we buzz together in unison. We do, yes, don't we? we do. Yeah. Well, there's something about it. I'm sorry. There's yeah. something. Yes, this is going to be great. Yeah. Who, who well, wishes to express I, the challenge? I, I, I was going to ask off whom is it a bus? Queen Victoria? Somebody like that? No, 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 bus. Bus, bus, bus. I agree, a bus wouldn't go in there. I said bus, bus. Well, challenge from Tim. I would dispute that a bus would go into it, apart from anything else. Bus is Elizabethan for kiss. This is a little cross. Okay, I, Elizabethanly speaking, I challenge that a kiss would go in the suitcase. Prove it. <laughs> so you can't have a that's bus. That's There's either no bus answer. or six all come at the same time. You can't, <laughs> you can't have a bus. Well, I mean, what can you say to a person like this? I mean, I, I give up. You're you can better. say, let's go yes, on to the next round. Right. <laughs> Denise and Tim win that one, as they've won all the others so far. Better yeah. playing this game than with Willie. I can't. And that puts you ahead. Now then, uh, we're going to play a silly party game, and the party game concerned is the one that everyone knows. It's musical chairs. The music will be provided by Colin Sell, and each time the music stops, we're going to take away one chair. Ah, nice. Tim, don't cry like that. And, uh, with, a, with a monstrous lack of chivalry there, oh, all the men sat down and Denise has been disqualified. She's going to come sit next to me. That's right, you sit next to me, Denise. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> some, ch some chairs have materialised from nowhere. But, Graham Garden, you're disqualified for sitting oh. next to me. <laughs> We're left with Barry and Tim. Start off now. Barry Tyre was left standing, and therefore Tim Brooke Taylor wins that particular round. Tim Brooke Taylor. Short pause now while the chairs are put back into position. And Sorry. here's where we go on to the next round, which is called Sounds Peculiar. This is where we play to each member of the panels a sound effect, and they have to identify it. And I shall judge whether they, they identify it correctly or not. We're going to start with you, Tim Brooke Taylor. Here's your sound effect. Right, Tim. I wondered what now, that microphone Now, I'd like you to identify that sound. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Hans. I wondered what that microphone was doing in my bathroom this morning. I think, in fact, that's Henry Cooper splashing it all over for the very, very last time. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right. Oh. That's what it was. Oh. <laughs> okay. Barry Crow, here's your sound yes. effect coming up now. That's Cyril Smith testing waterbeds. <laughs> or Ralph Reader's Digest. Well, you got it right at last, Barry. Let's just hear that one again. Joan Collins' autobiography, isn't it? <laughs> well, you were right that time, too. So, Denise. Denise, here's your sound effect. <laughs> now, what do, you, what do you think that was, Denise? Well, um... It sounded like Cyril Smith losing the Battle of the Bulge. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely letting it all yes. hang out, yes. 
Yes, I would agree yes, with that, yes. isn't it? Yes. I, I would admire it, yes. courage. And the audience obviously agrees with it. Yes. <laughs> Who am I among so many? So, <laughs> Graham. Graham Garden, here's your sound effect. Graham, that's the saddest thing I've ever heard. Now, <laughs> wait till you hear my answer. <laughs> that must have been the staff of the Times making sure that nobody heard the first cuckoo until the paper was back <laughs> on the. <laughs> and with that spontaneous burst of applause from the audience, Graham, you win that round. <laughs> Put you ahead now. <laughs> We go on to Mornington Crescent. I've had a letter from a listener who asks why, up to now, we've never played the alternative diagonal rule. <laughs> well, it's not, so, not very good. I think he has a point. I, I thought it might be a little bit complicated for this, but we'll try it. We'll try it. This Sorry. simply means the diagonal moves alternately, please. Mm. And I shall oh, keep a, a check. We is that by teams, Hump, for alternate people? By teams. Right. And is that one three five or two four six? <laughs> two four six. <laughs> Very, very two four difficult. six. Yeah, well, you're you're one. You know. Spend two stars. <laughs> You've been reading my mail again. <laughs> and self-taught. I've been meeting him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <And> so am I. <laughs> yes. Right. Ooh. Now then, you've had time to think about that, team. So, uh, Denise, I think you can start this one. Oh dear, uh, this is very difficult. Uh, <laughs> Um, he's prompting well, her. He's prompting her. Hum. It's her first time. Yes, it's very yeah, different. Yeah. Don't she's never done the show before. You never forget <laughs> the first time. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm reliably advised uh, Ladbroke Grove. Um, St Pancras. Mornington Crescent. See? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. See, you have Two, four, six. It doesn't yes, matter. he's right. right. Yes, I am right. Well, that's but the trouble with the way... Oh, all right, yeah. all right, all right. <laughs> Like, Barry, all right, all I right. think the more complicated it is, and funnily enough, the easier it is to get to the end. I don't know why. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Barry, Barry, we'll, we'll play another round of that, because that one was, uh, I think you Thank were a you. bit bewildered by the uh, formation there. So. Not bewildered, not bewildered. No, no. Misled. Yes. Misled, Misled. <laughs> yes. No juice. All right, Barry, you start another game. Birdcage walk. Oh, oh, no. Um, mm. Oh, uh, Southampton Road. The Mall. Vine Street. Oh, Jury Lane. Evershort Street. Camden Town. Finchley Road. Uxbridge Road. Golders Green Road. Goldhawk Road. Platts Lane. Morning to Crescent. Yes! Oh, yes! Yeah. 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 In fact, uh, you, the knees, you, did, you overlooked a, a faulty diagonal there halfway through, but yes, still, I'm, I'm afraid I did. it's your responsibility to challenge it. So Barry and Graham, win. there's a challenge there from Tim Brooke Taylor. Too late, I've switched it off. <laughs> <laughs> and we go on to the blissful moment in the programme where I sit back and let the teams announce their late arrivals to the Gourmet's Ball. There's the unbearably cocky Saint-Jacques. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there's Mr. Benedict and his former wife, ex-Benedict. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. oh. Right. Will you welcome, please, all the way from Australia? Possibly. That Aborigine, possibly. <laughs> no, probably, please. That Aborigine family, the Belongs. <laughs> the Belongs and that hermaphrodite child. Wilma Bill Belong. <laughs> oh, no. Birdcage Wolf. <laughs> Morning to Crescent. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, uh, all the way from New Zealand, will you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Spy and their sheep farmer son, Shepherd Spy. <laughs> uh, Mesdames et Messieurs, will you welcome, please, Certainly. Monsieur et Madame à la King and their cowardly son, Chicken à la King. <laughs> Followed closely by a prominent member of the Quebec Protestant movement, yes. whose slogan is Canada L'Orange. Oh. <laughs> Welcome, please, Carrie Dagneau, who has come with Rosemary. 
<laughs> and about time too. <laughs> May not be funny, but it's got spice. <clears throat> Oh dear, there are two punk gate crashes. Oh no, not to yes, dear at I'm all. Yes, I'm afraid so. It's Sid V.C. Soir. <laughs> <laughs> and, and with him he has some unintelligent croutons. <laughs> white flag, white flag. Yes, exactly. Well, you're welcome, please, from Bonnie Scotland, Mr. and Mrs. Chips. And their naughty son, Scampion Chips. <laughs> oh, there's John Bird with a party of friends. Walter Pigeon. <laughs> Donald Pheasants. Don Partridge and Robert Poulet. <laughs> We're all going to be thinking of bird names. <laughs> and George Woodcock. Oh, give him the chance. I'm not one for grounds. <laughs> All the way <coughs> from oh, sorry. Sunny sorry. Italy, Mr. Oh. and Mrs. Stroni and their daughter Mini Stroni. Oh. And her auntie, Pasta. <laughs> oh. And Mr. and Mrs. Perthaday and their daughter Sue Perthaday. <laughs> <laughs> and over there, sitting all alone on her own as a respectable French lady, Soul Bonne Femme. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon, I'm not in a hurry with this. <laughs> spotted the Yorkshire gourmet by Gumrone. <laughs> and there's the chef showing us his speciality. I wish he wouldn't do that. <laughs> there's Mr. and Mrs. Toast and their good food spy son, Egon. <laughs> oh, excellent. Excellent. Will you welcome, please, Claude Crabbe? Oh. He's, he's specially dressed for the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> the Baron of Beef and his randy son, Sir Loin. <laughs> <laughs> and all the way from China, Mr. and Mrs. Noodle and their son, Chris P. Noodle. <laughs> oh, come in, digestion. <laughs> There's Sorry. bread and butter pudding. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here come what? Mr. and Mrs. Aspic and their naughty daughter, Cherry Sin Aspic. <laughs> oh, excellent. Oh, Cardo Pear and their posh daughter, Eva Cardo Pear. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Denise Coffee is one out of sight. Not forgetting Denise. the Chokeheart family and their son, Artie Chokeheart. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Specially Delicious Asparagus just flown in, but don't look at the price. You won't notice it till the end, and then you'll scream. And uh, son, Iva Specially Delicious Asparagus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's time for Denise Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a... <laughs> Denise uh, Coffee, having salvaged her team from complete uh, disaster <laughs> in this round, means that Barry and Graham win. <laughs> <laughs> and we shall uh, all be with you again same time next week. Goodbye. <laughs> no, no, no. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Denise Coffey were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Geoffrey Perkins. <laughs> we present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Oh, the people's favourite. And welcome to the game, which is like playing Scrabble without using the letters of the alphabet. <laughs> Two teams, as always. Firstly, for the gentlemen, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> And for the ladies, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton. <laughs> and we go into our first round, which is the familiar one called Blues. For this round, each team will give the other the topic for a blues, which they must then improvise, accompanied, of course, by Colin Sell at the piano. Now, uh, Tim and Willie, will you give Graham and Barry their subject for a blues, please? The That's Life Blues. <laughs> <laughs> This morning <laughs> felt in the mood for a bit of dancing. 
not a rhyme, not a rhyme. I got out of my bed. And I hurriedly put my pants in. <laughs> On my legs, that is. <laughs> Went over to the piano and opened the lid, but when I looked inside, the keyboard reminded me of Esther Ransom. <laughs> Time to get that three is. marks for that. And uh, <laughs> Tim and Willie, you're going to sing a blues. Now, will Graham and Barry, will you give them the subject, please? The Euro Parliament. European Or Parliament. ancillary subjects. European Parliament. European Parliament blues. European Parliament blues. That's it. That's, a, that's oh, the kiddo. That's, that's the already kiddo. been sung, I think. In that case, it'll be easier for you. <laughs> <laughs> to the Bee Gees version. I woke up this morning. Always do, but never quite sure where. <laughs> I, I was thinking about the European Parliament. Am I the only one to care? Oh, I think I am. The only bit of legislation to get through so far is a change in the rules of Je Sans Frontier. Oh. It's a knockout. Yes. Mm. <laughs> That's eight marks minus five for the French pronunciation, which brings you down to three and level pegging. Now, here's where I introduce a round that's played at the end of the program to give the teams time to think of silly names for people arriving at the estate agent's ball. The nothing, estate agent's ball. Nothing funny about estate agents. <laughs> All right, teams, you got that? So let's go on to a round which is called Paranoia. In this one, Team A decides that there is something wrong with Team B, and Team B have to guess what's wrong with themselves <laughs> by asking questions while Team A reply in a manner appropriate to Team B's affliction. And the aim is to make the members of Team B paranoid <laughs> and to leave the studio twitching. Except February, which has 29. <laughs> <laughs> William Tim, you have an affliction uh, unknown to yourselves, which you have to find out by questioning Graham and Barry. Willie and Tim are both wearing wigs. <laughs> um, do we both suffer from this affliction? Oh, I don't... I think affliction is affliction, taking uh, it... To, I, don't know what I you're think you're being about. a bit paranoid about that. <laughs> <laughs> We've got inferiority complexes. No! Why, no. why, why you, should you? There's why no reason. There's nothing. Why no, we are inferior. There's no shame. You're ahead of the field. I didn't mean that. No. <laughs> What did you say? No, nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing to be ashamed of at all. Speaking off the top of my head. Yeah. I didn't mean that. <laughs> speaking out of turn. <laughs> Is one of us balding? No. Well, no not from where I'm sitting, no. I can tell you that. Right. No, no, Such no, luxuriant, natural-appearing locks. Exactly. Well, we do not no have wigs. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh! Oh, no, we we don't. We never have guessed. We'd never have guessed. We go on now to you, Graham and Barry, who have a sad affliction, which you've got to find out about from Tim and Willie. Graham and Barry both have weak bladders. <laughs> <laughs> right, Graham and Barry, will you start the questioning? Yes. Hope all the people at home saw the blackboard. <laughs> Can you eat it? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, we will try and be quick. Um, it's not, no, we're no, it's not, we're nothing We're impatient. So, sorry, what was that? Barry? We don't have a lot of time, is that? No, 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 no we'll do our best. We're forceful and dominant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we go things yeah. quickly to their natural I mean, conclusion. It we'll fill in, don't worry, don't worry. I'm sure we can... Um... We're drunk. <laughs> Carry on as normal, Something to do with being fierce and intimidating. Well, it could frighten some people. Or I is there some... <laughs> <laughs> the audience are edging off. <clears throat> is there a medical, a medical connotation in this affliction? You might take it to... A doctor? As... But would he... What would he do with it? He'd send it off to the laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> Is this organic? Yes. Are you glad to be sitting s Look. several yards away from us? Yes. <laughs> We're trying to help you. We're being as quick as we can. Um, it must be awful for you. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, it, it, it's nothing to do with, uh, well, incontinence here, of anything. <laughs> it is your um, shame. Uh, we'll give you the answer in a minute. <laughs> We wanted this round to be a quickie, actually. Uh, you, 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 you can stop crossing your legs, because I think you've got it. <laughs> I think they're near enough, don't I you? I think they're near enough. Well, we have another uh, 
<laughs> round of those together because that's, that's it was weak blood as well by the way yes. so let's oh. uh, uh, <laughs> go over now to Tim and Willie Willie and Tim are both new <laughs> I've just had a flash that 50,000 people have switched their sets off. <laughs> now, what's more? Tim and Willie, will you start the questioning, please? Find out what's the matter with you. Has it a sexual connotation? I live in hope. Not, not, not in, in, where in your case, no. <laughs> In our opinion, no. <laughs> Is there anything to do with, I don't know how to pronounce it, machismo? <laughs> no. <laughs> you keep your kismo out of this, sunny. <laughs> Are you in any strange way jealous of it? <laughs> not anymore, no. And certainly not we in any strange way. We used to have something, way. but we've lost it. <laughs> not knowing what was there in the first place, I can't speak, really. <laughs> oh, yes, you have lost so something, have lost in a something. sense. In yes, a sense, yes, in a yes. sense, you have lost it. Well, yes. you better ask a question, or they'll think you're trying to cover something up. <laughs> I see so much of you on this programme, it's... Is it my, my basic hirsuteness again you're getting at, the fact that I'm... Uh, well, I won't be getting at it, but... Long um, head. I will shave my armpits. Your ba I know. Yes. Yes. Have we lost our... Uh, we've lost something. Have we lost our... Uh, youth? <laughs> <laughs> I saw you will at this rate. <laughs> it's really, I think it's fair to say it's something more material than that. Yes. <laughs> we've lost our wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Among other things, yes. Well, Lost if you haven't, I don't know where you're keeping them. <laughs> <laughs> to, to put this tastefully, would we be safe serving the drinks in a harem? No. You possibly, yes. <laughs> well, yeah, apart from that, I mean, in this game. <laughs> <laughs> Nor would you be safe frying sausages in a nudist colony, but there you go. <laughs> and it doesn't have a sexual connotation. Stay away from electric fans. <laughs> Is there a measurement involved? A what? A measurement. <laughs> no, they're not going to get it. They're in not, they're not. So no, you better no. tell them what they are. You're nude. <laughs> no, we're not. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's those x-ray glasses you've got on again. <laughs> Always the last Just to head off any further argument, let's go quickly on to uh, Graham and Barry for your affliction now, which you've got to discover from Tim and Willie. Meanwhile, the studio audience is being informed as I hope you at home. Graham and Barry both have a fatal fascination for BBC commissionaires. <laughs> <laughs> Start questioning, please, Graham. Or Barry. Well, what's the matter with us, then? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody well, else has got it that I know of. <laughs> it's a minority thing, really, is it? It I is. I think so. Yes. Are we... It is. Oh, a minority thing. Are we liberal in any way? Immensely. <laughs> There's no sexual connotation with this. Oh, yeah. Yes. We think so, we think so. We like it. It's not just platonic. We don't, we don't know it. Could be the uniforms. But look, can you, look, could you just keep your eyes on here and stop looking at the back of the... I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> look, yeah. Is it something to do with our lovable producer? I'm not sure he's into it entirely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's very easier for him. He sees more of them. Yes. <laughs> he sees more of them. Well, more, more than you, them, do you think? Oh, I would say so, day would by you? day, yeah. Mm. Mm. Is it something to do with being obsequious? Well, they mingle it in occasionally, but they can turn nasty, can't they? They can. <laughs> I think they're a fine breed of men. Now, stop looking at the back. <laughs> it's nothing to do with the corps of commissioners. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh! Ah, ah, it is. The commissioner's clapping there had misled us. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got there yet. No, we're no, not. We're no, not suffering from commissioners. Um. <laughs> <laughs> You're certainly not suffering from commissioners. <laughs> we are commissioner's pets. I, I think that's close enough. I think honestly. that's close enough, yes. Yeah. Yes. What, you, you have a fatal... What enormous screed was written on the blackboard? Tell them, Tim. You have a fatal fascination for BBC commissioners. <laughs> ah, who doesn't? <laughs> I do too, and I want to get into the car park. <laughs> <laughs> and having won that round, we'll go on to the next one. Now, here's one uh, which uh, is, promises to be a firm favourite. And it's called Tug of War. And it's quite simple. It's a simple trial of physical strength. We have a rope... A grubby handkerchief tied to the middle of it. The teams will come out into the middle of the uh, arena here. 
Willie Rustin and Tim Brooke Taylor. who will be supported by the audience on the right of the theatre here, and Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> Colin Sell will play appropriate music. <laughs> Willie, Rushton, Willie Rushton is the anchor man for his team. Barry Cryer is... They're squabbling over the rope at the moment. Line the handkerchief up, please, to the microphones there. Line the handkerchief up. A little bit to the right. Give way a little bit, Barry, uh, Tim and Willie. Right. No, that it. Hold it. Hold it. Take the strain. Right. Now. He. Oh, 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 Those of you listening at home, uh, as you realise, that that was won by Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton. <laughs> Let those cows in. We go on to a round called Double Feature. <laughs> this round takes at its premise the poverty of the international film industry. For economic reasons, new films will have to be remakes of pairs of old films. I want you to hear the resulting titles, and I shall award points for anything approaching humour. <laughs> Cautiously. <laughs> right, Barry, will you start, please? Well, I've just had a whisper, but I'm feeling better now. Uh, <laughs> there's a plan to combine hair and dry rot, new film called Dandruff. <laughs> Tim? Well, the, the makers of Texas Chainsaw Massacre have got together... Uh, yes, they've got together... <laughs> Smooth talking devil. <laughs> <laughs> like you to start say. again, Tim. The makers of Texas Chainsaw Massacre <laughs> and Animal Farm have got together to produce bacon at 30p a pound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's almost worth waiting for it. Now, Graham. <laughs> Graham? What? Uh, a multimedia triple bill. Uh, <laughs> Any film, say. stage and television. Uh, the, the remaking Von Ryan's Express Evita and uh, Chalk and Cheese to make Von Ryvita and Cheese. <laughs> right, Willie, see if you can improve on that. Well, there's a very old movie called My Darling Clementine, which they're tying into the Kentucky Fried movie and producing the Clement Fried story. <laughs> Well, clearly Tim and Willie have uh, won that one on uh, a claim from the audience. Now then, <laughs> if I can find them, we have tag wrestling now. And tag, tag, res tag wrestling means that I'm going to give you each a payoff of a story and I shall then start one team off telling the story to fit that particular punchline. And when I feel like I'll press the buzzer and a member from the opposing team will have to take up the story working towards their punchline. I needn't tell you that both punchlines are different. Barry and Graham, your punchline is, quote, this ferret has been doctored, unquote. <laughs> Screamed the chiropodist. <laughs> All right? And Tim and Willie, your punchline is, amazing what you find in a toad in the hole. <laughs> Chuckled Disraeli. <laughs> All right. You've had longest to think, Barry and Graham, so if you'll start your story working towards your punchline. The nation mourned the death of Disraeli that year. <laughs> <laughs> As Arnold Tribley and Freddy the foot-shaped ferret <laughs> strode down the road to a chiropodist, Arnold's foot had been causing him some pain and he was taking a corn to be paired and he couldn't help remarking on the amount of buzzers in the air that time. <laughs> and the pain was so exquisite he turned to Freddy and said how can I how can I take my mind off this, this terrible pain and Freddy said well think about something else think about what the whole nation is thinking about think about think about for example Disraeli because we're all all mourning about Disraeli and, and he thought about Disraeli and he thought about Disraeli at supper time. 
<laughs> and Israeli, who in the evening would sit down. Was Israeli the one that chewed everything 140,000 times? Which Gladstone. Was what? Gladstone. But it was Gladstone. very close, wasn't <laughs> it? <laughs> a challenge there from Graham Gard. No, Tim's wrong. Uh, Israeli chewed Gladstone 144 <laughs> times. <laughs> Bonus mark. <laughs> Carry on, Tim. And uh, his special favourite food, of course, was toad in the hole. Now, then he thought, I'm just being morbid thinking about the past and Israeli. I must banish this from my mind forever. Right. Must rush down to the chiropodists. <laughs> I've got your first bit now. He's oh, got, dear. He's got a foot-shaped ferret. Yeah, with my foot-shaped ferret. It could it easily be mistaken the, for a foot. The, the vet is out and uh, the, the ferret can be mistaken for a foot, so the chiropodist is <laughs> obvious. Johnny to go to. The chiropodist felt... He had to cheer them up in some way, prior to attending to this corn, or veruca, which I'd never been able to play. <laughs> um, not well. Not well. So he said, you know, all the gossip at the moment he said about Israel, he said, I've actually got, I've, I've got a bit of a scoop here. I was actually dealing with his feet at the moment he pipped it. And I heard his last words <laughs> rang out from the bed as I dug the knife into his foot. What <laughs> <laughs> God, how I wish I could remember them. <laughs> now, what's your trouble, Squire? Well, Arnold said, it's the corn on my foot. And the chiropodist didn't like to say anything when he looked down and apparently saw three feet. And <laughs> while he was thinking about it... He suddenly remembered what he'd forgotten earlier. <laughs> <laughs> But discarding it swiftly. <laughs> he said to the chiropodist, I think still... Oh! <laughs> I hope my master buzzer will go, he said. <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention, he said, to the invasion of the buzzer. <laughs> at this time of year, regular as clockwork. Buzz, buzz, buzz they go, and we pay them no heed, Tim. no attention. We pay them buzzers. <laughs> There's a name the like world. Arnold Show Ridley. Me what hope flash. can you get from me, said the chiropodist? Which reminds me. <laughs> <laughs> About Disraeli, who was the name of a small animal that had been brought in earlier. Why did I bring in an animal? Ah, oh, yes, because the ferret, who had uh, an owner called Disraeli. And Disraeli also had a toad. And, wait a minute, I was just getting a connection between chiropodists and... So there they were in the chiropodists, all these ephemeral characters, I'm sure you remember them very well, and uh, uh, Arnold presented this uh, foot-shaped ferret to the chiropodist, who reacted in horror. This ferret has been taught to scream the chiropodist. <clears throat> yeah, give him Even a Even I agree thought. with that. No, I agree. I'll tell you what we'll do, to be Not absolutely too fair. Too good. Uh, we'll, we'll give half a point to Barry for half finishing his story, mumbling it, <laughs> and we'll go uh, pass it on to Willie to see if he has any further comments. Amazing what you find in a toad in a hole, said Disraeli, on his dead <laughs> And it's a draw. And that one's a draw, and we have a game now, a new game called Telegrams. Oh. And quite simply, the teams are asked to send telegrams for unlikely occasions. I think in the interest of order, we'll do this one person at a time. So send your telegram for an unlikely occasion, please. Graham Garden. Uh, I did send one to Yul Brynner after he opened in The King and I, uh, saying, congratulations, it'll be a smash as soon as the wig arrives. <laughs> Tim? Well, speaking of uh, opening nights, in the olden days, chastity belts uh, and the Crusades, <laughs> a night coming back from the Crusades, I would have sent a telegram saying, best of luck on the opening night. <coughs> <laughs> Please. <clears throat> Barry. This is factual. This is a telegram that was sent to Moses. It was found with the Dead Sea Scrolls. It arrived a bit late. <laughs> it said, you left your flippers in the Red Sea. Please contact lifeguard. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I'd like to have sent one to Nelson saying, good luck at Trafalgar. I'll keep an eye out for you. <laughs> well, it's harmless. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I was going to send one of dubious taste to Rod Stewart on his marriage. May all your troubles be enormous, but I'm not going to... <laughs> I was going to send one instead to Joan Collins, which reads, Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Any advance on that? Can I also send one to Richard III saying, uh, Sorry, Dick, no can do. Would you settle for two donkeys? <laughs> <laughs> Any more from your side? 
No. I'd like to oh. send one to the Archduke Ferdinand saying, have good holes in Sarajevo. <laughs> <laughs> Recommend the drives. Abraham Lincoln saying the second half isn't as good as the first. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to send one to Neville Chamberlain before he was going to Munich, saying, all the best, tell him he's bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> send, send one to General Custer saying, best of luck at Little Bighorn, it'll be a feather in your cap. <laughs> <laughs> now then, we go on to the game that uh, everybody knows from their childhood days, Mornington Crescent. And this time, teams, we have to bring in uh, one of the special rules, and that is that anti-clockwise moves are penalised. <laughs> Well, which has brought Barry to a halt already. Will you start off, Barry? How severely, Humph? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can do a motorway to start this. The M4. Well, you can now. Yeah. Yes. Pudding Lane. Turn them green. Wish I could. Uh, <laughs> you just did. <laughs> Kensington High Street. Mornington Crescent. Yes. Oh. oh wait a minute. No, wait a minute. But hang about. Hang about. Hang about. Yes. Clockwise. Come well, on. Come line on, for the on. penalties. Started the, with the motorway. The, the five penalties yeah. which you incurred for one move anti-clockwise, which I won't bother to tell you about because you know it. You're the winners of that one. Quite right. And too. I don't think that's right. Actually, I'll to turn them. N four started. Yes. Yeah, but it's clock. All right. Oh. Mm. I expect they'll edit this out anyway. Deems, this is where we go on now, and I ask you to do your introductions oh, for the arrivals at the estate agent's ball, please. <laughs> Who's going to start? Oh, there's the lovely May sonnet. <laughs> the style residences. Their son, Georgian style residence. What? <laughs> I've just written down the hermaphrodite child, George Ann residence. <laughs> <laughs> And closely related, the Irable Residence family and their son, Des Irable Residence. <laughs> oh, here come the Dings family. The what? The Dings family with their uh, black sheep son who is uh, on parole. He's the condemned Bill Dings. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'll stay with Mr. and Mrs. Souse and their two kids who are with us. Terry Souse and Muriel, known to us all as Mew Souse. <laughs> Oh, of course, our I'm Terence staying. House, which I was very fond of. <laughs> I'll throw in Sammy Detached now. Well, <laughs> Sharing a Foster's with our visitor from Australia, Lou Outback. <laughs> and while in ethnic mood, we could have Chief Sitting Tenant. <laughs> also from abroad, the Onassis family and their bronzed daughter, sun-drenched Patty O. <laughs> Oh, very good. It's Andy for the shops. <laughs> <laughs> with at least half a million to spend in the Hampstead area, the Zonely Need Apply, with their son A. Rab Zonely Need Apply. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly off a crust touch here, Lord's View of the Gasworks, and their daughter Gloria's View of the Gasworks. <laughs> oh, there's Gus Humping. <laughs> So he is. <laughs> Might be a trick of the light, but I think it was him. <laughs> I'll tell you who he's doing it with. Superbly modernised. <laughs> Over there, Mr and Mrs Twing and their son, Wes Twing. Oh, and here comes Sir Alec Douglas Hume, who loses a little in the pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> Suspend, if you will, your contempt to welcome... <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Stewart and Fittings and their son Vic Stewart and Fittings. <laughs> Conveyancing? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and it's a draw. That's all for this week. We'll see you again next week. Bye. <laughs> Cryer, Graham Garden, Timbrook Taylor and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Geoffrey Perkins. <laughs>
at the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Thank you very much, and welcome back to the programme that, like psychedelic toilet paper, brings the colour back to people's cheeks. <laughs> and falling repeatedly <laughs> off the tightrope of good taste will be our own two teams, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. And Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton. We're going to play a round now of the familiar and popular game Mornington Crescent, but with a difference. You've all heard of Pro-Am Celebrity Golf, in which amateurs and professionals take part. Well, in this round of Mornington Crescent, we have some members of our audience who are coming up here to play the game with us. And one of them sitting next to me now. How do you do, uh, sir? Uh, your name is? Fred Heffer. Fred Heffer. Uh, Fred, uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm in the post office. In the post office? Oh, great. And uh, are you married with three children? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> right. Right. Now, I think we're just about ready to play the, play the game. You know the rules. And you will alternate with each member of our panel. And we're going to start with Graham Garden, because he's got a kind face. Right. Where does, uh, There's no special in? rules, incidentally, as we're playing with, uh, you know, people with who are maybe not quite as familiar with the Can game we play it slightly slowly to give Fred a chance to get into the game? Right, Didn't can we start, Tim? Uh, okay. Uh, has Fred put his tenor in? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, an easy one. Uh, Euston Square. Oh, it's more time. Uh, Brick Lane. Oh, Mornington yeah. Crescent. You see. Yeah, straight into it. Straight into it. <laughs> I'm afraid it is Mornington. Uh, yeah, I know, but you could. Uh, yeah, you could okay, sorry. You you could could first go. Uh, uh, it's it's his first Tim, go. I think that's a little bit hard. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Re sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, a little Regent boo there Street. wouldn't go amiss. Brooke Taylor there. Boo. Regent not, Street, not gentlemen. Regent Combat. Street, Tim said. It's where right. Oh, oh, oh. you've played it before. Uxbridge <laughs> Road. That was Uxbridge Road. Uh, Mornington Crescent. Oh, oh, oh yes! yes. 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 That is oh. very good. Fred Heffer, ladies and gentlemen, making mincemeat of our <laughs> team. <laughs> very good. Well, Fred, yes. if you give yes. way to our next yes. lesson, yes. we'll try again. Well, well done. Yes. Yes. You lose concentration in a game like I'm this. I'm sure the BBC it? will send you something through the post. <laughs> <laughs> but please and put we have it in another a bucket of water. Contestant <laughs> to take part in the game here. Your name is Jim Cleary. Jim Cleary. And what do you do for a living? I'm a headmaster. A headmaster? Yes. Oh, well. He gathered that when they all cheered when he came you, up. You'd like to take over this chair. He's got you? his mob here with him. <laughs> Jim, you alternate with the teams. We're good teams. We go around in the usual uh, order. All right. And I think uh, we'll start now with Willie Rushton. Uh, Mount Pleasant. Cromwell Road. No, no, you can't. Yes, you can. You could let one go, for heaven's sake. Oh, come on. It's on. not that strong. Oh, well, yeah, all right. Well, all right. Come on, it's a guess. What was it? Cromwell Road. Oh, that's got uh, you there. <laughs> Tottenham Court Road. Oh, the old one. All right, old Tottenham if Court Road. Doubt. Houston if in Road. doubt. Houston Road. Houston Road. Houston, Houston ah. Road. Like it, like Regent it. Regent Street. Mornington Crescent. No. No. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I'm sorry, Jim. No. I'm afraid that disqualifies you. Enough. Oh. 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 No. No. Very well played, I reckon. We've tried to do it. He knows what he did. He knows. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and the BBC will be expecting I need something to tell you from Jim, you. <laughs> yeah, he's, I think Graham is said there. He knows where he went wrong. I think Graham is Bad luck, Jim. So that's one each. Oh, you know, come on. We're going to play Very Call My true. Bluff, the game familiar to all of you who watch television. And uh, it's played here with a slight difference. The teams are going to give me four different definitions of a word, and I have to guess which one is correct. They'll then tell me whether it's true or a bluff. Very exciting. <laughs> now, the word, <laughs> teams, I want you to define is hollyhocks. Hollyhocks. Barry Cryer, will you give me your definition? Uh, hollyhocks uh, is, it has a very ancient derivation. It's to do with Christmas, um, to do with Christmas. Oh, People yeah. taken a bit short at Christmas, <laughs> <laughs> financially, oh. uh, were wont, were wont to, to hide themselves their local pawnbrokers, pausing only uh, in the snow-clad street to remark on the singular occurrence that his sign had fallen down. They would rush inside, <laughs> they would rush inside and pawn something to get the money together for Christmas. This was a regular procedure. This was known as a holly hock. Holly hock. 
<laughs> and hollyhocks were what you uh, indulged in at Christmas to get the reddies together. Right. Barry, that's your one now. Uh, Willie Rushton, <coughs> how about yours? Holy hoax, in fact, um, Hunk. <laughs> um, these originated in the changing rooms at Vatican City, relegated again this year. <laughs> um, <laughs> a holy hoax, as, as, the, as the name suggests, is, is a prank or trick perpetrated on a pope, like like pulling the throne out from under him as he sits down for best room, or, or shouting out, how's the missus then? <laughs> It's an anti-Pope joke, a holy hoax. Uh, okay, well now, Graham, how about yours? Uh, those of you who ride <clears throat> will be familiar with the phrase, I put black Ned over the hollyhocks. Hollyhocks, a hollyhock, or normally plural hollyhocks, are a, a sort of traditional fence used to train jumpers, horses that jump. And the top bar of the fence has sprigs of holly nailed to it which will prick the hocks of the horses as they leap over to make them pick their feet up and jump higher and stop them knocking the, the, the top bar of the fence off. These are hollyhocks in the riding fraternity. There was a case recently you may have read in the paper where a, a show jumper nailed hedgehogs <laughs> instead of holly to the top bar of the, um, the fence. Uh, it didn't make the horses jump any higher but they had the fastest ducking hedgehogs in the land. <laughs> Holly hogs. Holly That's, hogs, they yes, were. Yes, yes. Thank you, Graham. Gilded that leaves really. you, Tim, for your definition. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's Holly hogs. Scandi Scandinavian. Sc Holly hogs. <laughs> Not a bit like Leslie Ann Dan. <laughs> Not in this light. I joined it once. It was the Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> Alcoholics Anonymous. In Norway this summer, I met some people who had joined. I didn't join. This is just to bring them into it and all the people who are alcoholics, which is a serious complaint at home, and I do understand that, and I'm not making fun of it in any way. But in Norway, it is made fun of, and that's why I'm bringing it into the programme. And Alcoholics. 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 <laughs> right, thank yeah. you, Tim. Bad taste there, Tim. Bad taste. But from Barry, we have an object pawned at Christmas. From Willie Rushton, a sort of papal prank. From Graham Garden, some rather unpleasant uh, goings-on with horses. And from Tim, that rigmarole you've just heard about, uh, al alcoholics. alcoholics. An object pawned at Christmas. I thought that uh, Barry faltered a bit in the middle of his uh, definition there. People were, won't to do something. I mean, either they were or they won't. So... I, I object to that one. I'm, I'm turning that one down. Papal prank, I'd like to think about a bit more. Maybe after the programme. Uh, <laughs> and Graham's the horses. I've heard of the hedgehog stunt. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But ho with Holly... Hmm. And uh, Tim's definition. I'm going to reject that because if I accept his one, it means I've got to do an impression of Robert Robinson. <laughs> which is... Uh, you haven't the hair for it. <laughs> You've got the nose for it, so, but not the hair for no, it. I'm going to plump for Willie. Willie Rushton, the papal prank. Sure is, it a, is it a bluff or two? Show, 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 show us the card. Show us the card. Ah! Well, my goodness. Well, I lose that one, and you win that, naturally. Now, we go on to the point where I tell you that at the end of the game, I'm going to ask you to introduce the late arrivals to the advertiser's ball. Late arrivals to the oh, advertiser's you. ball. You will start thinking about that. Meanwhile, the rest of us will go on playing a game called Sound Charades. This is the one where one team makes noises and the other team has to guess what they mean. It will be like a book or a film or a play or a mixture of all three. The audience are let into the secret by means of this machine we have on the left here. Since this program hasn't yet lurched into the microchip era, <laughs> the answer will be flashed up with a bit of chalk on the blackboard. <laughs> and a mystery voice, who will remain a mystery, no doubt to his intense relief, will tell you at home what the uh, charade is. And the first charade is going to be enacted by Tim and Willie. And this is what it is. Death in Venice. Tim and Willie, uh, the audience have been told at home, will you tell Graham and Barry whether it's a film or a book or whatever? It's a book, a film, 
And actually recently an opera, I think. Yes. Uh, three words. I would concentrate perhaps on the film as you're ignorant people. Um, <laughs> Don't try and butter words. us up. <laughs> three words, Brillo, and we're <laughs> going to do them all at once. Okay? Arcarneto. <laughs> Splosh! It's, uh... Well, the audience got that at once, probably because they read it off opera. the blackboard, but more yeah. recently in opera. Mm. Yes. Three words. I'd like to also enter that for the advertiser's ball. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nothing to do with Michael Tippett, the, the icebreaker, but that was never a book and a film, so I mean... It Did he do the cornetto break? He didn't do... Oh. No, he didn't do the cornetto break. Or indeed the ice cornetto. But there'll be a crate of those for us in the morning. I hope so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> as sure as my name's Rolls-Royce. Now, uh, <laughs> it's, it's one of the words an article, definite Actually, or indefinite. Actually, that's very close. It isn't. <laughs> it's not there. The isn't there at all, now. There's a preposition in there. If you Preposi want to be preposition in the there. headmaster will enjoy that. Preposition. On, Jim. On, in, up. Uh, Sorry, you said in. Don't in. Look Did you say in? Yes. In. Yeah, that's um, right. In, um. Yeah, round um. of applause thing for um, getting in. Um, in, um. Something in canal. Would you like us to do it again? No, no. No, no, anyway. Well, I'd rather die first. Really? <laughs> um. <laughs> I got it. You got it. I got it. Death in Venice. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's right. Three marks for perseverance. Audience uh, listening at home, you might like to encourage the teams by applauding when you think they're getting uh, near to it. <laughs> Graham and Barry, you have a charade now. It's going up on our Let board in the studio, and here's the mystery voice <laughs> to tell you at home what it is. Staircase. Play in a film. Um, we and we won't we, tell you how many words. We refuse to tell you how many words it is. It would make it too easy. Too easy. It'd be a walkover, really. A walkover. Walkover, yes. <laughs> right. God. Three. Oh dear. Four. Oh, five. Oh, what a lot of steps. Look, there's a lot of steps here, isn't there? Oh dear. Oh, step My, city, this squire. Oh, oh must be hundreds. Oh. No, no, no. It's not hundreds. Time passes. Oh. Yeah. 27, uh, 28, oh, must be hundreds of steps here. 29, oh, uh, well, 50 at least. Oh, no, less than 50. Less than, just less than 40, I'd say. Oh, there's, one, uh, there's one on this landing. No, oh, I'll wait for oh, the next. Oh, dear. Oh, these steps. Oh, 37, Could you hit 30 that 30 38. Harder, I think. Oh, oh, we're there. Oh, we're there at last. Oh, we got to the top. Tim and Willie have fallen asleep. Oh. Give it a run. <laughs> <laughs> if it's taste. not 39 steps, which it's not, then it must be staircase. Oh, oh very good. Well, Sorry, I'll, it is. I'll have to dock you a mark or two for not getting 39 steps. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that makes level pegging. And now, Tim and Willie, you're going to do another one now. And this one goes up on the board. Here, through the mystery voice, is what it is for you listening at home. Greece. It's uh, one word. It's a musical and a filmed musical. Here we go. One word. All at once. ka -ching. Ka -ching. Pitching, The sound of pitching. Uh, one word. Bazooki. Sounds like Greece. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, that's another mark to Graham and Barry. Okay. And Graham and Barry, you're going to do another charade right now. Up it goes on the board. If you're listening at home, here it is. The lady vanishes. The mystery voice, by the way, listeners, is Norman Sinjin X. <laughs> 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 uh, this uh, was a book. Oh, what happened? Was it really? Uh, yes, it was a book. Oh, I didn't yes, know that. yes. 
became a film. And then a blackboard. What? And then a blackboard, yes. yes that's right. <laughs> Three little words. Three little words. Ah, oh, but they can mean so much. Can't right, they? we're starting now. <laughs> Going to do it all at okay. once, actually. Picture the scene. Picture the scene. <laughs> uh, excuse me, uh, Lady Pun. Uh, yes, Mr. Wordplay. Hate to, uh... Ask a person such as yourself to do this, but no, our, our daily, Mrs. Belter, um, <laughs> is in the laboratory washing out the retorts. Um, and I wondered, as we've got the good-natured banters um, coming round for dinner... Uh, you know, ah, yes, yes, with her, with her charming daughter, Witty Sally. Indeed, oh, indeed. Yes, yes. And her fiancé, the Dutch diamond dealer, sparkling Rip Ost. Um, <laughs> I wondered if you could uh, see your way clear to uh, polyurethane the dining table. Oh, point me at it. <laughs> There isn't a book or film called The Clever Dicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope they get sent a lot of polyurethane. <laughs> I honestly don't know that. Um, ah, the lady was that was planted. Is that anything to do, with lady? No. Yes. Only as far as it's relevant. Lady from the. The lady sea. varnishes. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I still haven't got it yet. Absolutely. <laughs> the lady's Absolutely vanishes. brilliant, uh, Willie, for winning that it. one. And you get all the marks that are available for that round and one or two left over from previous rounds. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to play right. a round now which is rather wittily entitled Playing Tunes on Instruments You, <laughs> you Can't Play. How do we do this one? There's huh? a clue there somewhere. In other words, one team will play a well-known tune on the swanee whistle and percussion and the others will have to try and identify it. And we're going to start now with Tim and Willie as they won that last round yeah. so brilliantly. Tim is going to play the Swanee Whistle and Willie Rushton is going to play... Isn't. Isn't. <laughs> oh, <it's> whatever's <laughs> left over, Willie's going to play now. Yeah, Will you begin, please, Tim and Willie? One more time. <laughs> no! On yeah. second thoughts, no. Green Mersey. Graham and Barry, I'm going to give you white. two seconds Ooh's. to identify that. Uh, uh, the Blue Danube. And it does our audience agree, that's the point. This is the, the ducks that, that, that gave away. Me that. that entitles you to have a go now. Uh, who's going to play what? Let me just I'm, have a look I'm and see. I'm percussing, actually. Uh, you're percussing my in my and hand. he's whistling. I am ready. Right, will you start your tune <clears> now? <throat> <clears throat> have you started <clears throat> tuning up? <clears throat> Just tuning up. Yeah. Okay. Percussive amongst yourselves. Thank you, Colin. Right, here we go. Pumpsell's hits. <laughs> well, and our well band leader, Edmund O'Rourke. Tim and Willie, uh, you have a time limit too. That, 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 that is orange, blossom, pink, and. What nowhere near. No, no, nowhere, nowhere near. near. No, I'm sorry. No, 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 think of Oh My Papa. Otherwise, you don't get any marks at all. Think of Oh My Papa. Yes, Mr. Cryer Sr. What's the name of the tune? It's fair to say that Willie Rushton was. Fairly close. Yeah. Orange, well, blossom, I'm pink, and something else, mambo. No, no, you're not. You're never no, going to get it. Mambo, the golden it. crumpet, it. You're, you're yeah, never going to get it. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> it's cherry blossom, pink. Thank you. Cherry oh, blossom. Thank you. One. I oh, recognised it at once. Oh, yeah. I hope you get a lot of shoe polish in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> now we go on to a musical round, <laughs> and in this one, uh, now for something entirely. This is different. the one we call blues. One team gives the other one a topic for a blues. And the other team then improvises a blues on the spur of the moment, accompanied by Colin Sell. Tim and Willie, you're going to do the first one, so I'm going to ask Graham and Garden to give you a subject. Graham and Garden. Graham and Garden. <laughs> 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 Morning, Chris. And that lot. Oh, to be confused with, with Home and Cryer. Um, Graham or <laughs> Barry, would you give them a... <laughs> well, we had a little mull earlier. I thought of ITV. I, and I thought of ITV too. 
So, so we thought of the ITV2 blues. He's just fallen off the keyboard. I woke up this morning. I turned on the new cultural ITV2. Oh, yeah? I heard the announcer announcing as I sat down on Saloo. <laughs> The next program's going to be Ingmar Bergman's Crossroads. <laughs> then there's Jean-Luc Goddard's Coronation Rue. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Well, judging from that applause, we'll give you, what, six marks? Right. Now, Graham and Barry, it's your turn to sing a blues. And uh, Tim and Willie, can you give them a subject, please? As I see it, the optician's blues. <laughs> Not as good as a wink. That's <laughs> done. Hope we get better soon, Colin. Woke up this morning in a state of extreme perturbation. Extreme perturbation. Thank you for that rhyme, Harry, <laughs> baby. I heard my mother-in-law was coming to stay and she's easily my least favorite relation. Yes, you. Of them all, give them the choice. Yeah. She's got one glass eye, you can tell which one it is. It's the one with a spark of humanity in it. <laughs> I didn't know she had a glass eye. Till one day it came out in the course of the conversation. <laughs> Thank you, Graham Terry and Barry McGee. That was uh, well done. And you got, uh, according to the audience, you only got four. So blame them, not me. How can they see? Right now, teams, that uh, leads us on with the score finally poised. Oh, great. To the point where I ask the uh, teams to give their late arrivals for the advertiser's ball. Anybody can start. Oh, there's an early arrival here. The Phillips family. The Phillips, simply years ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I hope there'll be a crate for me in the morning. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Will you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Bianco and their little mother, Martini Bianco. <laughs> oh, a friend of Dennis King's here, Miss Dean, who has just done the whole of Hamlet in three and a half minutes. Nothing acts faster than Anna Dean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, memories. All the way from Sweden, Mr. and Mrs. The opportunity to cash in on this wonderful offer. <laughs> And their son, Lars, the opportunity <laughs> to cash on. <laughs> oh, there's a great group to entertain you. Sir Robert Mark and the Retreads. <laughs> <laughs> and there are Mr and Mrs Tucky Fried Chicken and their son, Ken. <laughs> and two of his mates, Camp Harry and Murray Mince. <laughs> here come, here come the With the Woolwiches, with their son, Noah M. With the Woolwiches. <laughs> Oh dear, Bill Stickers is being taken out for stealing the silver. Yes, I'm afraid Bill Stickers will be prosecuted. <laughs> There's Mr. and Mrs. Changing Mart. My son, Xavier, known to us all as X Changing Mart. Not to mention, and I shouldn't, Mr. and Mrs. Lautomatic and their son, Percy Lautomatic. <laughs> Over there, a touch of class, the Destains family. And their daughter, Anne. Of course, that's the Anne de Staines we don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there's Ma Goodness and Ma Guinness, the stout couple. <laughs> <laughs> Naval friend, the well-known Sailor Goods Act. <laughs> if it helps you at all, teams, uh, Barry and Graham are almost out of sight as far as the score's concerned. Ahead, or no, just to one almost side? Just out of I have sight. no idea, but you're almost out of sight. <laughs> Oh, it's Mr. and Mrs. of your Woolworth store today, and their daughter Wanda. That's the wonder of your Woolworth store. <laughs> yeah, small edge. <laughs> Can you say that again? Yeah, small edge. Uh, yeah, small edge, don't you? Small edge. Small edge in oh, yes. of newspapers yeah. among the classy fades. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. and the housewives every day, and their daughter Amelia and the housewives <laughs> every day. 
pick up a can of beans and say beans means pints. Tear off their knickers and shout hooray. <laughs> this is where I leap in to say that we've pretty well come to the end of the program. We'll Post. be with you again next week. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Geoffrey Perkins. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Thank you, and welcome to the Intellectuals game, which owes much to a great literary figure, Trollope. <laughs> So, while the teams are working that one out, let me tell you who they are. Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> and Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton. <laughs> We're going to start this time with Mornington Crescent. Uh, game, you all know the rules of this one. The special rules come into play this week, uh, teams. And that is that it's anti-clockwise for the first 15 clockwise for the second 15 oh. and diagonal from that time onwards <laughs> what if we don't reach the uh, end of the first 15 well it doesn't matter particularly <laughs> if you're not going to take it seriously for okay can i start this? okay you oh. can start tim oh. taylor oh. Oh. anti-clockwise to start with anti-clockwise for the first 15 right. clockwise oh do listen the following for the <laughs> regent street you have an option then on uh, 45 before diagonal comes into play. Uh, God, no, he said Regent no, Street. No, can I he change it? I want now. to change it now. That's... He said Regent Street. He has to stick with it now. Is that hump? Can no, you, you can order ruling it. On oh, come on. He well, said Regent Street, didn't he, audience? He said... But the rules were changed after that, and hump... I think hump is allowing me to change it, aren't you? I'm allowing you to change it. And Barry, would you please... Cool it a little bit. It's the male menopause, I'm sorry. <laughs> OK, now, let's be serious. Come on, Tim. OK, now I know the rules. Manchester Street. Cleveland Street. Pudding Lane. That'll set the cat among the pigeons. It's three, isn't it? Um, Bond Street. Oxford Street. On it in Crescent. Yes. You know? Uh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, Jubilee oh, line. Jubilee oh, line. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, hold it, Barry. Hold it, Barry. Jubilee line. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, it wasn't 15. Sorry. It wasn't 15. You can carry on, Tim. It <laughs> <laughs> um, wasn't. It wasn't. Great Portland Street. 30. Great Portland Street. Well, quite a good Portland Street. <laughs> <laughs> Houston Road. I'm going to try Bartholomew's old trick. Well, never did him any good. Old Brompton Road. <laughs> Cotton Garden. Cotton Garden again. <laughs> and Grace is stuck in the door. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, Hans Place. It's okay. More. Oh! Uh, no, don't be silly. <laughs> Didn't say. If you let him renege on Regent Street, I can withdraw that. Camden Town. Uh, attack being the best form of defence. Putney High Street. Morning from Crescent. Oh, oh yay! Yeah, well done, Graham. Yes. We all together understand that. Right. Straight in. Straight in. We must count. Oh, that wasn't 15. Two that wasn't counted. Two minutes counted. That was I it. did. I'm sorry. We okay, so one. Graham and Barry win that uh, first opening round, Mornington Crescent. And we go on to the point where I tell yeah, you that... A round of the gallant losers. Yes, I think. Uh, yes, <laughs> Here's where I tell you that at the end of the programme, I'm going to ask you to announce the late arrivals at the Gardener's Ball. The Gardener's Ball. Okay. 
We're going to play the game called tag wrestling now. In this round, I'm going to give each team the payoff of a story, and I shall then start one of you off telling the story to fit your punchline. Then when I feel like it, I shall press my buzzer. It sounds like this. And a member from the opposing team will have to take up the story and work towards his punchline. And I can tell you that this gets very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Tim and Willie, here's your punchline. You have to take it down carefully. <laughs> smooth, smooth talker. <laughs> I hope you can all see it, Howard. And what's our punchline, Hump? <laughs> okay. You lie in your teeth, roared the transvestite, <laughs> peering into a tumbler. I don't think one should make jokes about that section of society. What, what tumblers? Acrobats. Tumblers. Yes. <laughs> okay. Graham and Barry, here's your tagline. Okay. I've cracked it, <laughs> said the acupuncturist. Getting the dead needle. <laughs> and you could have heard a pin drop. Oh, I quite agree. Who hissed? <laughs> Who's what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. To flush, that's all. Now, Tim and Willie, you've had the longest to think about it, so we'll start with the others. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, we've enjoyed thinking about it. Right. Graham and Barry, will you start the story? Certainly will. Please work towards your punchline. You have a choice of two. Well, Graham, then. Oh, huh. <laughs> <laughs> Serves you right for being clever. Um, at the Ballspon Road Acupuncture Centre and School of Acupuncture. They were holding a seminar, <laughs> and when they'd finished holding it, they gave a class. <laughs> and the chief acupuncturist was teaching his acolytes and the learners that the the true dedicate dedicate of the art, dedicate of the art, the acolytes, the acolytes. But a real acupuncturist should be able to stick a pin into an egg without cracking it. Have a go, he said. <laughs> oh, so the first close. thing he had said properly that day, he obviously, he obviously needed a good dentist. So he went round to his dentist immediately. Now it so happens this dentist waltzed in in a dress, as dentists normally do. And he got her, you know, one well, of those tumblers of water which they make you spit into, out of. And, uh, how do you spit out what? of a tumbler? <laughs> What's the matter with your tooth, said the transvestite dentist. <laughs> I've cracked it, said the acupuncturist, what? and you could have heard a pin drop. Mornington <laughs> <laughs> Crescent. Very nearly, but Regent Street. <laughs> now, actually, to be quite fair, I think that was absolutely brilliant, Barry, and I think... Thank you uh, very much, Hump. I agree. I think we'll have to give him that one, don't you? Yes. Because I've got a train to catch. Now... <laughs> <laughs> This next one is called Connection Quiz, and this is a, a bit like Mastermind, except that it's played with a more uncomfortable chair. I'm going to give each... <laughs> We've had parts I'm of going to give each contestant a set of... <laughs> From Chalpon. I'm going to give each no. contestant a set of objects or people, and he has to tell me what the connection is between them. Incidentally, these are all taken from a new book called The Book of Lists, and so they're all completely genuine, and there is a genuine connection between them, which the teams will have to guess. And Tim, we're going to start this one with you. And here you have to find the connection between Tim, Barry, Eva Perron, Trigger, and Lenin. <laughs> Eva per There's nothing in common between me and Barry. That's for certain. There's nothing in common. It's all good stuff. Um, Tim and Barry, Eva Perron, Lenin, and Trigger. Who? Um, their swimming pools have been made in their shapes. <laughs> Well-known swimming pools. Eva Peron, Trigger and Lenin, they've all been stuffed. So, I don't know about Barry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh! In that case, there must be some other famous things that have been stuffed called Barry and Tim, are there? All been ridden by Roy Not Rogers. all that famous. <laughs> not, all that, not all that famous. I'm not getting involved in this. The audience applauded, and I mean, they, they can... They are the arbiters. Mm. There was a famous dog called T. 
Tim, whose friends were very kind to him. That's <laughs> 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 so wrong. But I think that was stuff, Apart wasn't it? He was a tiger, as I was showing you now, in the knowledge of botany. Rin Tim Tim, there was. The audience knows the answer. The they applauded, and therefore they, all, they, they win the point. Stuff. Bits from... <laughs> right. They win the point. All of them are stuffed, as the audience were well... <laughs> what, the audience? <laughs> they look very real to me, Hum. I think you must give an authoritative judgment on this, or the round is... I just have. Is You've it? lost a mark. Graham. <laughs> I, would have really? I would have preferred the word embalmed. <laughs> you can oh, get, get you embalmed. You can get embalmed, <laughs> yes. <laughs> get in. Uh, Graham Garden, here are your three oh, names. Yeah. Bach... Napoleon and Kant. They're all in the book of lists. <laughs> They're all entertainers, except for Brian Kant. No, no. no. <laughs> Brian Kant. They're, um, they're well-known busts. They're well-known busts. Uh, I have two on top no, of my piano. It's not a bust of Kant. They're all play school presenters. <laughs> Brian Kant. Funnily enough, Brian uh, Kant, Barbara Bach, and Spike Napoleon. <laughs> well, whoever set the question slipped up on that because uh, you're absolutely right, and they didn't take it into account. What the what the, the answer? The answer that I've got here is that they were all uh, confirmed coffee drinkers. That's well, true of nearly everybody. <laughs> no, but not like them. I mean, oh, they, they got their firm. knocked it back. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Napoleon had a percolator in there, actually. <laughs> Working. <laughs> for, those... for those of you at home, we'll just tell you where Barry put his hand. <laughs> oh, you dropped right, it. <laughs> right, Willie Rushton. Uh, there was a slight pause there because I was trying to read the producer's writing. It's very close to the paper. <laughs> Willie Rushton, here are your objects. Ben Johnson's heel bone, Charles I's fourth cervical vertebrae, he is connected to and Sir problem. Thomas More's... And Sir Th I think we'll leave it there, don't you? I think we'll leave it there. Sir Thomas More's head. Sir Thomas More's head. These, these are all ingredients for a Central African Republic of stew. <laughs> Ragu a la Emperor Bocassa. <laughs> um, one restaurant actually throws in choice tuts of Napoleon. Um, Anti Bocassa. I think that's right. You think it's right? I think that's right. Well, uh, they're, all, they're all preserved in some strange way somewhere in buckets of salt and um, bits. You can actually buy absolutely them. Absolutely right. They're, they're all um, preserved. Have Sir Thomas More's head on your mantelpiece if you want. You're absolutely right. They're all preserved. In aspic, presumably. They just auctioned a bit of Napoleon. <laughs> yes, they have, yes. You know. yes. Quite well, his yes. elbow. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Barry Cryer. That was the bone Barry... part. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Barry Cryer, yours. <laughs> There's no harm in it. Isaac Newton, Joan of Arc, Florence Nightingale, and Toulouse Lautrec. <laughs> They were all on page three of the sun. <laughs> Except for Toulouse Lautrec. Except for Toulouse Lautrec. Who's on page two and a half. Whose total measurements were less than those of the others. Um, <laughs> they're all. No, they weren't on page three of the sun. What a silly thing to say. Good lord. They're all printing errors. <laughs> it's Florence Nighting Lag. <laughs> Toulouse Cretlow. <laughs> and the others were misprinted as well. Uh, who were the? Who were? Could I have the list again? Yeah, yeah Isaac I'd Newton. Like Isaac Newton, Joan of Arc, Florence Nightingale, and Toulouse Lautrec. Sorry, I asked really. Joan of Arc fell on all their heads. That's <laughs> <laughs> finding gravity. And they all discovered the law of gravity, particularly Toulouse Lautrec. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have so far to look. He didn't have so far. To look. <laughs> they were all close to the ground. All yes, all very close to the ground. Or well, I don't know whether to give that to you dead. or not, no. Did you try that? All dead? I never thought of that. Was it? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brad. They're all defunct. Well, no, it's very boring. They never married. Each other. <laughs> they never married at all, let alone each other. Oh, bless them. So that's, uh, that puts you and uh, Barry in the lead. 
<laughs> We're very happy together. <laughs> We're going to sing a song now, and Colin Sell's going to accompany you at the piano, and it's a wider choice than usual. You know, up to now, we always had a blues or a calypso and so on. But in this uh, instance, uh, you can choose a, a limerick or a rugby song or any kind, any song form you like. And uh, one of you teams has got to give the other a subject. So, uh, Tim and Willie, will you give Graham and Barry a subject for, for whatever they're going to sing? Uh, how about, I don't know how you're going to do it, but something re Bianca Jagger. She's in the news in no uncertain what, which, what are you going to? What form are you going to do? So that uh, Colin We fancied one. doing, um, until yeah, now. Do a limerick, please. Um, new. A limerick, actually. Yes. Okay, yes. try one. Break with Mate Bianca at the end of the first line. That's Introduction from Colin <laughs> Sell. You're all hot, Tim. There was a young girl called Bianca. <laughs> the end. No. Who said as she sipped Ferdy Branca? Delicious stuff. I'm thoroughly sick. So I'm leaving you, Mick. And he didn't know quite how to thank her. <laughs> Ten out of ten. Ten Excellent. out of ten, definitely. Uh, now, Tim and Willie, you're going to do the singing. Will you give them a subject, Barry and Graham? Rod Stewart. Yes, the Rod Stewart. Whatever. What's it going to be? Oh, we all hazard a limerick. I like the tune. Uh, I can remember yes, it when it's played. I remember when it starts, but it's nice once you get that. That's my tune. There, there is a, there is a young lad called Rod Stewart. As a start, just give him a song, and he'll screw it. <laughs> <laughs> he sings through his sporran <laughs> while true. pulling anything foreign. <laughs> it's a damn good trick if you can do it. <laughs> Uh, ten out of ten. Definitely ten out of ten. We go on now to Kim's game, oh, okay. which we all know. This is uh, the one which is based on the well-known parlour game. A number of items will be passed on a conveyor belt in front of one member of each team, and he has to remember as many of them as possible with the help of his partner. The conveyor belt goes for ten seconds, and there are thirty seconds for recollection. And uh, you can take home everything that you remember from the conveyor belt. <laughs> We're going to start on this occasion with Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton. And are you all ready? So we'll start the conveyor belt now. <laughs> it's an electrical one, I know that. Okay. Good heavens, I never Now, the objects have passed before you, and you can have a few more seconds if you like to write. No, no, no writing. Uh, oh, you're not allowed to write. Oh, no. I'm just crossing out. <laughs> uh, there was a cuddly boy. <laughs> uh, ben Johnson's heel. <laughs> Charles the First, Fourth Cervical Vertebrae, Sir Thomas More's Head, uh, the Emperor Bacusa, uh, Dennis Lotus, in position, <laughs> Elephant's Foot Umbrella Stand, the Elephant, the Elephant, on three legs, They're getting near the end of their time, audience, so you can um, help them if you like. What are the, oh, it was that with the electrical things you're not allowed to mention. A gas cooker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the one. Uh, a gallon of petrol. Don't all rush, don't all rush. Uh, uh, what? A crack tank. A, crack tank. a, a tank. Conveyor, conveyor belt. A conveyor belt. <laughs> oh, oh. A hooter. Yes. Oh. Tim and Willie. Thank you for Didn't they do well? <laughs> Barry and Graham, yes. uh, are you ready now? Yes. Right, right, eyes to the front, watch the conveyor belt, which is going to start now. <laughs> Sounds like you 
invasion of Poland, doesn't it? I swear to lose the track you got to. Right. You have 30 seconds to think of all the objects that passed in front of you just now. Uh, there were all the things they said, plus... <laughs> there was a reversible Reg Prentice. Um, <laughs> a Menachim begging and a cuddly goy. Um, <laughs> but I'm not one to talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Gossiping ghoul? There was one of those... Um, Sit down good things. round this. With the zip? Yeah, and one without. Yes. <laughs> um, and one that was not working. Well, I noticed but that. It could have been made that. to work. Well, it could have been made to work, but you need a pump. It was one of Hunt, Hunt's recent pump. LPs, wasn't there? Which yes, is jolly yes. good value. Yeah, that's right. No, the yeah. trouble was, it was unbreakable. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder Most how many points they're are. going to get. <laughs> uh, there was uh, one of Tim's uh, last records. Yes, indeed. Yes. I hear it was. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They look so pleased. <laughs> Funky Gibbons decline and fall. Complete set. There's a You've deep five second block, so you better hurry. What was that? <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> yes, that's all very bad. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> rotten. Sorry. And you win that round. <laughs> And we go on to the, the round that's called Pick Up Song, and this is one that's dead easy. In this round, a member of one team starts singing a song and then stops on a word in the lyric. A member of the opposing team must then sing a different song, but starting with that word. Oh, lead me Start to with it. Graham Gardner. Point me at it. <laughs> right. Graham Gardner's going to Never start. heard of it. Fly me to the moon. River. Does it go on? Wider than a mile. Wider than a mile. Mile, mile, <coughs> mile, mile man, <coughs> mile man, <coughs> mile man, <coughs> mile man. <coughs> my old man, my old man's a dustman. Oh, I'm a purist, you know. <laughs> well, stop doing that, then. Barry. If you, <laughs> <laughs> my old man said, follow the van and don't dilly. Oh, dilly. This time we almost made it to the moon. Lavender Dill we girl. <laughs> <laughs> If you'd uh, like to try another one. Yes, dearly. Oh, dearly. That's awful. You did. You did. Dearly, dearly beloved. beloved. What did he say? I don't know. Dearly oh. beloved. Dearly beloved. I don't know what comes next. Ved. Ved. <laughs> beloved. Ved sails in the sunset. <laughs> sunset. We just come up from sunset. <laughs> where the cider apples grow. 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 <laughs> Is this a little too fast for you, audience? <laughs> <laughs> Keep up at the back. Grow, grow, grow. Right up the... Griver. G Griver. <laughs> I've got this impediment. I get these attacks of G's. Grow. Right I think you've lost that round, Barry. Oh, I think you've no. run out of time. God, it's cruel. Will you start them off on another one? Quickly. It's a long way to Tipperary. <laughs> I'll make it easy for you. It's a long way to go. <laughs> oh, I've got Tipperary suspect. Oh, right. It's a long way to Tipperary. A what? rarey little spider used to walk down the street. <laughs> Call now this one. Yes, there's an oh. objection. <laughs> objection from Tim Taylor. I've challenged that oh, song. It's a very good one, that. Oh. Challenge, yeah. Oh, I, think, I think that you lose that one, uh, Graham, too. Oh. It's, uh, you think... get a bonus mark for it's carrying on for so long. We present, I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. And welcome to the programme where we play some of those family games which have done so much to help push up the television viewing figures. <laughs> Before you do go over to television, here's a brief chance for you to meet our teams, who are Graham Garden and Barry Cryer. <laughs> and Timbrook Taylor, and making a return visit, Denise Coffey. 
And we start with a game which is called Double Feature. It's a round that uh, st starts off from the premise that the international film industry is on its uppers, and for economic reasons, new films will have to be remakes of pairs of old films. I want you to hear the resulting titles, and I shall award points for anything approaching humour. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you start, Graham. Get I on. had heard they were going to remake Hamlet, incorporating the sandpiper and every which way but loose, and they'd get a ham sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> the audience are hungry. Denise. The humor. I heard that they were going to uh, make a new movie out of the film, the following films. Are You Now or Have You Ever Been? Call of the Wild, Sunday Bloody Sunday, and Billy Liar. And the resulting film is going to be called Are You Calling Me a Bloody Liar? <laughs> I heard about one the other day. Oh, yes, you did. <laughs> Tell us. Combining the mousetrap, uh, Tropic of Rice Slip uh, and Evita, and it's called a bit of cheese and Rivita. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that too. <laughs> Tim? Oh, sorry, you want me to do another one? Uh, the, uh, the producers of Flower Drum Song, Raisin in the Sun, and Day in the Life of Joe Egg have combined to make a cake. <laughs> They've got the dough for it. Excellent. <coughs> Anybody got any more? Get uh, Carter, you lucky people, and the deer hunter, and it's called Get You Deer. <laughs> <laughs> Midnight Express producers have combined with the Knights of the Round Table producers to produce... <laughs> what time of the night do you call this, then? <laughs> pop news from the world of pop. Two pop groups are going to combine. That's the Electric Light Orchestra, the ELO, and Blondie, and they're going to call themselves ELO Blondie. <laughs> That's fine. And here's where I tell the <laughs> here's where I tell the teams that at the end of the program I'm going to ask them to introduce the late arrivals at the transport ball. Late arrivals at the transport ball. We go on to ad lib poem, and Colin Sell has provided the uh, first line of this one here, so I absolve myself from any responsibility for the uh, tangle that the teams are going to get in from the outset, because the opening line, which I'm going to ask you to pick up, Barry Cryer is at 10 o'clock each Friday night, her house he used to knock up. <laughs> at 10 o'clock each Friday night, her house he used to knock up. There wasn't anybody there, and so he had to lock up. The front door and the back door and the side door and the garden <laughs> gate. Oh. <laughs> garden was the end of this the garden. scansion wire, when suddenly he saw the dreaded figure of a yellow-hatted traffic warden <laughs> looming down the street towards him with his arms akimbo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Graham. He fell down in a sudden swoon and drifted into limbo. <laughs> where can I be, he cried. Oh, where? Oh, tell me, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, tell he him. floated round and up and down and ended in the sky. He floated o'er the vales and hills <laughs> oh, and down to Somerset. Down to where? S S am I going to have to go on or not? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear the last other side. When down I to Surrey. <laughs> <laughs> where he would feed himself on rice. <laughs> made with specially strong curry. Now this dish were made for him down in this county so fair. <laughs> <laughs> nay, nay, thought this will not do. I shouldn't be here, nor there. I must go right back home at once and see that traffic pardon, <laughs> and ask her a question to which she replied, Pardon? <laughs> Why have you yellow bands upon your hat? He tremulously said. She said it's to stop the people parking on me head. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, we'll give Barry that one. That Terrible was scandal. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. And we go on. I think we'll give you another line oh, to start sorry. up with. And Denise, you can actually start this one. 
And uh, your opening line is, Jack and Jill went up the hill with naughty Georgie Porgy. <laughs> Jack and Jill went up the hill with naughty Georgie Porgy. When they got there, they thought they'd try to have a kind of orgy. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Community poem telling. Yes. <laughs> Unhappily, the rain came on and drowned their little effort. <laughs> <laughs> effort? Effort. You've been to university, it shouldn't be beyond it. <laughs> you didn't study effort, <laughs> And they tried to sort out their tangled limbs, saying, that's my right foot, that's my left foot. <laughs> Their damp and tangled limbs had been completely sorted out. So down the hill again they ran, and they began to shout. They shouted, hip hooray, and hooray hip, and things like that. <laughs> and they would throw their things in there. They'd first they'd throw a hat, and then they'd throw their shoes and shirts. But lastly came the tie. <laughs> and so they threw the tie right up right up onto the sky <laughs> and ran about the fields and dales as naked as they were born. I don't know about you, but I think this poem is a lot of corn. I'd rather have a poem about the flowers and trees. Well, we'll have a poem about orgies and you do as you please. <laughs> Very good. Well, that puts your team ahead. And we go on to sound, <laughs> sound charades. This is where one team has to make noises and the other team has guessed what they mean. The audience are let into the secret and can help by applauding. And by this I mean the audience listening at home. You can applaud when they're getting warmer and you can uh, boo when they're not. And it's great fun, I can tell you. We have our computer in the studio here, which is going to flash the answer up <laughs> on the board. And we also have a mystery voice, as you know. And uh, he's going to tell you the answer at home. Graham and Barry, you're going to do the charade. Here's what it is going up on the board here, and for you at home, the mystery voice. Ain't misbehaving. <laughs> right, the answer's gone up on the board now, and the audience at home know what it is. So, Graham and Barry, is it a book or a film or a play or what? It's, no, it's a musical. It's only a musical. It's, a, it's only just a musical, and it's two <laughs> words. <laughs> and it's two words, and we're going to do them all at once in a little sort of vignette. Looking forward to it immensely. <laughs> <laughs> you wait. Uh, excuse me, young lady. Yes? Um, I believe we've met before, haven't we? Your, your name's Haven, am I right? No, no. I've no. sworn you're Beatrice Haven. No, Beatrice. no, no. Aren't you your name Beatrice? No, no. Got the wrong one there, Commodore. I could have sworn you're <laughs> Beatrice Haven. No, not you in mean, any way whatsoever. In other no. words, you... That, well, uh, that sums the situation up, yes. You, uh, I see. Oh, sorry to have oh. troubled you. No, well, you go in. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> That's probably awfully good if you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Quite good if you don't. There's not a musical called Strange Behaviour, is there? Ain't misbehaving. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Uh, and a brilliant team uh, effort there. Uh, yeah. Jim and Denise, you're going to do another one now. It's going up on the board, and here for you at home is what it is. The Nun's Story. <laughs> OK, Tim and Denise, would you tell Graham and Barry uh, whether it's a book or a film or what? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 tell them, tell um, them. Well, it's certainly a film, and um, there must have been a book. Was it a book? Okay, yeah. There yeah, was, the there was. The audience says, and they know better than... What us. was it called? <laughs> <laughs> Right, will you do your charade? We would like to do three words, and we would like to do it all at once. If you could imagine an echo on this, please. This is just instructions for listening. Put an yes. echo on, chaps. Yeah. Sister Agatha. Yeah? <laughs> have you heard the one about the cardinal and the... Yeah. Oh, you have? Well, the tractor. No, not the tractor. No. Oh, the goat. It's a new one. A oh, new yes. one? Oh, no, well, tell me. Well, it seems that... Now what? Hey, Oh, listen, we shouldn't be talking like this. We have taken a vow of silence. Well, let's talk like this, then. All right, then. <laughs> 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 
Right, now there's, there are some knowing looks in the audience. I think they've got it already. But... <laughs> And some particularly obtuse looks on my yeah. left from Barry uh, first I and thought Graham, it was, uh, but I think they've got it too. Get the Tobacco Abbey Road, the story of three nuns, but it isn't. <laughs> um, it's the Abbey Habit. I think <laughs> it's the nun's story. So do I. Yeah. We're going to play a silly party game, which actually comes out of a book, a paperback book called The Best Party Games. And I'm able to read you the, the actual rules from the book. It's called Witch Hunt, a form of hide-and-seek specially suitable for children of 11 years of age and upwards. <laughs> children who are known to be nervous should be coerced to join in. <laughs> Sorry, should not, should not be coerced. One person chosen to be the witch goes out into the garden, or if the, we <laughs> if the weather is not suitable, hides somewhere in the house with all the lights turned out. After a suitable lapse of time, the witch hunters go looking for the witch. And they call out, where are you, witch? The witch answers by giving an eerie or ghostly cackle and then slips quietly away to some other spot in the dark. Whoever succeeds in catching or cornering the witch becomes the witch for the next round. <laughs> I shall decide who's to be the first witch. And, oh, what an embarrassing position I've been put into because the producers uh, actually made the decision. <laughs> Denise. Right, well, we wait now while all the lights are turned out. Humphrey, I'm of a nervous disposition. <laughs> I'm I 11 not years coerced. old. Coerce me not, Hump. Okay. Where are you, witch? Oh, I'm in the cupboard! <laughs> I, think she's, I think she's got a bun in the coven. <laughs> Oh, she's been orchestrated. <laughs> Where are you, witch? <laughs> oh, Hump, Hump, I found her. She's over here. Oh, she oh, is. Excellent. Excellent. Right. Timber Taylor found an ease there, and uh, it's his turn to be the witch, so let's have another round of that. Just put the lights oh, out again. No. No. Can we have the jelly and ice cream now instead? <laughs> Where, Where are, are you, you witch? witch? I'm over here! <laughs> oh, a butch witch. Where are you, witch? Fully grown man. Where are you? His own. <laughs> <laughs> Two rounds of this. What? what? <laughs> witch consumer guy. Where are you, witch? <laughs> I'm over here! Tim, what are you doing? <laughs> Pardon? Embarrassing the pants off myself. <laughs> Oh, 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 put my pants back on again. <laughs> and they don't fit her. Another... <laughs> another Gone triumph. weak at Denise. I think another round of that. <laughs> another winner. Okay. Denise and Tim won that one, so... Uh... That's very good. And we go on to the next round, be a big one, that which hump. is called Unlikely Quotations. We all know the famous historical quotations. I'm going to ask the teams to give me some unlikely quotations. We'll start with you, Graham Garden. How about Harold Wilson saying, the buck stops here? <laughs> <laughs> comment. 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 On both sides of the paper, there. yes. Or okay. even, how about Tim Brooke Taylor saying... Let's play Where Are You, Witch, again. <laughs> <laughs> this one could be David Frost or Bianca Jagger. And that's, please, no cameras, I want to be alone. <laughs> uh, this is one, a little-known one from history. What I like is a really good laugh, Queen Victoria. <laughs> Richard Nixon, you want to come round and hear the tapes? <laughs> Oh, let's grab a couple of pints and go out and pull a few birds. John Inman. <laughs> Brian Clough. Of course, David, I might be wrong. <laughs> Unlikely quote from Joan Collins. No. <laughs> Unlikely quote from Edward Heath. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Two Joan Collins. 
Okay. Well, let's go on then to the game which we call Paranoia. And this is where Team A decides that there is something wrong with Team B, and Team B have to guess what it is <laughs> by asking questions, and the first team, Team A, reply in a manner appropriate to Team B's affliction. And uh, we're going to start now with uh, the affliction of Tim Brooke Taylor and Denise Coffey. It's going up on the board now, and those of you listening at home can hear once again the overworked mystery voice telling you the answer. Tim and Denise know that we know what they've done with Willie. <laughs> OK, we're going to start with you then, uh, Tim and Denise. You have an affliction. Oh, you mean in the game? Sorry. We have to glean what afflicts us. You have to question Graham and Barry to find out what it is. Does it make any difference that... Uh, no, Willie's not here. There's a man and a woman. Yes, we know Willie's not here. We know Willie's not here. You don't have to tell us. <laughs> he should be sweating, I tell you that. <laughs> Willie's about to come, come back. To roost. <laughs> we haven't told Willie that he's not here. <laughs> How you can sit there talking about exactly. him? Exactly. How departed. insensitive can you be? Yeah. Why do we behave like this? You tell us. Well, may you ask? I just did. Why Jobs for the girls. <laughs> Jobs for the girls, I mean, you know. I've got to tell you at the beginning that you have 30 seconds in which to guess oh. the answer. Um, oh, well, it won't be long we, now, then. We're... Uh, <laughs> Hand-shocked, hand shot, quite frankly. The fact that somebody else different is here, is that relevant? You know it is. Mm. You've got something out of them at last. Thank you for the... It's the way uh, that her presence was engineered. Exactly. Mm. Ah. Yeah, so the audience is... Slept with the producer, both of us. <laughs> Sorry, that was... Yes, you remember. <laughs> Concentrate uh, on the game. Nepotism. Anyone for nepotism? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got me bat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are ignorant. You don't play it with a bat. I don't think you're going to get a no, comedy. No, we don't know anything. No, no. Would, would you like to tell them in a unison? Yes. Now, <laughs> uh, listeners at home, turn down the volume on your sets because the gales of laughter might well <laughs> annoy your neighbours or do strange things to your transistors. <laughs> the fact is that they know that we know what they did with Willie Rushton. That's Another nice. good way to annoy your neighbours is throw rubbish over the fence. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> we've gone now to the affliction of Graham and Barry, which they've got to find out from Tim and Denise. It's going up on the board in the studio, and you, you, here it is for you at home. <laughs> Barry and Graham are both children. Right, it's gone up on the board. You know the answer at home, so start questioning Graham and Barry. Why doesn't the audience find it amusing? Anyway, Denise... Um, sorry, can you hang on for a moment? No, I quite agree. Yes, yeah, so absolutely, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, sorry, uh, Graham, yes, yes. Yeah, what was the question? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Incredible as it may seem, is it anything to do with us being boring? No, no, no. <laughs> You mustn't think that. No, don't you worry your tiny little head about it. <laughs> you just sit quietly. Are we kiddiewinks? Mm. It must be, just to you use the word like the answer. <laughs> Infantile. Or have we both got tiny little heads? <laughs> You've got tiny little everything. Yes, I'll give it. <laughs> <laughs> well, really? I'll give you that anyway. The answer is you're both children. OK, and with you oh, in the lead, with we go risk. on now to the blues. Each, one, each team gives the other team a subject for a blues, and the introduction will be played by Colin Sell at the piano. And who'd like to start this one? I think uh, Tim and Denise, you can start the singing, so... Uh, Graham and Barry, will you give them a subject? The <clears throat> blues, blues. The blues, blues? The blues, 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 blues. <laughs> morning. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I did. I was feeling out of luck. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry, Denise. Well, now, then, what can I tell you? My dog had bitten the postman, and I want you to know that his name was Chuck. Excuse me for mentioning this, Yes, Denise. sir, what's your question? Uh, your dog's got no teeth. No, but he can give you a very nasty suck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. Right on. I don't wish you Okay, now, Graham and Barry, uh, you're going to do the singing, so uh, Tim and Denise, give them a subject, please. This is topical all the time, overseas repeats or not. The price of petrol oh. blues. Texas oil man blues. I'll start. I'll do the western feel. 
Oh, I woke up this morning. Oh, are, oh, are, oh, are. Oh, are, oh, are. Went out to buy some petrol before the price went up too far. Oh, are, oh, are. I had no trouble raising the money to buy a tank full. I simply sold my car. Oh, oh, oh. There's a yes. message in that for all of us. Right. <laughs> and with Mark's literally hurtling to and fro, we go on to the next round, which is Mornington Crescent. Good. And oh. this time, teams, we're going to play International Mornington Crescent. Ah. Oh. You know, the rules aren't that, all that different from the normal domestic game that we play, except, of course, that the equator plays an important role. Now then. <laughs> Are you all set? And we'll start with you, Barry. Sean Salise. Main Street, Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh, you come here with your London ways. <laughs> Fontana di Trevi. Oh. Oh. Lincoln Street, Maine. Reaper Barn. Smutty little yeah. thing. <laughs> Dock Road, Dover. Southampton Row. W. Sucky Hall Street. The Mouth. <laughs> The Mall. Bless the Mall. Very well, and I don't know if this is in the rules, but because uh, it's new to me. Uh, Fifth Avenue. Yes, it is. Right. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, it's all right. It's, uh, it's not a winner, but it's all right. Mm. It's all right. Thank nice you play. Thank you. Nice play. Thank you. It's super chance, it's all right. It's rather crafty. Mm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Scattered applause in all areas. A nice play, yes. yes. Um, Put Graham on the spot. Um, St. Peter's Square. Oh. Can I play the Wild Street? No. No. Don't you know? Oh, no, we could have done that earlier if we were going to play that. Be we, fair, they can do it. Just because we, we didn't. I assumed they can't. that we were. That, Barry, please. I tell you what, I'm, I'm happy actually to go on with it as it's. It's more tricky, this one, isn't it? Via Veneto. Hume Road. I don't ever remind listeners that... Hume Road, H-U-L-M-E Road. Yeah, and, yeah, well done. But I was going to say, I don't have to remind listeners that your problem was breaking out there. <laughs> I keep up on the ointment. Wood Green High Street. Mornington Crescent. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, Bad luck, Denise. Yeah. Stay right in two cents. Yeah. Graham wins that one. Thank you. I, I couldn't yes. have done it without Actually, Barry. Actually, that was one of the best rounds we've had. Mm. Now then, I'm going to ask now the uh, teams to do their announcements for the late arrivals at the transport ball. Oh, look, there's Mr. and Mrs. Boat and their daughter, Rowena Boat. Oh. <laughs> Rowena and Boat. friend, Rowena. Brian Ferry. <laughs> and his seafaring girlfriend, Mandy Pumps. <laughs> So I've heard. <laughs> Hi, lords! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Must be bad, he's shouting it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Way Ticket. <laughs> My son Juan Way Ticket. <laughs> uh, Entering en masse the British Rail School of Painters, Bernard Buffet, <laughs> <laughs> Guards Van Gogh. <laughs> And two loos, neither of them working. <laughs> oh, there's a, a lady just come ashore from a liner, very drunk, she can't even remember her surname. Tight and ick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there's the Dame of Sark and her son Noah Sark. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, welcome, please. Mr. and Mrs. Nance, the late arrival at Platform Paul. And their rather tired daughter, weary Greta Nance, the late arrival at Platform Paul. <laughs> With young socialite and model never out of the gossip columns, minor doors, please. <laughs> Stand by, please, for Captain and Mrs. Dingcraft and their son, Len Dingcraft. <laughs> Oh, there's one of the Tiller girls, Flo Tiller. <laughs> At this point, uh, it's time for me to say that... Uh, Rick Shaw. Is... <laughs> All the way from Sweden, the Tooting family and their son, Buster Tooting, and his son, Lars Buster Tooting. 
Oh, I'm sorry, he's come formal. It's Mr. Lars Buster Tucci. <laughs> Oh, look, there's our last train. Let's catch it. <laughs> <laughs> and they did. Uh, the well said. This is the penultimate programme, ladies and gentlemen, so there's hope yet. And uh, it's time for me to say now goodbye from all of us here. We'll see you again in the uh, same time next week. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Denise Coffey were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Geoffrey Perkins. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. <laughs> At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Well, once again, the last programme of the series gives us the opportunity to look back over some of the high spots of the show so far, and here they are. <laughs> so, we'll be trying to match them in today's programme, which features those hardy perennials, Tessa the D'Urbervilles and Jude the Obscure. <laughs> And that's the joke for today's show. <laughs> so let's get on and meet our eager competitors. Or rather, it says on my script here, competitots, and I'm inclined not to change it. <laughs> Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton. <laughs> and Graham Garden and Barry Cryer. <laughs> and we're going to start teams with a familiar round, sound charades. One team has to make noises, and the other team must guess what they mean. The audience are let into the secret and can help by applauding when the various contestants are getting warmer and doing the other thing when they're not. Uh, on our computer board here in the studio, the uh, answers will be flashed up. And also, you at home will be told by the mystery voice, whose identity will be revealed next week. <laughs> <laughs> Moonraker. Tim and Willie, you're going to do the first charade. Are we, Hump? You are, indeed. Yes, looking forward to it immensely. Will you tell Graham and Barry whether it's uh, a film, a book, or a play, or what? It's a what? book and a film. It's a book and a film. No, it's one word. And we're going Ish. to do it all in one. Ish. Yeah. Off you. Now, um, why, um, um, why, um, do I have to have, an, um... It's a rotten impersonation, but I've got an eye closed. And, um, do I have to actually work... Well, uh, Mr. Patrick Moore, he said, <laughs> saving, <laughs> saving the not before. Well, time. Mr. Patrick Moore, interesting, you should ask why yes, we are Bill standing <laughs> in the outer galaxies. Yes, Bill uh, Sarbat. Contemplating mm, yes, these fallen uh, dead plants. Yes, yes, mm, 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 yes, mm, yeah, mm, yeah, it's getting better. Mm, not much, but it is getting yeah, mm, up and, and wide. I've got to have a lot to do with the soil. Uh, yes, what yes. one has to do is to till and reap. Till and reap, yeah. Till and reap, this then plant your little seeds. But you've got to get your implement out, Patrick. <laughs> the, the answer lies in the dust, I think. Um, oh, it I... lies more in your implement. Really? Uh, yes. Um, so what are you doing that, scratching that dust over this there? This is the very implement of which I usually use. To scratch, to scratch? On this sort of place. Perhaps you'd like to hop over there and, um... Why don't you shut up? <laughs> <laughs> With that, helpful, enough. with that helpful bit of applause... <laughs> the audience seem as baffled as we are, and they saw, they saw the clue. You'd better start guessing now, Barry and... Uh, One word. Graham. And it's... And it's a film, and it's out in space, and he's... <laughs> he's being agricultural, and using... A rake. Moonraker! <laughs> oh! Must have been a terrific right. Patrick Moore. Mm -hmm. Eight out of ten for that. Who's the eye? And uh, Graham and Barry, it's your turn to do a charade now. And I'd better tell you right away that you'll get a bonus of ten if it's shorter than that last one. Oh. <laughs> the answer's going up on the board here, and here it is for you at home through the mystery voice. Chicago. Graham and Barry, will you tell them what it is? It's, uh, oh, that will give the Just game tell them what oh, it is. I see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the idea. It's a um, musical. And it, it was a film in another life, another existence, which oh. I only said to confuse you, but it was. Well done. 
One word. One word. And we'll do it all at once. And then we'll do the charade. <laughs> I say, look at that boat over there, that boat or ship. What do they leave? Oh, good Lord, they're loading on all those frocks and dresses, aren't they? Very smart. Very smart Gee, and fashionable, aren't they? All those things going into that boat are terribly fashionable. My word. The height of fashion. <laughs> I know what this is. Uh, it's got two C's. You're using the C twice. The ship cargo. Ah! Oh! <laughs> oh. Very good. Well done, Tim. That uh, ship that of earns you another turn. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I'll never get it right again. <laughs> Which is going up on the board now. Here it is for you at home. Heaven can wait. The audience here knows what it is. So, uh, Tim and Willie, will you tell the teams whether it's a film, a book, or whatever? It's a film. In fact, it's been more Twice. than one film. Yes, uh, we're not films, quite sure whether a possible there's... paperback. It's got three words, and we're going to do it all at once, probably rather brilliantly. <laughs> Possibly not. <laughs> we'll be the judge of that. No, you won't. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, sir. The uh, Spanish lady at the table over there would like to do disgusting things with your lithe body um, <laughs> upstairs uh, now. Um... Would you tell her I'll be over as soon as I finish this game of bowls? Um, <laughs> sorry, I've got a dictionary to compile. Um, I'll be over as soon as that happens. It's the, um... People are stopped now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on! Drake and Dictionary. Bowles Spanish Dictionary. <laughs> I would say you were exactly on the wrong lines. <laughs> My Yiddish Amada. <laughs> Spanish waiter. Bowles Dictionary. Spanish waiter. Not what called the Manuel. Spanish waiter. I didn't sound a bit Spanish. Spanish like well, no, but we make allowances for bad performance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a Spanish lady. What? All those three clues you, you, you brought up are all irrelevant. <laughs> so I think a round of applause for getting three clues that were nothing to do with it. No, no. <laughs> mm. Spanish is relevant. No. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. More help. More help than they are. <laughs> is bowls anything to do with it? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, something. Something dictionary? actually. Dictionary is. Yes, must be. No. It's got the right word. Drake. In it. No. 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 What would you call a Spanish lady who is ready for you over in the corner? <laughs> <laughs> Darling. Oh. <laughs> I don't think they're going to get it, are they? I don't think they are, no. Pull up for Carmen, no. <laughs> <laughs> are we going to have to do an alternative version? All right. Willie, your time is up. You've been so good. Go to hell. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, heaven can wait. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't know why I come to you. Well, you got it in the end. Right, Graham and Barry, you have another charade now. It's going up on the board, and here it is for you listening at home. Charlie's aunt. I can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go right. home. OK, will you tell Tim and Willie what it is, whether it's a film or a book or what? Play. It was a play, and it's been films and a television. It's two, two words. words. Two words. Two We're doing the whole thing. The whole thing. And I'm going to start now. Graham's going to start now. Is Echo anything to do with it? <laughs> it's movie, movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yes. Barry. Yes? Do you know that mine are real? <laughs> what? No, no. Sorry, I'm not in this, but I just... I, I, I threw that in as an ad lib. What? What did mine you say? Mine are real as well, and I'll tell you something else. Yeah? Willie's are real. As well as mine and yours? Oh, yeah. yeah. Tim? Yes? Tim's are real. Tim's are real. And Ump's are real, obviously. Ump's are real. Yeah, I mean, uh, pianist chappy, Colin Sell. Colin Sell. Is, is real? Did hear tell they were. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Little bird tell me, yeah. Mm. They're real. What about, um, Charlie? Ooh! <laughs> yeah? No? No. no. So ours, ours are real. Yes, yeah. yeah. But, um... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Very clever, isn't it? Charlie's aunt will keep them out of the... Yeah.
I wish we'd thought of that. Before we go on to the next round, here's where I tell the teams that uh, at the end of the programme they have to announce the late arrivals at the Common Market Ball. Oh, the Common great. Market Thanks. Ball. Oh, come on. Only Char 30, a heap. Only 30% could be bothered to vote. Only 30% would be bothered to laugh at Common Market Ball. <laughs> That's par for the course. <laughs> That's true. There's and no speaking of par for the course, Hump. OK, well, now we go on to the next round. Good. And this is a round called Tell Me the Time. I'm going to ask each member what time it is and award marks accordingly. <laughs> we'll start with you, Willie Rushton. Opening time. No, it isn't, unfortunately. I've got a digital watch that exploded. Um, I'd say it was about 12.33. Barry, how about you? My rust-proof, waterproof watch caught fire, so this is from memory. <laughs> 1.17. Mm-hmm. Graham? Well, I've, I haven't got a digital watch. Mine's got hands, which makes it a manual watch. You need hands. And... Pardon? Nothing. Oh. My, my watch says 1.30... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm oh. sorry. Hesitation oh. there. Uh, Tim? Oh. <laughs> Any time you can make it, Hump. But uh, 4.30... <laughs> I'll give you the time of day any time you want, but it's 4.33, depending where you're sitting. Right. Okay. Good, good round. Good round. Very good round. It's a new one, that. It's a new one. Enjoy good you're playing at home. And we go on to the, the round that's called Pick Up Song, and this is one that's dead easy. In this round, a member of one team starts singing a song and then stops on a word in the lyric. A member of the opposing team must then sing a different song, but starting with that word. Oh. Well, and you can uh, start a song, uh, Tim Brooke Taylor. M I C K E Y M O U S E. <laughs> Easy come, easy go. No. <laughs> it's it's S E. E. He's just my bill. <laughs> e. e. You, you yes, want to you can take E. E. Yes, 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 just my yes, bill. I'll allow that. An ordinary guy. <laughs> guy, I'm in love with a wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful morning, oh, what a... <laughs> water is your water, word. Water, cool, clear water. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Barren waste and still no sign of... Of. 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 Of, of a picture paints a thousand, but no. Uh, <laughs> of. Of. Um... Of you, the lure of you. I like the lure of you, didn't I? Pardon? Lure of you. 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 Ah, yeah. oh, if you like. You. You are. You. You are my sunshine. <laughs> sunshine. Of my life. Sunshine of my life. That was very attractive. You it was very right. attractive. <laughs> life, Tim. I got someone to turn to. Brilliant. <laughs> I was a bit surprised myself. <laughs> and two for tea, you for me, and me for you alone. What? <laughs> alone. Oh, alone again, naturally. <laughs> yes. I was singing that in Irish, but it came out the wrong nostril. <laughs> Built like an organ. <laughs> Fifty nostrils. <laughs> Two of them his own. <laughs> I'm just fitting in for Graham's sake. Naturally. <laughs> Lee, Lee, uh, Lee. 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 <laughs> Too easy, really. Isn't yeah. it? Oh, God. We won't go for the obvious ones here. Yeah. Uh, uh, naturally. Lee. Lee. Doing what comes naturally. Yes. I think, I think that gives you... The previous line finished with naturally. I yes. think that gives you the round. I think I that think gives so. you the round. And this is the round that used to be called Calypso or Blues and is now called Calypso Blues Rugby Song or Limerick. <laughs> One side gives the other side a song to sing and the other side, believe it or not, sings it. OK. Who wants to start on this one? They do. They do. <laughs> We're getting the vibes. I agree they with do. that. They do. Well, do you want to give them a well, subject? Very pleased, me. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, how about the Willie Whitelaw... Calypso. Thank you. Oh, Willie Whitelaw is a bit of a dish. 
I tell a lie, he looks like a fish. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only man I know can be 20,000 fathoms under the sea. <laughs> Nothing to beat. <laughs> okay, Tim and Willie, you get a mark for that. And will you uh, give <laughs> Barry and Graham a subject? Speaking of fish, could you do the Magnus Pike <laughs> calypso? Oh, yeah. Just a minute. Oh, what's, what's, um, tin, tin, yes. Tin. Magnus Pike, he's a very fine man. Always waving his arms and a wiggle in his hand. I asked him to explain the other day the principles of the helicopter, but he just flew away. <laughs> and Graham and Barry quite obviously win that round. And we go on to a round which we haven't played for some time, and it's called Initials. I'm going to read each team some abbreviations, and they must tell me what they think each stands for. We're going to do that uh, one at a time. We're going to start with you, Barry. Will you tell me what NPFA stands for? NPFA. NPFA. Um, Nicholas Parsons... <laughs> ..doesn't amount to much. <laughs> Pretty good. Was it Pretty warm? good. It's not. It's not absolute. It's not absolutely right. It's either that, or the National Playing Fields Association. Right the first time. Now then, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, Willie, your initials are F R A S. F R A S. The owner of Richmond attacks suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> fellow, fellow Royal Astronomical Society. Absolutely right. Yes. Good Lord. Graham Garden. Y M C A. The, um, they're a great team. The Yokohama Mornington Crescent All Stars. <laughs> Absolutely right. Over to you, Tim. <laughs> right. Tim, yours are WRP. WRP. Willie Rushton for Pope. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think. Uh, it's the Workers' Revolutionary Party, so-called. That's absolutely correct, yes. Right. Barry, over to you again. Oh. PDSA. Pigeon droppings for South Africa. <laughs> there is an appeal, I hope you'll all find out. <laughs> That's one in the eye for South Please Africa. Please subscribe. <laughs> or? Or um, people's dispensary for, for, for sick animals. Willie. Yes? E-C-A. E... C e C U, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I got an E C A too. E C U. Euro Parliament causes uncontrollable urge luck chuck, but that's too many U's. Um, <laughs> Near enough though, isn't it? I mean, oh. <laughs> English Church Union. 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 Thank you, Tim. Mm. English Church Union. Mm. That's boring. That's <laughs> that's good though, it's right. Oh still. Yeah. Can't have everything. <laughs> <laughs> You learn a lot from this, don't you, this place? Yes. You do indeed. Not to play. Graham, Graham, what about ENG? ENG. Eliminate Noel Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, it's an abbreviation for, for English. Very good, yes. As a supplementary to that, can you tell me what ENG lit stands for? Eliminate Noel Gordon literally. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Tim Brooke Taylor, ACGB. ACGB. He's a bit that way himself. <laughs> <laughs> a cracking good Britain, yes, quite right. Uh, ACGB, this is a Reader's Digest thing. Association for Cannibalising Good Books. Oh, It'll be funny, but it's the heart. Yes, uh, I don't know. I'm the only person that doesn't know. <laughs> I don't know either. That's five points. No. Is it, is it the Arts Council? It rings a bell. It's, it's the arts people who, the council people who um, grant board. finance this whole performance. Of Great Britain. Our, yeah. our arts Council of Great Britain. Council Britain. Council Britain. Council Britain. Council Britain. Council. They're sending us out on tour next month. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's go on now to another round, which is called Limbo Dancing. 
It's absolutely simple. Both teams have got to get under a bar six inches above the ground by bending, <laughs> by bending over backwards. And Colin Sell will provide a suitable accompaniment. Out to the middle of the floor, please. Tim's please. got a handicap, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> That's got nothing to do with this. <laughs> get into position, teams. Are you ready? Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, yes. All right, go. Right, though. My word. Jim, oh. Tim's bed. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh you're just easy. Oh, Willie oh, Ruston looks to me to be oh, leading. I'm removing my appliance. Oh. I'm, oh. oh, I'm going. He's under the bar as far as he's oh, angled. Yes. Oh, yes, my. Oh. Tim's ah. bed. Oh, 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 Tim gets a bonus, actually, for that one, for doing it, carrying a yard of ale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> was this the handicap you were looking at? <laughs> well, it's handy. Please, In fact, Willie Rushton uh, went through the, under the bar like grease lightning and wins that round. <laughs> I'll tell you what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, at this moment. We're going to play the final round in this series of Mornington Crescent. Oh. And this is going to be no That's special rules idea, for huh? one reason, and that is it's going to be Mornington Crescent against the clock. Will there be room? <laughs> will there be room? The clock will probably win. <laughs> and teams, you've got to beat the clock as well as beating each other. I was just reminded of the Irish show jumper who broke his nose, hum jumping against the clock. <laughs> Just you? reminded, that's all. OK. For our Irish right. listeners, that's Are you ready to start cry. the clock? <laughs> you ready, teams? Straight rules apart from the clock. Sorry. Straight rules apart oh, from right. the clock. Oh. Speed is of the essence, whatever that means. And we'll start the clock now. Oxford Circus. Chancles Road. Chicago Square. Leamington Spa. <laughs> Cannon Street. Chipping Onga. <laughs> Objection from Tim. They're getting silly about this. <laughs> stop, stop, the clock. No, stop, no, sorry, the Lemmington Spa and Chipping Onga don't work. They're not. They do we haven't got They do against the Straight rules. You can't find places. Oh, Cockfosters. <laughs> that would have been good. <laughs> well, I don't know. When I've, when I've played it, we've, we've allowed uh, places as far flung as that. Yes, we'll ask, we'll ask the audience. Just, the audience. Just, just, yeah. Yes. On Tim's the other hand. The rules. No, no. Oh, come on. Thank you. Well, I don't know. What do you think? No. no. What do you mean, no? What did I ask in the first <laughs> You don't even know what I asked. <laughs> now, Tim has been overruled in that one. Actually, quite seriously, if we're not going to play it seriously, it does, it's, it's meaningless at home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's, let's play it according to Tim's rules. We'll curb the power. Well, the basic yeah. rules. I like the idea of the clock. It speeds it up. But are right. the basic right. rules. And you've got to stick right, to, Tim. you know, the usual. Yeah. Tell us what we can Okay. Oh. okay. Well, you know what we can... Right. Start the clock again. Now, quickly. Regent, Regent Street. Trafalgar Square. Mornington Crescent Laza. <laughs> Piccadilly Circus. No, don't accept that. Piccadilly Circus. That was just silly. It's a little back street uh, in Tibet. <laughs> Condit Street. Pond Street. Lowest Court Road. Balls Bond Road. Heath Street. Haverstock Hill. Northern Line. What? Northern Line. Northern Line? Oh, God. Ah, 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 ah. Wigmore Street. Belsize Park. Oh, oh, Belsize oh, Avenue. Be Mornington Crescent. Yes. yes. One, two. Thank you. I've always well, done Barry, unfortunately you didn't beat the clock, oh. so you don't score as many marks as you would have done if you had. <laughs> well, and we go on now to where I ask the teams for the last time in this series to announce some late arrivals. These are late arrivals at the Common Market Ball. Uh, they're Mr and Mrs Ermountain and their son Bert Ermountain. <laughs> <laughs> and their aristocratic <laughs> grandfather, Lord Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Lake and their son, Wayne Lake. <laughs> There's midshipman Edward Easy over there, known to us all merely as E E C. <laughs> e <laughs> <laughs> well, how about Monsieur and Madame Giscard d'Estaing and their son, Valerie, and their daughter, Norman? <laughs> well, and his hamster, Dam. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, and he's bought that slut Agnes Recultural Policy, the rather rather unpopular common agricultural policy. <laughs> Hair tonic, the rather sauerkraut. <laughs> oh, there's Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Mov Movement. <laughs> And their daughter, Frida Mov Movement. <laughs> and Alec their Tariff pair. Barrier. What? And their au pair, Belle Jum. <laughs> he, uh... Shout out anything you know about the Common War. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we're, Mr... We're, we're whipping up a national apathy campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Thank oh. you for joining in so enthusiastically. <laughs> I thought Vatican City would go further in the European Cup. <laughs> so those long red shorts they have to wear and play on their knees. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always a sad moment when we come to the end of a series. Not this time, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh. Not with a banger, but a wimpy. <laughs> But it's always nice to end on rapturous applause. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. <laughs> well, that's all for this week and also for this series. So uh, we'll be with you all again when it starts up again, whenever that may be. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Harry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Geoffrey Perkins. <laughs>
One team has to make noises and the other team has guessed what they mean and the audience are let into the secret and can help by applauding when they're getting warmer and doing the other thing when they're not. We have uh, our electronic computer here to let the, <laughs> the audience know. And a mystery voice will tell those of you at home what the answer to the charade is. Those of you who'd like to join in the guessing with uh, the teams and don't want to hear the mystery voice, we suggest that you listen instead to the sound of chalk on blackboard. <laughs> Tim and Willie, you're going to do the first uh, charade, which is going up on the board right now, and here's the mystery voice to tell you what it is. The Black Hole. Right, Tim and Willie, is it a film, a book, or what? I don't know, we didn't hear the mystery voice. <laughs> Well, the other hand, <laughs> we will do um, a film. Film. Yes. And it's got um, one, two, three. Three words. In the main. In the main. And we'll do them all together. Is it called In the Main? No. 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 Do, are they out now? Or, or, do, or do they have two lives? No. Uh, we're, going, <laughs> we're going to start. We're going to do all together. Oh, all three yes. words together. It's all right between consenting adults. <laughs> Is there anything down there, Willie? I, I, you can't see them unless they smile. No. Um, no. That's <laughs> uh, uh, something cheerful. Ah. Hey, big spender. Oh, oh, oh look. Oh, yes, it is. It's Shirley Bassey. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Yes, she's down now. Sidney Poitier. Oh, he found that funny. I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, he's quite amused. Yes, yes. Right, we've he's finished now, thank we you. We've finished. We've finished. Good. Next round. <laughs> I Name think it was the battleship Potemkin, very badly done. You're right, it was very badly done. <laughs> Did we get a point for that? No, the audience didn't applaud. <laughs> Down there. Is this in Down. any sense racial? Yes. It is extremely... <laughs> it's not any racial, it is actually tasteless. <laughs> well, we would have expected that. We didn't ask. <laughs> ah, that's a clue. Tasteless. Walt Disney. The Black Hole. <laughs> Very good, Graham. You get for your team the maximum of six marks. And we, we go on to your charade. It's going up on the board now, and here's the mystery voice to tell you what it is. Ali Baba. <laughs> you done it. <clears throat> Graham and John, will you tell the uh, opposition whether it's a film, a book, or what? Yeah, no, because um, as with both of our charades this time, this is a Christmas entertainment. How many words? Two words. Good Lord. It's quiet out tonight. Not many people about. Oh, I suppose it's the time of year, really. I... I don't really know what to do. I... I suppose I could, uh, I could while away a happy hour having a haircut. <laughs> no, no, this place looks closed. Looks closed. Uh, excuse me, uh, are you shut or, or could I have a haircut or a packet of... Uh, uh, <laughs> razor blades. <laughs> I shave like a butterfly, cut like a bee. <laughs> the shop looks shut, but it's open, says me. <laughs> Quiet out. Cassius Clay or out. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Haircut now. Hair. That's your barber. It's your barber. Yeah. Mohammed Barber. <laughs> Ali Barber and the 40 Thieves. Thieves. <laughs> thieves. <laughs> Tim and Willie, aided by approximately 10 minutes of applause from the audience, <laughs> you only get three marks there. And we go over to a charade of yours <laughs> once again now. And uh, this is now going up on our board. And here it is for you listening at home. Apocalypse Now. It's the noisiest writer I've ever heard. <laughs> right, Tim and Willie, will you tell the opposition whether it's a film, a book, or what? Willie will. It's a film. And how many words? That's a clue. Uh, <laughs> two words. Two words. And are you doing them separately or all together? We're going... We're, we're going... All together, <laughs> entirely, at once. Right. Oh, Carlo, what do I do next? Eh, uh, Sophia... I want you to a pocket the lips uh, when I shout. <laughs> when, when I sh 
shout at the action. <laughs> That's Law that and it? Order. Close. A pocket of lips. <laughs> oh, yes, it's ap Apocalypse Now. Yes. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Not very slow. They are very stupid, and, uh, aren't they? The audience... maximum eight points to Graham and John there. <laughs> so, that one. Right, and we go over to their final charade, which, uh, let me remind you, is uh, of a topical flavour. It's going up on the board now, and here it is for you listening at home. We three kings of Orient are. It's great radio, <laughs> this. <isn't it? laughs> right, we all know what it is now, except for uh, except for the teams. Well, I hope <laughs> I hope that uh, Glenn and John know what it is. How many words? One. <laughs> no. That's a slight exaggeration. It's six words, and it's uh, a festive offering. Uh, here. D -d don't... that fellow over there. Uh, we're supposed to be Scottish in this one. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, oh, I'm sorry, John. Were you? I'm sorry, I... I of course. Huh? Uh, excuse me. Hi. Um, I'm from London. <sighs> <laughs> And I'm trying to make myself understood by the natives up here. Aye, aye. Which is why I've acquired this... Hey, wait a minute. What? Look over there. Do you recognise that wee chap? I do, I do. That's no. wee uh, Jimmy Ng. Jimmy? You're right, it's Jimmy Ng. I thought it was Frank. Cause no, there, brother. there's his brother Frank just behind him. That's Frank Ng. Aye, that's... Two Ngs. <laughs> that's right, Jimmy and Frank. Aye. Well known, those two. Aye, they're off wee, wee, though, off wee. Tiny, I mean, he... mind you, they are hunchback dwarves. I'd so call them dwarves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunchback Not dwarves. To, to put too fine a point on it, uh, I'd call them dwarves. Aye, who, who, who are they playing for now? Do they sign to play for some team in East London? I think. Oh, Leighton, <laughs> Leighton, somewhere out that way. Oh, yes. Used to be called Leighton. <laughs> Is that it? And That's we've ground to a halt. Goodness for yes. that. We uh, three kings of Orient are. Well, then, no, well, actually, it was the first Noel. I was trying to get, <laughs> I was trying to get six words out of Brigadoon. <laughs> and so you shall. <laughs> You're a brave effort from that, Tim and Willie, but on time faults, they lag uh, rather far behind. <laughs> <laughs> it was, in fact, we freak ings of Orient. Yes, we knew that. We gathered that. Let's go on one. to the next uh, game. <laughs> this one's called Mist. Hits of the 70s. Miss who? Analysts are invited to give us some of the lesser known versions of some of the famous plays, films, and television series of the decade. And we're going to start now with Graham Garden, and we'll go once round, and then I think we'll open it up for a general free for all. So, Graham, will you offer us your suggestion? Well, in the 70s, in the, in the theatre, Tom Stoppard reigned supreme. His only flop was Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are poorly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tim. Uh, unusual one here. Um, whatever you think of his singing voice, Max Bygraves I'm talking about, um, <laughs> we've got to be, be honest about this. He does sell a lot of records. At least he tells us so. Um, and there was a record called Max Bygraves Sings, but it had to be withdrawn under the trade's description. <laughs> <laughs> there was an enormously successful film starring Jack Nicholson and Faye Dunaway called Chinatown, and somebody over here thought they would emulate it so they made an English version of Chinatown called Stoke-on-Trent. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pottery joke. <laughs> Not to be sniffed at. Really? Uh, this is an American political drama starring Michael Caine, and it's called Get Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> they may yet make it. <laughs> One that got nowhere was Alien in Wonderland. Um, <laughs> and then the white rabbit burst out of her chest. <laughs> I felt sorry for the producer who got so close with Fanny Hall and Annie Hill. <laughs> <laughs> the James Bond film Muck Spreader didn't do too well. <laughs> nor, nor, nor indeed did the African Queen meets the boyfriend. <laughs> Actually, I've heard they did very well. Well, no, no children. <laughs> that great song, unfortunately, didn't quite make it. Bridge over troubled dentures. <laughs> <laughs> Tatty version of Grease which was called the Isle of Wight. <laughs> <laughs> Any advance on that? One doing very bad business this Christmas is Star Trek The Colour Slide. 
<laughs> and um, Singy Rice and what not Lloyd Webber, continuing biblical vein, did very badly with a sequel to Jesus Christ Superstar called Doubting Thomas the Quite Well Known Disciple. <laughs> Any more? One flew what? over the breakfast table. <laughs> <laughs> sort of marathon. Right. Well, at this stage in the game, it's level pegging. <laughs> <laughs> and to the next uh, game, which is, you know, previously in this program we played Kim's game, and this is a special Christmas version of Kim's game. A number of items suitable for Christmas presents will be passed on a conveyor belt in front of one member of each team. <laughs> And he has to remember as many of them as possible with the help of his partner. The conveyor belt goes for 10 seconds, and there are 30 seconds for recollection. And the recollector can take everything home that he remembers. <laughs> now, the then, recollector of St. Andrews, I we'll think you're referring to. <laughs> we'll Our start here with uh, John Junkin. John yeah. has to recall it, but uh, you can prompt him, Graham, and give him some assistance. Or hindrance, if you like. The belt's going to start now. <laughs> Christmas Kim's game. Cover your toy. Is that a one? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, the bell stopped. Um, the bell stopped, rather. <laughs> and, uh, you have 30 seconds uh, to recall what's on the belt now, starting now. John. Uh, there was a cuddly toy. Uh, another cuddly toy. <laughs> Toy. There was a big cuddly was toy. <laughs> there was a... Thank you. Cuddly toy. Don't help him. Um, there, 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 was, there was a sort of elephant-shaped uh, cuddly toy. There were two cuddly toys. Two cuddly toys together uh, and, a, and a cuddly toy. A rupture appliance and a cuddly toy. Uh, a canteen of cuddly toys. Canteen of cuddly toys. <laughs> An electric cuddly toy. A silicone chip cuddly toy. Um, a matched set of cuddly toys. Five seconds to a go. Microwave go cuddly toy. A microwave cuddly toy. Microwave cuddly yeah. toy. Yes. And and yeah. and what was that last one? Um, a crate of uh, six cuddly, cuddly toys. toys. <laughs> and what a bumper Christmas you're going to have now. <laughs> Tim, you can do the uh, recollecting now, and Willie, you can give him such assistance as you can as the conveyor belt rolls in front of your team, starting now. Cuddly toy. Um, Not yet. No, there isn't. Oh, no. That's silly. <laughs> What's that, Willie? That's ridiculous. That's one of your old ones, Willie. <laughs> Right, the bell stopped. Now, in 30 seconds, Tim, will you recollect what passed before you on that belt, please? There's a cuddly Ayatollah. <laughs> a 14-volume edition of Who's Who in Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. <laughs> oh, there goes, oh, Isla Sinclair. I saw her. Uh... It was only Isla Sinclair that I met her. <laughs> was it? Oh, sorry, uh, yes. An evening with Anna Ford. <laughs> uh, some mince pies. Um, the Herod's Elf in Grot with Jeremy Thorpe as Santa. <laughs> a building I didn't recognise. A pair of gloves, or are those car warmers? I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> difficult to see from here. Um, a conveyor belt. A conveyor belt. <laughs> a Christmas conveyor belt. Five seconds. Uh, oh, a, a book of one-note carols for tone-deaf people. And an inebriated stagehand who fell on. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but you've got a fee for it, I'm happy yeah, to say. Yeah, got, yeah. And your 30 seconds are up. <laughs> Didn't they do dreadfully? <laughs> We're going to put in now... Uh, oh, you, you all of you, especially those of you listening at home, will want to know what the score is. We're going to go on now to the... Uh, <laughs> to the blues in which uh, one team sings uh, a blues on a subject prompted by the other team. Uh, Graham and John, you're going to sing the first blues, and Tim and Willie, you're going to give them their subject, please. Well, we're going to go right off the beam of this programme and ask you to sing a Christmas blues. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Colin Sell will yeah. give the introduction on the piano, so are you ready? Start now. Well, I woke up this morning... <laughs> Hung over right to my hair. Yes, I was. 
Went down to the kitchen, saw my old lady there. She said to me, darling, shall I stuff the turkey? <laughs> I said yes and told her where. <laughs> And from the audience's applause, you win that round, but we'd better let Tim and Willie have a go. <laughs> so, uh, will you, Graham and John, give uh, Tim and Willie their subject for a blues, please? We'd like to hear them sing the Happy Christmas Reggie Bosengate Blues. <laughs> This morning. Very good impersonation. <laughs> Remembered I was out of work, so I went back to sleep again. <laughs> Such a pity. Such a pity. I never got round to calling Mrs. Thatcher at her lava hen. <laughs> Still, I've been given a brand new series. It's called Newts at Ten. <laughs> Right, Tim and Willie win that one, and we go on to the game that's called Paranoia. Team A decides that there's something wrong with Team B. Team B have to guess what's wrong with themselves by asking questions, while <laughs> Team A reply in a manner appropriate to Team B's affliction. The aim is to make the members of Team B paranoid and leave the studio twitching. Now then, Graham and John, you're going to start this one. Meanwhile, the uh, affliction will go up on the board here, and those of you listening at home will be told of it by the mystery voice. John thinks he's Michael Parkinson, and Graham thinks he's David Frost. <laughs> right. Graham and John, you have the affliction. You have to question uh, Tim and Willie to find out what it is. Will you start your questioning now, please? Well, what's the matter with us? Oh, <laughs> well, you've changed a bit uh, since you were over the other side of the big spit. <laughs> um, Graham. Yes. yes. Not so much us as you. Gosh, you have changed. Hasn't he? Yes. Is it just Graham who's changed or have I changed as well? You have a bit, the voice has. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it has. It has oh. changed quite a bit. Well, we want somebody else then. Um, I think so. No. I don't think you were. I mean, I don't know. You're always talking about your roots. You ought to know. <laughs> All about your working class background. <laughs> you? <laughs> have you two gone remorselessly racial again? No. Well, we have in a way, as far as I'm concerned. Yorkshire is racialist. <laughs> what were we doing the other side of the big spit? You were. I don't know. I was. If you did have a facelift, I'd sue him. So would I. <laughs> well, that alone tells me who I am. <laughs> I think... Doesn't he look like Nixon in this light? <laughs> in who? black and white. It's a who looks look like Nixon? There. You. I do. No. I don't. No, no. no, no I don't no. look anything like Nixon. No. no. You look like a Burton's dummy. <laughs> Don't knock it, it's a living and it's dry and warm. <laughs> Who said it was wrong? Um, <laughs> are we together in this affliction? To some extent. But you have different symptoms. Are we, are we partners in this affliction? No. no. Are we opposed to each other in this particular area? Not really. You area. do the same <clears throat> job. It's just coincidental that we both have this affliction. You do the same job. Pardon? Take your fingers out of your mouth when you're talking, Tim. You see, he's getting aggressive again. I know. Yeah, he's always right. like that, isn't he? You know, when, he does, when he's out of his depth, he gets aggressive. Do you remember? <laughs> when Muhammad Ali absolutely yeah. wiped the floor with him. He was so aggressive, didn't he? He hates women. Hates it, yeah. yeah. I'm a hard. midget who can't swim. <laughs> I liked him when the emu got him. <laughs> so I'm Michael Parkinson. Yeah. <laughs> leads me to find out who I am. No, stop um, grovelling. I think so. <laughs> I think you've got to be a lady. Yes. Have I got to be a lady? Am I a lady? Not to no, our knowledge. No. <laughs> am I a Yorkshire person too? No. 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 You're whatever anybody wants you to be. <laughs> I'm getting paranoid. Now. <laughs> I no. am not a Yorkshire person and I don't think I'm British either, am I? Well, that's debatable. <laughs> Mid-Atlantic, I'd say. So I got to see. Mid-Atlantic. Mid Ideally Atlantic. in the Mid-Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> and I do the same job as my colleague. Uh, yes, uh, basically. Yes. Isn't that fair, audience? Same job? <laughs> yeah. 
I'm not frosty. Ah! Oh, do you know how to hurt Brilliant a chap? isn't the word for it. <laughs> Brilliant's not the word for it. Tortuous is. <laughs> now then, Tim and Willie, you have an affliction which you've got to uh, discover from Graham and John. That's going up on the board now. So I'll be back with you in 20 minutes. <laughs> Meanwhile, here's the mystery voice to tell you listening at home what it is. They have both given us Christmas presents that we have already got. <laughs> right. It's Always up on the board. You at home know what it is. Tim and Willie, will you please start questioning? Uh, does it apply to both of us? Oh, yes. Thank yes. you. Is yes. it in any way, because you have captured the Christmas spirit in some way, is it in any way festive? Yes, and we, yes, we appreciated them hugely. Very much indeed. Really nice. <laughs> we We've sent you something in a box. Well, you know you have. Bless you. <laughs> really? We honestly. think we're Father Christmas. Well, you certainly behaved like Father Christmas. <laughs> I, I think it's so well. clever of you to have, to have found them, really. I do, too. I do. It's amazing. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful thought. <clears throat> wonderful. <laughs> Are we an Avon lady? <laughs> Your private life is no concern of <laughs> You can be an Avon person now. So, uh, gifts. Is it gifts, generally? Oh, yes, indeed. Gifts. We think we've given you something. Uh, and we thank you, we really. Thank, we I mean, thank you for it. I'm thinking it's a thought that counts. I shall use it always. <laughs> I, uh, there's one way I won't use it. Where the... Um... <laughs> there's a comb. <laughs> Have we given you the wrong present? The present you won't, don't like? No. Oh, no, we like it. Oh, no, we should not fall. You're being very polite about something oh, you really? don't really? I mean, oh, they're terrific. I mean... <laughs> we've given My wife and I are so delighted to have the matching set because there aren't many people who do. <laughs> We're so grateful. So what is, what is so thing. clever is to anticipate the fact that, that out of all the people who, who might not want a couple, that, that, that we really did. It's wonderful. We, we've given you writers. <laughs> Are you lying in your answers? No. The audience is. No, it's so it's you're lying in your answers. You don't like what we've given you. You are the two most inappropriate people to get this gift. No, no. I mean, uh, oh, I can't speak for Graham particularly on this, but I mean, I, I was, I was enchanted because to be able to sit there at that home and and. Look at one up that, that end of the mantelpiece and one up that end of the mantelpiece. Yeah. It's absolutely... It's wonderful. Bookends. <laughs> <laughs> Two Beverly sisters. Hi. <laughs> okay, they've established help. that you've yeah. given them a present. Which they don't really like, but they're being awfully polite. Why don't it. they like it? Um, no taste. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've given you our collected works. Oh, no. No, not, no, not, I don't not that. that. Tim and Willie, I don't think you're going I to... Agree. Agree. Gonna, we're giving you a copy of the I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue book. I'm going to give you three quarters of a mark, and uh, John and Graham, you'll have to tell them exactly what it is. You've, You've given us something we've already got. What? You've got the anything. We've <laughs> <laughs> already got the I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue book. I think that's unfair. We should have been a large round of applause and three marks, Willie, don't you agree? <laughs> Thank you very much. It would have been a large round of applause if the audience hadn't been fast asleep. <laughs> now, here's a popular round, censored songs. Teams, I'm going to ask each of you to sing a medley of Christmas songs, and during the song it will be your task to censor, by means of a buzzer, any words you consider will outrage public decency or frighten the horses. <laughs> Willie and Tim, you're going to start your selection first, with Colin Sell accompanying you at the piano. The red reindeer had a very shiny, and if you ever saw it, you would even say it glowed. All of the other reindeer used to call it names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Such a fool! Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to. Rudolph with your so bright, won't you my tonight? <laughs> and the grim, as they shouted out with glee. Rudolph the red reindeer, you'll go down. 
Two little boys had two little toys. One had a wooden. Do you think I would ever leave you when there's room on my for two? Hurrying on now. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to on a hot horse open sleigh. Right. Now, Graham and John, let's have your selection, please. I don't think we can compete no, with the professionalism really. of that. No. <laughs> Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your... P <laughs> All I want for Christmas are me too. <laughs> I saw Mummy Santa Claus <laughs> In the meadow we can a snowman <laughs> And pretend that he is <laughs> He'll say, are you? We'll say <laughs> But you can do the job when you're in town <laughs> On the twelfth day of Christmas My true love sent to me Twelve drummers Eleven pipers, ten lords, uh, nine ladies, eight maids, uh, seven swans, uh, six geese, uh, five balls, four, three French, two, and up uh, in a pair. Right, it would entirely destroy the Christmas spirit if I told you, Tim and Willie, how far you were behind, so I won't <laughs> dwell on the mark. I'll simply go on to the game, which is Christmas telegrams. The teams are asked to send telegrams for this season of goodwill. And we're going to start with you, John. I would like, at this seasonal time of year, to send a greetings telegram to the post office saying, Happy Easter 1983. <laughs> This is a general excuse. Sorry, can't be with you. Undergoing intensive plastic surgery since incident under mistletoe with Esther Ranson. <laughs> Graham. Oh, well, I was going to send one to British Leyland saying, Happy New Year, when the clock strikes at midnight, don't come out in sympathy. <laughs> I'd like to send one to Lord Lucan. Um, all right, we give up. You can come out now. <laughs> right, any further telegrams? I'd quite like to send one to the President of Turkey, just reading, Get Stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send one to Lord Carrington, saying, Urgent, Mugabe is spelt backward, spells Ibargom. <laughs> I'd like to send one to the cast of Crossroads saying a happy Noel and a better rehearsed one. <laughs> I'd like to send one, I don't suppose you'd get it, but I'd like to send one to Vincent van Gogh saying, may all your Christmases be what? <laughs> and a happy new ear. <laughs> Here we are. <clears throat> I'd quite like to send one to Ian Smith, who said that his regime in Rhodesia would last a thousand years, saying, doesn't time pass when you're enjoying <laughs> it? <laughs> right. well, on that uh, note, we'll leave that game and go on now to our pro-celebrity Christmas version of that popular game, Mornington Crescent. And as I told you at the beginning of the programme, we are very happy to have a distinguished guest with us to take part in this game. And uh, we shall uh, tell you who he is after the game, but uh, at this point I'd like to introduce him to our studio audience here. Sir, would you please take your seat next to me? And 
Welcome to our show. I understand that you know the basics uh, of the game, but I have to say that on this occasion we are going to play one of the more complicated rules, as this is a special Christmas version. So what we'll do is we'll allow the teams to play around, for, uh, first of all, so that you can get the, the hang of it. The rule that we're going to play, teams, is the one that involves parallel transfer. And that means that any team that gets two positions ahead of its opponents can transfer to a corresponding position on a parallel route without losing a turn. I think that's a All bit... Right? I mean, I don't play this regularly. I'm a f novice at this game. I, I mean, I, I, I play for, for fun and pleasure, but I've never played this particular rule before. You'll find, John, that it is quite simple, you know, if you, if you just keep your concentration going. Okay, you'll find I'll it try. If, if Let's you remember, well, we'll give it a it's try. It's a parallel. I yeah, think you'll I'll, find I'll, it's okay. Parallel. I think you'll find it's quite easy. As long as you think, well, funnily enough... All right, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll give it a go. And to, in order that you can plunge into it straight away, we'll start with you, John. This is, this is a gambit that we evolved playing at home, an opening gambit, and, and I don't know if it's acceptable here, but I'll try it. Crutched friars. <laughs> I, don't I think you'd better start that. again, because that actually doesn't work. No, no, no. That's more oh, it does. No, of course it works. I mean, I don't think John evolved it. That's a well-known opening. <laughs> well, it may be now, but I'm sure we evolved it at home. It, 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 it's a valid well, that's, opening. That's that's as, that's he's a, as he's specially come along. Yes, come on. It's his first. Willie, you can follow that. It's yes, it's, just. It's, yes, it's all right. Euston Road. <laughs> um, Dalem Gardens. Oh, yeah. Uh, still not right. No, it isn't. It's, it's John's opening. Agamemnon Street, I suppose, will work. Not very satisfying. Where? Agamemnon. No, Road. Agamemnon Road. Where? West Agamemnon Hampstead. Road? Yeah. It's the West Hampstead. Yeah. Is the nearest Road. Yes. Agamemnon Road. Um, Parallel. Transfer. No. Um, Transfer. Yeah. Uh, Transfer. Just a minute. Yeah. Oh, um, uh, Bouvery Street. <laughs> Third lad. I'd be a ninny if I didn't say Ladbrook Grove. <laughs> uh, Safe as a house. Um, Portland, uh, Portland Square. Ah. St. 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 James's Park. Uh, I've got to be very careful. Not Kensington High Street. High Street Kensington. Is that power? Not Kensington High Street. High Street yeah. Kensington. That's all right. Huh? Pudding Lane. Um, let's play this right, it's Mornington Crescent in two. Um, <laughs> Fetter Lane. Mornington Crescent. Ah! Triumph! Oh. 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 been lost without my Labrador Grove. Too clever I by heart, Graham. Coming. Yes, <laughs> yes. Now, <coughs> we're going to involve uh, you, sir, our distinguished guest, in this uh, next round. And what we can do, as more than four people can play the game, instead of substituting for a member of the team, you will follow uh, Willie Rushton in this one. All right? Straight round. OK. <coughs> so we'll start now with Graham Garden. And I start with uh, Trafalgar Square. Shaftesbury Avenue. Monster Road. Mornington Crescent. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> I'm very sorry about that. That's <laughs> rather unfortunate. We would like to, to go on and ask you a few things about what you're doing currently, Sir Alec, but, uh, <laughs> but we do have to hurry on to the next game. So can we have a... Right, and we'll go on to the next game now, in which, uh, at the beginning of the programme, I asked the teams to introduce their late arrivals for the Christmas ball. And that is exactly what they're going to do. Right, I shall start. Having no fear, would you welcome a small and select party, Mrs. Gerald Legg, Mr. Michael Foote and Miss Elto? <laughs> well, here come some traditional visitors, the family row. <laughs> Here are the in the blind man's hats with their daughter, policewoman Penny, in the blind man's hat. 
Mr. and Mrs. Pauling pair of socks from Aunt Edna again. <laughs> Anna Pauling pair of socks from Aunt Edna again. Mr. and Mrs. Blunt and their secret agent sons, who are several mean spies. <laughs> oh, excellent. Mr. and Mrs. Bennett, this thing needs batteries, and their son Gordon Bennett, this thing needs batteries. <laughs> Here's one you'll like. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. The Red Nosed Reindeer and their son, Frank. <laughs> it's only because you told them that like it. I oh, know. <laughs> the way I tell them. It's the way I yell them. <clears throat> From the world of television, Mr. and Mrs. Ting's Battle and their rather pathetic Ray Ting's Battle. Well, it is pathetic, isn't it? The whole, the whole of the rest of the year, nothing. And then one week when you can't actually watch television, 51 films that I want to see. <laughs> That's just a personal grudge. I've got Mr. and Mrs. Sorry. Snows and their clerical son, Parson. <laughs> Here comes a whole crowd of Christmas favourites. Um, oh. Is it, I do believe, led by Emma Dreaming? Oh, and... And Arthur White, in That's that right. case. And the well-known Christopher Muss. Better known as Chris. Oh. Still the good Lord, to... Avery Crease. Miss Carr. And Die Wright. Oh, and his welcome, please, his worship, Mayor Daisby. Mayor Daisby. And he is escorting Mary Ann Bright. <laughs> oh, and there's Anne May Hall York Crease. <laughs> and, of course, in charge of the whole party, Mrs. B. White. Oh, they're going to burst into Welcome song. Welcome all together. And now they're going to burst into song, I do believe. Am I dreaming? Half a white. Christmas. Just like D. Juan Sui. Houston O. Wendy treetops glisten. And children. Liz Ann. Two ears lay bell. Cindy Snow. <laughs> Here she is, back again. Emma dreaming. Arthur White. <laughs> Christmas. With every Chris. Miss Carr. Die right. <laughs> may a days be merry and bright. And may all your Chris. Mrs. Mrs. B. White. <laughs> Nevertheless, I ho hope you all have a happy Christmas and it's <laughs> goodbye from all of us. <laughs> John Junkin, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do for Christmas by Humphrey Littleton with Colin Sell setting them to music. The programme was produced by Geoffrey Perkins. We present, I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello, hello and welcome to the 1980 Christmas edition of I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. And it's a very special edition this year because we have a new joke which will be told by one of the team members at some stage in the proceedings. But before we reach that, let's give a warm hello, thank you and last orders please to our two teams. On my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton. And on their right, Barry Cryer and Graham Gardens. <laughs> and straight away, let's go over to our pianist, Colin Sell, for a seasonal note. Thank you, Colin. Now, <laughs> before we do round one, teams, you'll see that in front of you, you have a Christmas cracker. 
what I'd like you to do is to pull the crackers now and then I'm going to ask you to tell us what you have in them in the way of a gift oh. and also to sing the motto that you find inside. Pull the crackers. I've got to at home, I'd like to put your ah! fingers oh, in. Oh, oh. 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 made in Belfast. Oh, oh. nothing in there. <laughs> I've got a dead bird in mine. <laughs> mine says keep okay, away from children. Okay, we'll start then. A dead bird and uh, your motto, yes. will you please sing? Colin, give me an intro. It's more of a riddle. What is the difference between photography and influenza? Answer. One makes facsimiles, the other sick families. <laughs> And now for the hard of hearing. Yes, you can have a mark for that, uh, Willie. We'll I go over that. now to uh, Graham. Why is a pig's tail like a carving knife? I don't know. Why is a pig's <laughs> tail like a carving knife? Because it's waved over ham. <laughs> Victorian conundrum. <laughs> Graham, we never heard what uh, gift you've got in yours. I got a pirate's eye patch. I was hoping for a parrot. <laughs> oh, never mind. Too bad. Tim Brooke Taylor. I seem to have a bracelet made of Esther Ranson's teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Cupid's arrows strike the dot deeply through my faithful heart. Evermore, my love. What a boring cracker this one was. <laughs> Tim is now showing it to the audience. That's listeners. certainly the best motto so far. Now, Barry. That's a small plastic urn. It's like something for providing specimens from midgets. I don't know what. <laughs> I tried to blow it, Tom, but there we are. <laughs> Why do old maids wear muffs? Why do old maids wear muffs? What a good question you're asking me. Why do old maids wear muffs? To which I reply, to keep off the chaps. <laughs> Okay, well, Tim Brooke Taylor is the only uh, the, the one who won that round because he's the only one who left his funny hat on. <laughs> and we go on to the first uh, proper round now to round off the programme. And this is one that's called Christmas Stockings. Our two teams uh, are overcome with the festive spirit and for reasons that are too complicated to go into, they're going to stuff a Christmas stocking with presents beginning with a letter that I shall give them. The other team can challenge if they think that any of the presents will have difficulty getting into a stocking. The first team will then provide some suitably far-fetched and amusing explanation as to how they intend to cram them in. <laughs> Have you got that? Okay, well, we're going to start now with you, Tim and Willie, and your letter is P. Potato. In the stocking. Parkinson. <laughs> Stuffed. Just wishful thinking. Uh, <laughs> porridge. Oh, no. uh, Pyramid. <laughs> Challenge there from Barry Crowley. Uh, rather late. I was going to challenge Parkinson on the grounds of it's not an inanimate object, and then I had second thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Hum. Too late, yes. Carry on, Tim. Uh, plate. Uh, photographic counter at Boots. <laughs> what? A challenge from Barry Crowley again. No. Or was it from... Or, as I'm sometimes known, Graham Garden. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. Uh, did Tim say plate? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Porcupine. Parisian model, second floor. <laughs> Parisian model, third floor. Oh, blast, there was a fourth floor, but it fell off. <laughs> um, <laughs> poetic <laughs> license. <laughs> Peruvian ambassador. Certainly. <laughs> Welcome, sir. What? Challenge from Barry Cry. Name him. <laughs> Juan Imorales Los Paraguayos. You cold? I retire. <laughs> I retire abashed. Prunes for later. <laughs> this is a long-running serial. Parachute for Parisian model fourth floor. <laughs> After the uh, <laughs> point. Um, plank. 
prostate. <laughs> Priest. Phonograph. Portly. Port. 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 Challenge from Port. Very clear. An adjective. Yes. What? An adjective. You're right, Barry. Thank and you. And you Humphrey. take over the, uh, the the filling of the stocking now for your team. And your letter is F. F. A fairy for the top of the Christmas tree. Second floor. <laughs> Name <Challenge> him. him. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on. No, he's currently the Peruvian ambassador. I wouldn't like to... <laughs> Name him. <laughs> <laughs> Willie just did, and I, uh, I couldn't follow that. <laughs> follow him. <laughs> Tim, you did very badly on your round, but you've made it up with challenges <laughs> so far. Uh, you've got uh, three seconds left, Barry. <laughs> no, pathetic. Farthingale. I don't know the metric equivalent of that. Yes, right. Now then, we go on oh. to uh, the point... <laughs> this is the point uh, where I ask the team to sharpen their pencils and their wits and start thinking of late arrivals at the Christmas ball, which I'll ask them to give the end of the programme. Late arrivals teams at the Christmas ball. Now we have the round called Double Feature, and this round, as you all know, takes as its premise the poverty of the international film industry. For economic reasons, new films will have to be remakes of pairs of old films. I want you to hear the resulting titles, and I will award points for anything approaching humour. <laughs> right. However, genuinely. We'll start, as points are very scarce, with Barry Cryer. Um, <laughs> Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and the Elephant Man will become a new picture called Any Which Way You Can. <laughs> Carnal Knowledge and the Man with Bogey's Face, a new film called Carnal Bogey. <laughs> oh, thank you for that applause. Tim Brooke Taylor. Uh, uh, the, the makers of, of Dallas, um, Last Ditch Stand and Ring of Bright Water are going to produce a film that's Dallas Ditch Water. Ditch Stand? Dallas Ditch Stand? <laughs> <That's laughs> <That's> <laughs> Terrific. My brilliant career, uh, combined with Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf and the Boyfriend, which is called My Who's a Big Boy Then? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Graham, Graham Garden. They're going to combine Breaking Glass and Gone with the Wind and get some very funny looks on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Willie Rushton. Well, so pathetic is the film industry, I've got the Elephant Man combined with the Pink Panther, and it's the spirit of Christmas pissed. <laughs> Theatrically, they're actually combining the last of Mrs. Cheney and the Mousetrap, which is going to be the last of the Mousetraps, or thank God for that. <laughs> Filmically, which begins with F, and they might have mentioned previously, mm. Hawk the Slayer, The Ring Cycle, and Days of Wine and Roses is appearing as no hawkers, circulars, or butlers. <laughs> uh, Tim and Willie are way ahead at the moment. Uh, Barry, would you like to come back and try and catch well, up? Well, my mind dwelt on Kurosawa's new epic, uh, Kagi Musha which is combined with the Jack Nicholson film Five Easy Pieces for a new film called Mushy Peas. <laughs> <laughs> but then I moved on. <laughs> the nice seasonal of... offering. They're, they're uh, combining some like it hot, mean streets and the spy who came in from the cold to make a hot, mean spy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, slightly subtle one here. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Nicholas Nickleby and Blazing Saddles to produce burnt bums. <laughs> Would you like a pause for that to sink in? Lemon <laughs> Star, Above Us the Waves, and Invasion of Giant Squid, a new film called Known as a Quid. <laughs> now then, we have... Good anticlimax, good anticlimax. We have a round now called Sing Along. In this round, each panellist has to sing along with a disc. Once the tune and tempo have been established, the sound of the disc will disappear and the panellist will be left on his own. After an embarrassing pause, the disc comes back and the panellist scores points if he's still with it. All these songs come from the record Sing Along a Maximus and are sung by Max oh. Bygraves. Oh, pass the paper bag. <laughs> and the necessary bucket. <laughs> Incidentally, I'm going to mark this one on the length of your applause. So, uh, Graham Garden, yours, your song <laughs> is Winter Wonderland. Yes. Bells ring. Are you listening in the line? Snow is glistening, a beautiful sight. We're happy tonight, walking in the winter wonderland. Gone away is the bluebird, here to stay. 
Yeah, the new man. He sings a love song as we go along. Walking in the window. And I make that four marks to Graham Garden. <laughs> Willie Ruston, your song is Old Lang Syne. Should old acquaintance be forgotten? In your case, Matt, certainly. Never to mind. Should old acquaintance be forgotten? For the sake of all. Okay, Willie, one mark for you now. And, <laughs> and unfortunately, Willie Rushton, you came in last, so you win. No, Max came last. And it's going to say that you win the Max Bygraves record. <laughs> so we go on with the next game now, which is the game called Good News, Bad News. Someone whom I'm about to nominate will start with some good news, and the next person will give us the corresponding bad news, and then the next person will give us the good news, and then it'll go back to the other person who will give us the bad news, over to the second person who came in who will give us the good news, back, and so on. Except February, Until which is 29. I press the buzzer. <laughs> Until I press the buzzer. Now, Graham. Yes. Will you start off with the good news, please? Right. The good news is Ronald Reagan is making another film. <laughs> good, good news. Uh, the bad news, it's Apocalypse Now. <laughs> as opposed to the film of Mick Jagger's life, which is Puckalypse now. <laughs> um, where are we? Good news. Good it's news, a musical. Bad news, so was that a lovely war. <laughs> <laughs> the good news, Reagan's only got a small part. <laughs> Bad news is the next line's been cut. <laughs> <laughs> yes, by me it has to. Now then. <laughs> Okay, Tim, you're going to start with some good news. Uh, Go ahead. Good news, please you, Hump. Um, we're all getting a Christmas bonus. The bad news, so are all the other pensioners. <laughs> the further good news, we're all getting a little something extra in our stockings. <laughs> bad news, varicose veins. <laughs> Oh, hold on, Graham. Several years' medical training went into Oh, yes. <laughs> Willie Rushton, do you want to start with some good news? Uh, good news. Prince Charles is engaged. Bad news is the train is still standing in the station. <laughs> <laughs> good news is that's what I call a royal flush. <laughs> Bad news is um, uh, I haven't got a funny line. <laughs> the good news is British Rail have got hundreds of them. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Now, Willie, you didn't play a very prominent part in the Thank last you. round, so you can start. You can start this one. With uh, some good news, please. Good news: the Romans are back in Britain. Uh. <laughs> Bad news: I'm a druid. <laughs> Good news, I'm a druid too. <laughs> Bad news, I'm Mary Whitehouse. <laughs> Good news, the Romans aren't fussy. <laughs> Very good by both teams there. We're going to go on now with the game 
called Simon Says. I'm going to tell the teams to do various things, and they have to do them. Marks will be awarded according to how well they do them and deducted for falling over or getting stuck. I'd like those of you in the studio or listening on your car radios or at home to join in with this game. And let me remind you that if I don't say Simon Says, teams, you must not do what I tell you to do. Otherwise, you will be disqualified. Simon Says, stand up. <coughs> Simon says, raise the right leg. Oh. Simon says, raise the left leg. <laughs> oh. I I'm can't keep this up for long. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, get down on all fours. Oh, dear. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> Tim Brooke Taylor has been disqualified. And I must, I must tell you that if you get disqualified more than six times, you have to leave the game. <laughs> uh, Simon says get down on all fours. Should, should, should we not, Humphrey, at this stage, issue a warning to drivers on the M4 not to play along? <laughs> Or those who are already crouching. Simon says, waggle your bottom. In there. I'd hate to be on the M4 now. Um. Simon says, jump up in the air. Ah. I wish the other two had come down. <laughs> Touch your right ear. Oh. Oh. Barry's disqualified. Simon says, put your fingers in your ears. Simon says, now take them out. <laughs> Simon says, now take them out. I shall now signal to the teams to take their fingers out of their ears so that we can go on with the next game. After what can only be described as an ovation from the audience. <laughs> Right, now we have a, a, a subtle game, as you can tell from its title. It's called Predictions for 1981. I'm going to ask the teams for their predictions about some of the things that are going to happen in 1981. So are you ready, teams? All right, we'll start with you, Graham Garden. At the Old Vic, Peter O'Toole and Timothy West will co-star in a production of The Odd Couple. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, how about you? Um, Michael Foote's credibility will be devalued and become ten inches. Stick <laughs> <laughs> it during the winter. <laughs> Barry Humphreys will change sex as we know it. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, would you like to volunteer? I jotted down vision? a few thoughts. Rit Eklund will write a book about how she'd never met the Shah of Persia. And Tony Blackburn will turn professional. <laughs> Willie, how about you? Uh, all the remaining friends and acquaintances of Harold Wilson will be rounded up by Interpol and MI5. <laughs> Prince Charles will marry the Supremes, but not necessarily in that order. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Thatcher will invade Poland and no one else will. I think there's a lot of loose talk there about Prince Charles. Yes, uh, in 1981, I think press speculation about his romantic life will end when the palace announces that he's broken it off. <laughs> By the law of averages, through a mix-up, Tommy Doherty and Malcolm Allison will be managing the same club at one moment. <laughs> Humphrey Littleton will be knighted not before time. Well, I should get a lot of points for that. <laughs> Do you wish to try and catch Tim up? <laughs> I think I'd rather die first. <laughs> no, I think that's... Uh, I mean, always uh, end on a high note, so I think we'll end the round there. <laughs> and we've gone to a round now, which is intriguingly called Backwards. And this... For, <laughs> for, lack of, for lack of a better description, I must tell you, this is a music round. Just before the programme, both teams have secretly r recorded a song, one song each. And we're now going to play it backwards, and their opponents have to guess what the song is. And you can join in in the audience. Anybody in the audience who gets the answer right will, of course, go straight to the top of the um, marks list. And we're going to start with you now, Graham Garden. Uh -huh. This is your song. Uh -huh. 
Ich habe mir einen Sack mit Heulen gelesen, nein, ich habe keine Ahnung, 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 Well, I'm fine. Dylan Willie, can you guess what? Chris Eklund, an extremist. <laughs> In the old iron. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll play it the right way round, and so they can tell. See if we can guess that. And if it is Graham. There's a tiny house by a tiny stream where a lovely lass May. had a lovely dream, and the dream came true quite unexpectedly. In Gilly Gilly, off the river, cast an elbow by the sea. One, no, one, I don't know that. Well, now, Tim and Willie, that gives you a hint. <coughs> you still don't know. No. Right, no. go on now. <laughs> Willie. Any old on or... Any old, no. No, no Willie, we'll, uh, we'll hear your song now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Graham or Barry, any ideas? It sounded like any old iron after you'd been mentioning it compulsively. It's one of those jolly one rollicking those, like, Cockney songs. What it? a mouth. Or... Anybody in, is in it the a audience? Cockney song? Nah. What? Not the nun's chorus, no. Run, no. Rabbit. Run Rabbit, the gentleman Not said. Rabbit. Run nah. Rabbit, no, I'm sorry. No. Let's hear he played right. One, two, three, and up, four, and up, rock. <laughs> Okay. Right, let's hear Barry Cryer's song now. Sounded uncannily like. I Mac needed forceps, I'll tell you that. Sounded <laughs> uncannily like Max Pryker singing Old Lang Syne, did you know? <laughs> um, something of Jolson's, was it? No, no, no. The first line ended in. Pfft. <laughs> yes, so if you reverse then, that. Is that a clue? Way. It's a clue, yes. It was preceded by the indefinite article. <laughs> Think of fur rank Sinatra. Uh, Not when you listen to a that. A funny I mean. Valentine. Let's try the audience now. Anybody got any ideas about this round? You're... <laughs> I think that was that good. <laughs> Can we have that suggestion the right way round? <laughs> Anybody else? No? You were never lovely. That's nothing to do with it, Mother. Thank you. I buy your taste. Okay. I think you should be knighted too. <laughs> Okay, so let's hear that one the right way around. Put us all out of our misery. Not me. A foggy day <laughs> in London town oh, had me low, had me down, and suddenly I saw you there. And in foggy London town, the sun was shining. Ladies and gentlemen, Barry Crowder, great star. I once thought star was spelled S-T-A-R. Last service, please. Do you remember when comedy shows always used to have a, a celebrated singer in the middle of them to break the thing up? No, before my time. Was it? <laughs> I remember when they used to have jokes. <laughs> We've Tim. changed all that. We're going to hear Tim's song now. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> Nurse, the screams. <laughs> okay, now, Graham. Easy, ding dong merrily on high. <laughs> now. We have to you see that. You know how far off you are. are. Just listen. That silicone is wonderful stuff, you know. What gave it away? Okay, the long tortured Gloria at the end. Oh, she's left. <laughs> that was an extraordinary win by uh, Graham Garden there. And we're now going to go on for the game that all of you have been playing since we were last on the air. And it's, of course, Mornington Crescent. And uh, teams, we're going to, as this is the Christmas, the festive occasion, we're going to play with the open rules. Let me just remind you then oh. that diagonals, parallel transfer and horizontal exchange are all permitted. Junctions automatically throw the ploy into reverse and yellow, green and blue can be brought into operation above and below the line. <laughs> yes? Yellow, green and, and blue. And blue. You can't have green with open rules. I'm sorry to be a bit pernickety. You can't have Christmas. Green. Has been done. Has been done. You can. Not here. I'm sorry. I'm afraid my uh, judgment so on this is, is absolutely I'm sorry, unreversible. I'm sorry. So uh, all right. Don't that's another rule. Well, I know. But I mean, mentioned. you can't play it properly, not at all. You know. <laughs> Come back, Barry. All Sit right. Down. All right. I'll play it. I'll right. And you can start. Oh, thank you. Euston Road. Greek Street, uh, being Christmas, uh, North Pole Road. <laughs> Green Park, Bishop Gate. <laughs> the hell with you, Paradise Row. Yeah, but you can't do it. Oh. We'll have to miss one. Cold Harbour one. Lane. Mornington Square. Oh. Piccadilly. Thank you. Oh, clever clock. New Bond Street. Old Bond Street. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> I've said Green Park, haven't I? Yes, yes. and very nicely. <laughs> Albemarle Street. Mornington Crescent. Yes. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh, dear. Oh, a bit rusty. Rusty. Mm. Well played, Barry Cryer there. I must admit that I didn't see that coming. It <laughs> did. <laughs> we'll get on to the round, which is uh, the round called Misleading Advice. I'm going to ask the teams to do their good deed for the day and give me some misleading advice for Christmas. Misleading advice for Christmas, starting with you, Willie Rushton. It's at a party. Why don't you go over there and have a really lively conversation with John Biffin? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you join in the Lumberjacks tree felling contest in Trafalgar Square? <laughs> a spatter of applause puts you in the lead. Now then, uh, Tim Brooks, what about yours? Do take advantage of British Rail's free travel on Christmas Day. <laughs> You're catching up with that one. My mind drifted back to um, when we did misleading advice for to tourists. I think they should be helped. I think they should be told that if one of our policemen proffers them a breathalyzer, they should oblige him with a specimen as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, this is a very useful thing. To ensure the best possible flavour, frozen turkey should not be defrosted until the last possible minute. Um, never more than ten minutes before cooking. <laughs> Uh, always allow one turkey per person. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, there's no need to buy batteries. There's always a battery with every toy that needs it. <laughs> Next up, there's bound to be a shop open you can get a battery from, so on Christmas Day, so just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> yeah. For value for money at Christmas, for any foreigners here, the, the best possible um, way to get British craftsmanship at its best with examples of British wit, wit you can do no better than buy a box of crackers. <laughs> <laughs> And English carol singers love our traditional cry of sod off snotty brats. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, yes. We have a round now which I think uh, Tim Brooke Taylor has already begun. It's called Singing Sprint. In this round, one team sings a song as fast as they can, and then the opposing team must beat their time. I have a stopwatch here, and uh, the winners will get a mark. <laughs> Uh, the song is that classic uh, up till this moment, Do Re Mi, from The Sound of Music, and uh, with a stopwatch at the ready, let's start with Tim and Willie. You've got to sing this as quick as you can. Faster. Go a dear, a female dear, ray, a drop of golden sun. Me a name, I call myself, but I'll always run. So, so a needle thread, love, I'm going to hollow, me a drop of red, and I'll bring us back to do 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 Well, that was extraordinary enough, 17 seconds, uh, which is uh, oh. uh, quite obviously wrong somewhere along the line. I think uh, uh, that that was too much of a duet. So, so Graham and Larry, we're going to slightly alter things now to even things up and make it much more fair. I'd like you to sing alternate words. Ah. Starting ah. now. Do a dear, a female dear, ray a drop of golden sun. Me a name I call myself, far a long, long way to run. So a needle pulling thread, la a note on high or low. Tea a drink with jam and bread, and we'll bring us back to do. Do ray me far so la ti do. No need to go into details, but Graham and Barry won that round, and we go on to Backwards the ad lib poem now. I'm going to give someone the first line of a poem, and they continue until I buzz, like that, and the next person continues. And to keep us in Christmas mood, I'm going to give you a line from A Christmas Carol. And the line is God bless you all, said Tiny Tim. God bless you, everyone. God bless us, everyone, as I remember from my well thumbed uh, copy of the aforementioned yeah. tome. Are you, are you challenging? <laughs> no, uh, no, your well, basilisk starting, there. <laughs> sta Barry Cry is starting. Oh, Lord. We're having a lovely Christmas. It really is such fun. I've eaten quite a lot today. I've eaten far too much. <laughs> Meanwhile at home, old Scrooge was doing impersonations of... <laughs> 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 topical, topical. He sang Black Magic several times and kicked a passing cat. <laughs> and then he kicked Bob Cratchit and thought, well, that's that. <laughs> but Cratchit, in rebellious mood, turned upon a Scrooge. It's a good rhyme. It was a oh, dreadful yeah. miser. Uh, <laughs> the cheeks were painted rouge. <laughs> Oh, God bless you all, said Tiny Tim. God bless us, everyone. Uh, he said the line again, I think. To reassure his mum? To reassure his mum. <laughs> oh, funny. I took the words out of my mouth. Oh, God. God bless you, said his sweet old mum. God bless you all today. Then suddenly a rattling of chains. Oh, filled we are with dismay. We being Ebenezer Scrooge, who laid a bed that morn and saw old Marley's ghost loom up with a visage all forlorn. <laughs> Ebenezer, said Jacob, you are a naughty man. This. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I will sit down with you and consume some apple flan. <laughs> thing you never gave to me when I worked at the bench. The best I had for Christmas wasn't turkey but gudgeon or tench. <laughs> <laughs> but Scrooge exclaimed, who are these ghosts with you that cry like shipwrecked sailors? <laughs> Replied the spectre you must have heard of Marley and the whalers. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, Graham Garden wins that one. We, I'm going to give you another... Try and make this one as short as possible, teams. I'm going to start with you, Willie Rushton, to yes. complete this line. Are you ready? Yes. The slap of naked flesh proclaimed an orgy in the lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> what is Ian Paisley doing on top of poor old Mrs. Whitehouse? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, that was a good one. That's yes. quite brilliant. <laughs> Proud to be on my team. <laughs> now, here's a, here's a round that's called Christmas Gifts for Particular People. Appropriate presents for people of your choice. And they don't have to be all that particular. Now then, Graham Garden. This Christmas, no child's nursery should be without a J.R. doll. You wind it up and it double crosses Noddy. <laughs> <laughs> Him? To Jacqueline Bissett, I would like to give myself. <laughs> Several times. Um, the England cricket team, two West Indian fast bowlers. <laughs> Barbara Woodhouse, a bone. <laughs> Reverend Ian Paisley, a volume control. <laughs> Twelve marks for effort. <laughs> Sorry, Clive. Prompted by that remark. I think Ian Paisley's a ripe field for Christmas presents. An orange jock strap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> box of Catholic cornflakes. <laughs> those are the ones that go snap, crackle, and pope. <laughs> Some tablets for loss of voice to make sure he gets it. <laughs> and a clerical collar, size very small. <laughs> Okay, Willie, Willie Rushton. Well, I, I can now rub Mr. Kasigin off my list. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, <laughs> again, it's Sir Michael Foote. <laughs> I'd like to give Jimmy Savile a bushel to hide his light under. I think that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kind thought at this, at this time of year. I was going to give Sir Michael Edwards a cowboy outfit, but he's already got one. Anymore? Sometimes quite this funny. This is the point in the programme where, where I sit back and relax so that I can uh, listen to all these lovely announcements for the arrivals at the Christmas ball. Anybody start who wishes? <laughs> God knows I'd help you, but the Sharabang hasn't turned up yet. <laughs> I'm containing my own long list of guests. <laughs> but when they do arrive, I'll certainly join in. Well, you're welcome. Take two. No, well, take three, welcome. they're only small. <laughs> take four. Will you go... Oh. <laughs> Tim's going to start. <laughs> Please and welcome. Mr. and Mrs. not being given another Guinness Book of Records, and their <laughs> hermaphrodite child. Surely I've not been given another Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> I'll stop while you're behind. <laughs> the Sharaban still hasn't turned up, otherwise I could improve this whole... <laughs> oh, there's that old taxidermist George Paxo. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. A Manger and their son Wayne Manger. <laughs> all the way from Dockland, the lovely Miss Gover, known to us all affectionately as Whopping and Gover. <laughs> <laughs> Will you welcome from Italy, please? And remember, they are foreigners in our country, so be kind to them. Signor and Signora Drink and Drive and their daughter Donna, you drink and drive. <laughs> Over there, Mr. and Mrs. Dunyan Stuffing. And their very <laughs> wise, their very wise daughter, Sage Anne Dunyan Stuffing. <laughs> and now it's Willie's turn. No, I, I, <laughs> a phone call is coming away. from the driver of the Sharaban. <laughs> he's being breathalyzed in a lay-by near Bletchley. <laughs> Good heavens, all the way from Spain, some other visitors. Let's welcome them as well. Senor and Signora, shopping day to Christmas with their son, who we rarely see, and we cry, bloody hell, it's only one shopping day to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. High and their happy bell ringing son, Ding Dong Merry Leon High. <laughs> and Mr. and Mrs. Woods and their babe, Cindy Woods. <laughs> Didn't I hear the sound of a charabang pulling up outside? Yes, you no, did. No, <laughs> not a word. Ah, welcome, Willie's party. Well, they've let a lad in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny way to hand in your notice, this, really. 
If you're a member of the audience, I should say that things are absolutely level pegging at the moment. Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Damnation, not turkey sandwiches again. And their daughter, <laughs> Helen Damnation, not turkey sandwiches again. <laughs> Oh, somebody's just found Elsie Tanner in the pudding. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, all good things have to come to an end. And <laughs> this programme oh, also Jesus. has to come to an end now, so all I have to do is to tell you the score, which is that Graham and Barry have won tonight's Star Prize, which is a holiday for three in Rickmansworth. <laughs> <laughs> Plus the latest sing-along of Leonid Brezhnev LP, but... Uh, <laughs> Tim and Willie, you, you've been wonderful contestants and we're very sorry to lose you, but you don't go home single-handed. You have a Dennis Roussos whoopee cushion <laughs> and make a Willie Whitelaw out of a potato kit and some Harvey Smith nutcrackers. <laughs> and from all of us this year, goodbye. <laughs> Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Middleton with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Geoffrey Perkins. 